Welcome to day two. We're back. We're back together for an entire day. How amazing was yesterday? I want to know. Okay, what was a big takeaway? When I go to events, all right. Here's what I do. I want you. I want. I want, I want you to think about. Hey, what would Cody do today, man? What would Cody have done yesterday? Number one, he would go to Apex Nation live in Dallas, hands down, right? Because I go to conferences every. I'm literally going to a conference next weekend in Miami, okay, which is 10x. I believe in events as much, if not more, than anyone in our industry, okay? Here's what I want to talk through, though. What would Cody do? I would write down ideas. My job when I coach and train people is to give them new ideas, to challenge them to be a better version of themselves and to make them think bigger. I want us to think bigger today. The theme of the event is if you don't quit, you can't fail. I believe and I know that life gets really good in the insurance industry as long as you choose not to throw in the white towel and quit. Okay, As long as you decide right now, I'm going to win. Like we got Les Brown, we got Brian Tracy, we got Tom Hegna all later. Like my favorite speech of Les Brown is, it's not over until I win. It's not over until you win. I want you to be thinking about winning today. I want you to think about changing your life today, okay? Let me know in chat where you're watching from, were you here yesterday, and what was your favorite part of yesterday, and what are you most looking forward to today, okay? What are you most looking forward to today? Welcome, thank you for being back. I am absolutely excited and ecstatic for the crazy, massive day that we've got planned out for you today. Today, We'll go down as the best virtual conference day in history that the insurance industry has ever seen. Period. Now, we got to back it up. Okay. Are you ready for today? Type yes in chat if you're with me. Yes, I'm ready. 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 My job, okay, my job is to take you to the next level. I'm committed today. Like I'm, I'm more, you could tell, like I, I got a good nice rest because I was so exhausted last night. Like I'm jacked up and ready for today. Who else is ready for today, okay? I want to remind you, my mission is to help every insurance agent in the world. How am I doing so far? How are we, the teams, doing so far at helping you get to that next level? We're going to keep showing up in your life and we're going to keep helping you because we're committed. We care about you. And we're going to be consistent. Commit, care, and stay consistent. That's the three C's of the day from Cody. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I want you to be at Apris Nation 2021. If you loved this and you're like, dude, this is life changing. This is legendary. This is unbelievable. This is nothing compared to the live event that's going to take place in Dallas, Apris Nation 2021 at the Statler Hotel on July 23rd and 24th, okay? We gotta remind you to make sure to take advantage of the deals that are available just these two days during the event, okay? CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. CodyAskins.com forward slash deals, okay? We got a CA deal that I'm releasing right now, which is a four-week private mentorship program with me for normally total value $14,191. For only 88 bucks. Okay, that's the CA deal, codyaskins.com forward slash deal. So get there, make sure you take advantage of that. Then eight percent deal that we're kicking it off with, okay, is the VIP BOGO. Okay, VIP BOGO, where you can get two VIP tickets for the price of one. You can bring a friend, you can bring an enemy, I don't care who you bring, okay, because it's your extra ticket. You do whatever you want, okay. But make sure you get to Apex Nation in Dallas. Who's watching saying, dude, okay, I already got my ticket. I grabbed it yesterday. I grabbed it early. I grabbed it previously, right? Because you can see we are raising the prices every 30 days. Waiting is not only going to cost you money. It's also going to hurt your commitment level, right? Like when I buy tickets now to events, I buy them one year in advance. I get the absolute lowest pricing, okay? And I make sure that I have the absolute best ticket available, okay? So make sure you go to CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. Take advantage of all the deals that are available during these two days. Also... When you hear this sound, you know the siren is going off and it's time for another flash sell today. We're going to have a few of those today. Yesterday, the absolute urgency 
and the, 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 the individuals that took advantage of the flash sales, which means if you're new, a flash sale means that, okay, if you're, if you're just jumping off for day two, it lasts for three minutes. It's a totally insane deal that will never be available again, right? It's so insane, we put a siren to it, okay? It only lasts for three minutes and then poof, it's gone, which means you have to take action now during those three minutes. Are you ready for today? I wanna to remind you, hey, we're still choosing people, not only who are with most watch time today, we're giving away money, we're giving away prizes, we're giving away courses, we're giving away tickets, all right? We're giving away for most watch time, most engaged, most active in chat, the individual that shares this out the most, okay? I wanna encourage you right now, share this to a Facebook group that you're in, okay? Sh start tagging other agents that need to be on this and hear this message today. We are committed to helping others. And I wanna encourage you to think about and commit to thinking about helping others today. That's what it's all about, man. It's not, it's, it, it, people don't need a handout, right? They need a hand up. If you don't quit, you can't fail. Who's ready for day two? Talk to me. Who is ready for day two? Is about to bring out our first speaker, okay? I love this, okay? I wanna tell you a quick story, okay, about our first speaker. He is an insurance industry legend. Talked, he taught me more about this space than anyone else ever has. When I was 16 years old, I was supposed to go to Apple Market in, in, in Rogersville, Missouri. I was supposed to go to work on a Saturday from four to 10. I was 16, I was throwing up. I didn't feel well. It was about three, 3.30. I go to this man, my dad, and I say, hey, I don't feel like going to work today. Right? Who's ever woke up, you're like, dude, I, I don't feel like going to work today. I don't feel like showing up. I don't feel like being my best self. Me too. And I tell him, hey, I'm throwing up. I don't feel well. I, I don't think I'm going to go to work today. And he told me, you do whatever you want to do. But you know what I would do. As of April 1st, here in a few weeks, he will have been in the insurance industry for 31 years. The dude shows up. I've learned from not only my father, but also an absolutely incredible mother. And they've both been a amazing, positive impact on my life. So please help me welcome the number one mentor in my life, the number one dude in the insurance industry, and my best friend to jump out and kick it off for day two. Please welcome my father, Mr. Brian Esk. Hello, hey, this is Brian Askins uh, with Secure Insurance Group. First of all, Cody, I want to thank you for that uh, introduction. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of you are, are listening to, uh, today because of Cody and uh, just a, an unbelievable son. And I could speak hours and hours on just, you know, our relationship and uh, uh, just Cody in general. Uh, today, I want to really talk to you about how to build an agency, how to build a successful team. Uh, and just to kind of give you a, uh, some ideas here, uh, I'm going to kind of walk through uh, kind of what I've done over my career. Uh, but first of all, I just want to kind of talk to you about, uh, to let you know, and, and all, all those things I'm going to tell you today, you know, all of you are going to already know, but you only get one life. Uh, make the absolute best of it. Uh, don't waste any part of your life. You, and, and we all only get one uh, here on earth to, to, uh, to do, you know, whatever we want to do in life. And, uh, but to make, make the absolute best of it. Don't let anyone or anything uh, stand in your way of, uh, of, the dreams that you have. Uh, and, uh, you know, all I'm trying to do is encourage you uh, to do is to, in, in this, in this uh, talk today is to bet on yourself. I don't think, I don't think often enough we bet on ourselves. And so I'm just, I'm encouraging you today to bet on yourself. Uh, don't take the easy route. Again, bet on yourself. Uh, there's so many times that we can take the easy route and it, it's easy. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no, uh, it's just an easy route, but I'm just asking you today to bet on yourself and always remember uh, if you don't quit, you can't fail. 
uh, simply don't quit. And, and at the end of the day, you'll be, you'll be glad of, of what you built because you build something that you'll be proud of as something you can leave as a legacy to your, to your loved ones. And so again, uh, today the focus is, uh, you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't quit, you cannot fail. And I, I'm just asking you to bet on yourself. So let me tell you a bit about me uh, and what my career uh, has been. Uh, I started the insurance business, as Cody mentioned, April of 1990. Uh, I started with a small little company called Reliable Life, and I was with them from 90 to 97. I, re I ran a debit route to where you, you go around and you uh, collect uh, monthly premium payments from, from, uh, from individuals. And I collected about 450 homes a month. And uh, in 1991, uh, I was fortunate enough to be the Rookie of the Year uh, for Reliable Life, and I, uh, I set an all-time sales uh, uh, life a life sales record at that time in 1991. I'm sure it's been broken since, uh, but in 1991, I did hold the all-time uh, life sales record for Reliable Life. Uh, and then in uh, April of uh, 1997, I went to work for Mutual of Omaha. I was, I was an agent for them for a couple of years. I'm sorry for for a few months. I apologize and then a district sales manager for a few years, and then I became a general manager with them in 2010. I'm sorry, in 2000. And then 2010, uh, I, became, uh, I was, uh, became the number one GM uh, in, uh, at Mutual Omaha. Again, what people ask, well, how did you take your agency from rank 47th in the company to number one in, you know, in less than a 10 year period? And, and it all goes back to I surrounded myself with the right people, had tremendous, tremendous, tremendous people that I surrounded myself with. And so in this business, it's all about the people you surround yourself with. And uh, so that's how we were able to become the, uh, the number one agency at, the, at Mutual Mahal. It's, it's just the people that I surrounded myself with. And then in 2014, February of 2014, I started Secure Insurance Group. So Secure has been going now for just a little over seven years. Uh, and, and with Secure, it was probably the biggest bet on myself I've ever done. Uh, and uh, it's, it's been the one that's paid off the most. And uh, there's so many people that are just afraid to bet on themselves. And so, again, just want to encourage you to do that. So let's start with Secure Insurance Group. Let me tell you a little about Secure Insurance Group. And what, uh, when I started Secure Insurance Group, I started with four agents. Uh, and Cody was one of those four. Uh, and uh, we currently have nearly uh, about 750 uh, independent agents across the U.S. now uh, in, in seven years. Uh, and uh, there are many of you listening today that uh, there's no question about many of you listening today. They're much, much, much more talented than I am. Uh, you just haven't bet on yourself. Uh, you, your talent is, is, is greater than my talent. I'm, I'm very confident of that. Uh, and uh, I've just been you know, successful because, again, uh, like Cody mentioned earlier, I show up every single day. I don't let anyone outwork me, and uh, uh, and I, I bet on myself. I'm and I surround myself with the right people, and uh, so I'm just asking you to bet on yourself because it, it's definitely, definitely time. Some of you on this today, you've thought about doing you know certain things in the insurance industry. You've thought about doing this or that, but you just you're 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 scared and you keep talking yourself out of it uh, because you don't want to bet on yourself. And again, I'm hoping after today. You know, some of you will, will take that chance and you'll bet on yourself. So let me tell you a little bit about building an agency. And this is, this is some things that I've done to, to help build an agency. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you what's kind of important. So the number one, the most important thing to me, period, is culture. Uh, and culture kind of goes back to, I think that the person who is uh, the, everyone's looking up to should be the hardest working person in the agency. Uh, and whether I was with Reliable Life, was with Mutual of Omaha, and so our Secure Insurance Group, and that's my, been my three careers over 31, or three companies I've worked for in, in 31 years, is I truly believe I've been the hardest working person in, in any of those spots I've been in. Uh, and it's, it's something that, that's important to me. I won't, you know, because I, I think you gain a lot of respect. I think that you, uh, you know, it's people see you and all of a sudden they step their game up. And if you surround yourself with a lot of people, talented individuals like I have, uh, and, uh, and you're the hardest working person in the, in the office, uh, they kind of, in the agency, they kind of see that and they step their game up. Uh, but nothing is more important than, than culture. Uh, culture is absolutely the most important thing that there is. Uh, hire people that fit well in your culture. Again, when you're hiring, it's all about do they fit in your culture because they could be, you know, an unbelievable individual personnel or as far as a, a talent and all that and production, but if they don't fit well in your culture. They can do more harm than good. So it's all about the culture. Uh, 
if you ever have issues in your agency, handle those issues quickly. Don't let those issues uh, to where you, you may have a uh, situation that starts out small, but really, really quick, it turns very large uh, because it just continues to fester. Uh, deal with whatever issues there are quickly so they don't, they don't grow uh, because small issues are easy to handle. It's all about communication. Uh, and, uh, but when, that, when those issues are just kind of swept under the rug and hoping they go away, they keep getting bigger and bigger each and every day. And then sooner or later, uh, they're very large issues. Uh, don't allow drama or negativity. Uh, again, that can kill a culture. You know, we've all heard about the bad apple in the, in the, in the basket. Uh, it can ruin all the other apples. Uh, and, and it's very, very true. Uh, so surround yourself with people who are uh, no drama, no negativity. They're positive. They're talented. Uh, they're excited about, about the opportunity that they have. So uh, culture is number one. I could talk hours and hours on culture. Culture is absolutely the first thing I look for in an interview. I spend you know, 20, 25 minutes at least just talking about the culture, what we built, and how we're not going to let someone come and destroy it. I don't care if I'm hiring someone to be uh, a front office receptionist or if I'm hiring someone to be a Medicare specialist. I don't care what, what I'm hiring an individual to do. If they're an employee of secure, uh, 20, 25 minutes of the, uh, of the first interview is about culture because I want to set the stage at that time. The second interview, we talk again about culture. The third interview, we talk about culture. The first day on the job, we, we, we talk about culture again. So uh, now let, let's talk about employee staff. Uh, obviously, in order to grow your business, you can only be so big by yourself. And uh, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care you know, how organized you are, you can only grow so big by yourself. And uh, so as you continue to, uh, you want to really scale your business up, uh, you want to start, instead of uh, adding, you want to start multiplying, that's where tremendous great employees come into the picture at. Uh, and so regardless of what you have to pay the employees, you know, if they're great, they're going to more than pay for themselves, probably three, four, five, tenfold. Uh, if they're great employees, they'll, they'll pay for themselves in a big time way. Uh, one of the things about employees I always try to tell people is trust them to do their job. You know, trust your employees to do their job. Uh, encourage them to be creative. Uh, you want employees that are, are creative. You know, and the more, the more that you get employee involved, uh, then the more they're going to be excited about the opportunity. They're going to be excited to come to work. They're going to be excited about everything that they have. Uh, and so, uh, but listen to your employees' ideas. Some of the best ideas that we have come from, you know, our employees. Uh, you know, majority of our great ideas have come from our employees. Uh, have an open door policy. So if ever got an issue, they come to you. And again, that's something to where, you know, the issues are handled uh, quickly and it's all about communication. There, again, communication is, is, is the key to, to, to any relationship. I don't care if it's a work relationship, a marriage relationship. I don't care what type of relationship, a friendship. I don't care what it is. Communication is the key to, uh, to a, a, a long lasting productive relationship regardless. Uh, don't micromanage. I don't think you'd be on this call uh, you know, on, on today's event would say, you know, raise your hand. I love being micromanaged. I just love it. You know, nobody wants to be micromanaged. No, you know, no one wants, I don't want to be micromanaged. I can't imagine that you'd want to be micromanaged and just, you know, your employees don't want to be micromanaged. Uh, set the expectations, give them the tools and resources to be successful and let them do their job. Uh, now you want to monitor and measure from, you know, make sure that, you know, they're the right person. They're getting the you know, job accomplished. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the micromanagement uh, that drives people insane. It drives them away. And, and, uh, so that's why there's so much turnover and, and employee status and so forth is people just don't want to work for a micromanager. Uh, but make sure they're on the right seat on the bus and, uh, the right seat on the bus. You know, you, you may have an individual that is, uh, and I could tell you several examples. I've got a lady right now. I'll just give you one real quick. I've got a lady right now that to where she was a Medicare, uh, uh, I'm sorry, she was a life specialist for me. She was my personal assistant for life insurance and she was doing a, a good job, not a great job, but I could tell she just wasn't enjoying it. And uh, uh, some of the things I was having her do. And, and so anyway, so we had a role come available in the Medicare, uh, as a Medicare specialist. And uh, we have moved her to that role and we've added some extra responsibilities on top of that. And now this lady is thriving. She is, she's head of our PR for, you know, she calls all her clients for their birthdays and, and all kinds of things of that nature. And I'll kind of walk through some of those in a few minutes. Uh, but she is just absolutely thriving. One of the best employees we have now. 
uh, and we just we got her on the right seat on the bus. Uh, make it fun. You know, like one of the things that she does, she's kind of our PR person for within our agency. Uh, she is, you know, she has birthdays. So every, every time that, you know, once a month she does a birthday cake for all of her employees whose birthdays that month. She does team build, team building events. Uh, we do those every quarter. And uh, so our next one is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, but, but great employees pay huge dividends. And I could talk all day long about great employees because that's the key to the success is great employees. Let's talk just for a split second here about customer service. And again, this goes without saying, and I know everybody on this, uh, everybody on this call, uh, you know, I'm sure you do a tremendous, tremendous job of customer service, and I'm sure your staff does a tremendous job. Uh, but the biggest thing is, is to teach your staff uh, to go above and beyond for every client, not just meet the needs of the clients, but go above and beyond. You know, let the client know they're the most important person in the world uh, on that phone call. Listen to the clients. Uh, what seems small to, to us uh, is it can be huge to our, to our clients. And so treat every time that the client has a, a need, a request, whatever it is, if it's possible to make it uh, to do that, uh, do that. And uh, uh, I promise you those individuals will, will send lots of referrals to, to your office, uh, to your agency, and they will absolutely love uh, doing business with you and they'll tell others about it. People tell others whether it's good or bad about the experiences they have. And uh, so obviously we want those things to be, to be positive. So let's talk about client retention. Uh, and so the client retention is just all about setting yourself apart. Uh, stay, stay in front of mind with your clients. Uh, client retention is about uh, the education process. So when you, know, when you meet with the client, uh, and, and you'll obviously teach all of your reps to do the same thing, uh, is, is be an educator. Uh, don't be a, a salesperson, be an educator. Uh, you educate individuals uh, and let them make the, in, an informed decision because obviously the best way to make a, a tremendous, uh, a, 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 a great decision is to be well informed. And so be an educator and, and your retention will con you know, just be you know, 95% and above uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're an educator. But set yourself apart. And so what, some things that we do to help set ourselves apart with our clients is we do quarterly newsletters to every client. And uh, so it's, it's kind of funny, we just did one and, and on this last one, we had a, 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 a caramel pie uh, uh, recipe in there and, and we've had several clients call and talk about how they made the caramel pie, it was delicious and, and they get, some of them give us ideas to even add this to the, you know, to the ingredients, you know, et cetera. So the caramel pie, we had to where, hey, find, this, find the logo, the secure logo, and if whoever found it, call in, and uh, you know, we put them in a drawing and we drew out, I think it was 10, 10 $20 gift cards. And uh, so, uh, and we had uh, dozens on dozens on dozens of clients calling in, hey, I found the secure logo, you know, et cetera. So it got the clients kind of involved. We do a lot of Medicare business, obviously, a lot of life annuities, other business, but, but Medicare uh, is probably our number one. Uh, but thank you cards, birthday cards. So we, uh, uh, so we do, you know, every time a person buys a policy from us, we send them an email and it's a thank you email, but it's asking us, ask them to also leave us a, uh, a review on Google. Uh, and so that has been tremendous for us. Uh, and then the birthday reminders, uh, we send out birthday cards, but also we have a lady in our office that calls every client on their birthday. Uh, and unless their birthdays are Saturdays and Sundays, if that's the case, they call them on Friday. She calls every client at, on their birthday and just wishes them a ha wishes them a happy birthday. And uh, so little things like that. We have a client appreciation breakfast uh, once a year, right before AEP. Uh, and so and in that, there's no sales pitch. It's simply thanking them for their business. And uh, yeah, there's no other agents doing things like that, or, or not many. Uh, and towards the last event we had, we had around 500 clients at this event, you know, cost us a lot of money, but we had, we fed them breakfast, did door prizes, giveaways, bingo, trivia, uh, but there was no sales pitches. At the end of the meeting, we just talked about how AEP is uh, upcoming and we, you know, obviously we'll review everybody's plans, make sure they're in the right plans. And, uh, and we had uh, 10 staff members out, out front into where people got in line and set appointments up for, for their annual reviews. Uh, so there's so many different things you can do. So just kind of think outside the box uh, and, uh, you know, an individual thinks outside the box and is always thinking of creative new ways to do things uh, is obviously that person uh, is worth their weight in gold. Let's talk just a second about recruiting. So obviously recruiting is very, very, very important. And so in recruiting, uh, there is a, 
uh, several things we can do on recruit or that we do currently on recruiting. Uh, we ha we get a licensed list from uh, from uh, various Department of Insurances, uh, and uh, most of the time those Department of Insurance will send you that licensed list for no charge. Uh, and those are people who are newly getting licensed, or they just added a new you know uh, some type of new license to their already existing licenses, uh, a new line of authority. Uh, but most of the, for most of them, it's brand new individuals, and so uh, those individuals. Some of those are going to be tremendous, tremendous, tremendous agents one day. Uh, and so they just need, they need to be put in the right situation. And so, you know, you can contact those individuals. Uh, you can contact those individuals by mail, by, by phone, by email, you know, et cetera. Uh, so obviously Google recruiting ads, Facebook recruiting ads, uh, your current agents, you know, what other products do they have with other FMOs or IMOs? A lot of our agents, you know, they have, they have contracts with other FMOs. Uh, and so we contact those to see, you know, hey, can we beat the comp levels? Can, you know, what other support help can we give you to help, help in that arena? So current agents, don't, don't ever forget about your current agents because those are the individuals already doing the business for you. Uh, referrals from existing agents. When you start getting referrals from existing agents, and that's where we've gotten a large, large, large majority of our current agents, is referrals from existing agents. That's where you know you're doing something right. Now, we can always continue to improve, and we try to improve every day, but that's when you know you're kind of doing something right is when, when your existing agents refer you. Uh, refer you. And also recruiting webinars. Uh, we did a recruiting webinar uh, two weeks ago. We had 100 and I think it was like 118, 119 registered event. Uh, 40 something attended the event. And uh, so great events uh, to where opportunities for you to get a chance to, to kind of tell your story to, to multiple people. So recruiting webinars, all kinds of opportunities there. So let's talk about the opportunities that you might recruit to. Uh, we recruit to two different ones and this might give you some ideas and, and most of you are probably already doing this, but I'll just kind of give you some ideas just in case. Uh, one of the uh, opportunities is uh, we uh, recruit a lot of, uh, we've started a, an LOA program, which is a licensed only uh, agent program. Uh, and uh, that has really flourished and uh, we're gonna to continue to expand that, uh, the license only agent uh, program. That's a program that we help, uh, they can help us uh, service our existing clients during AEP, because obviously the larger and larger you get, it, it becomes more difficult. Uh, we offer those individuals incentive trips and contests. Uh, but for those individuals, uh, here's kind of what we do for those individuals, and here's how kind of we, we structure this. Uh, we pay for their marketing support. Uh, you know, we give them all the training support. We pay for all their marketing. We pay for all their office space. So there, there's no uh, monies out of their pockets. Uh, we, uh, we also can, you know, some of them we paid a salary to. Uh, kind of depends. We have a couple of different options. Uh, but those individuals, their commissions are paid to secure. And, those, and SECURE then pays those individuals. So SECURE is basically splitting commissions with them. Uh, the street commissions, SECURE obviously keeps the, uh, uh, the overrides, but we're splitting street commissions. But these individuals, they need marketing uh, training. They need uh, lots of training, lots of marketing. Uh, and we help, you know, they, they get plugged into our uh, Medicare seminars, uh, live seminars, our Medicare virtual seminars, and we pay for all the expenses for them. Uh, and uh, uh, and these individuals, we just had an agent, uh, one of our LOA agents uh, in the month of February produced 39 applications. And uh, they all produced over 20, but uh, one kind of went above and beyond. He did 39 this, this past month uh, as an LOA. Uh, and these are individuals that, you know, that uh, he met either at a uh, Medicare seminar. Uh, we do uh, lots of lead drops for those individuals, Medicare lead drops, you know, et cetera. So, uh, one other thing too is uh, obviously there's independent agents and those are individuals that uh, they're looking for carriers, products, commission, support, training, marketing, prospecting, all those type things. And those individuals, you know, they're typically most of the time uh, paying for the majority of their own or if not all of their own marketing, prospecting. Uh, but obviously those individuals are receiving extremely, extremely high comp levels. And we'll talk a few more, we'll talk a bit about that here in a few minutes. So uh, those individuals are, individuals that you know they're looking for uh, a partnership they want to be a part of something and uh, so they you know don't want to be just left on an island all the time and you know recruit them and then never never speak to them again so let's talk about training for a second and again uh, this is where you, you just teach your agents to go above and beyond and that's how you get referrals is to go above and beyond uh, people refer people that they know they trust 
uh, people that's brought extreme value to them uh, and, that's, uh, and do things other agents aren't willing to do. And I'll just kind of give you a couple of ideas here today. A couple of ideas is, is you know, like when a person needs to be enrolled in Social Security or Medicare, we do the enrolling. We will enroll them in Social Security, we'll enroll them in Medicare. We don't want to send them to the Social Security office or make them, you know, call in and, you know, because we can do that. We can assist them and, and do that in just a few minutes. It, it's very, very, very quick and easy. Uh, same thing with Medicare. If they need to be enrolled in Medicare, you know, we take care of it for them. If they need, if they've already got Part A, but they need Part B, we get them the applications. We do the, you know, online enrollments, you know, et cetera. So lots of uh, things that we can do for these individuals to help them if they qualify for, you know, Medicaid or, or extra help. You know, we, we uh, help them with that. Uh, we help sign them up for that because we don't want them, we don't want to send them down just to the Medicaid office. We, you know, we want them, we want to be a resource to them. So anytime they need anything whatsoever, they contact us. Uh, and so once we've helped them in individuals uh, on those type things, you know, obviously they become referral machines for us because hey, you need social security. This is what, you know, Brian can help you with that or, or whoever the agent is can help you with that. Uh, train your agents on, uh, on all new carriers products. Uh, you have the best product uh, on the market, uh, but if you don't know about it, uh, they can't sell it. So, you know, we have, uh, uh, obviously we, we sell a lot of, we sell every product that a person can dream of naming. And we also uh, have the most competitive carriers in the industry. And I'm sure, you know, most of y'all have the same situation. You have the most competitive carriers in the industry uh, and the most competitive products where you never get beat on price. You know, we're never getting beat on price, period, uh, or underwriting at all. Uh, if it's a way to place that case, you know, we're going to have a carrier product to, to do that. Uh, but make sure your agents are aware of all the product and services you offer. Uh, I was on the phone with an agent this morning, and this individual has pretty much done just Medicare, gotten a little bit into final expense, but doesn't offer the hospital indemnity plans when he sells Medicare Advantage plans, doesn't offer uh, the heart attack stroke plans, doesn't offer dental vision hearing plans, doesn't offer, you know, uh, does just a little bit in the final expense, but not much, been very limited. And so just kind of walking through some things of, of uh, tell them all the uh, other opportunities that are out there and how much it would drastically increase his income. Uh, and uh, uh, this agent was obviously extremely excited when we got the phone. And, and that's what it's all about is, is getting his, you know, uh, letting people know what you do, because if you let people know what you do, uh, then it can, it'll snowball for you. Uh, let's talk about carriers just for a split second here. Uh, make sure your agents have the most competitive carriers, which we've kind of mentioned that already, you know, to where again, you'll never get beat on price, underwriting, you know, et cetera. The more competitive you are, the more it allows you to cross sell. And so that's what I, that's why that I want the most competitive carriers. You know, a lot of times people have a certain budget, maybe a hundred dollars a month, maybe $200 a month, maybe what, you know, whatever per month and uh, a budget. And so the more competitive you are, the more products you're able to get in that house. Uh, and, uh, and, and fill the needs that they have that, 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 that particular client has. So let's talk about products just for a second. And again, uh, we talked about this for just briefly, but cross-selling is so important. Uh, and 40%, uh, uh, we have a 40% uh, cross-selling uh, rate for hospital indemnity plans when we sell Medicare Advantage plans. Uh, and it adds an additional $300 or so commissions, uh, which for an agent adds thousands on thousands of dollars every year just by asking about, hey, would you like to cover the, uh, uh, some copays on your hospital, your hospital copays, you know, your emergency room copays, your ambulance copays, uh, your outpatient observation copays, uh, cancer riders, you know, et cetera. So lots of opportunities there. Uh, one of the things that, uh, the most difficult thing to do is to get in front of people. Uh, and so while we're in front of people, uh, we might as well take advantage of it. Make sure that they know all the product and services that we do. Uh, the easiest person to sell something to is someone you've already has already bought from you. So one thing I try to teach our agents uh, is when you're in front of a client, make sure the client knows uh, all the product and services you offer. You may be there to sell Medicare, but have you a little sheet that shows all the product and services you offer? And uh, and so as you you know say, Mrs. Jones, today we took care of your Medicare, but let me show you the other product and services we offer. Mrs. Jones, do you have any life insurance? And let her talk for a second. She'll tell you yay or nay, and, and uh, you know, there's a good chance you might improve her situation on wh whatever life insurance she currently has. Mrs. Jones, you know, we, talk, we do a lot of uh, annuities, which, you know, safe money accounts. Uh, do you have any money in CDs or money market uh, in the market or, or annuities or, or whatever it may be? any 401ks, and they'll, they'll, they'll kind of tell you. So just kind of walk through all the different product and services you offer, and you'll be completely surprised 
to where the client will say, you know, yeah, I bought a life insurance last week or, you know, I have had life insurance for years and but I've got a term that's about to run out. All kinds of scenarios. Uh, so one, th one thing I'll say on that, and we'll move to the next topic here, is on the, on the uh, cross-selling, you may go in there and sell a Medicare Advantage or Medicare supplement or one product. And then, you know, each year you may go back to review it. I can promise you this, those individuals are buying those other product and services from other other agents because those other agents are making them aware that, that they had those, those product and services. So don't kid yourself that they're not buying product and services from someone else because they are. Uh, but because all you're doing is maximize your earning potential while you're in there, you're filling needs for the client, uh, increases persistency. The more, you know, Limber's always told us for years and years, which is a true stat, the more policy you, ha you have in your house, the less likely uh, they are to move their business. Uh, and uh, so, now we've, we've talked about uh, several things here. Now let's talk about commissions. And this is one thing that's kind of important in, in, uh, as you're recruiting. Now, some people may disagree with a little bit about what I'm gonna say, but, uh, and, and there's different ways to go about this. So I'm not saying I'm right, I'm wrong, uh, but this is my true, my true opinion and, and my true belief uh, on commissions. Uh, I wanna pay extremely high commissions. Uh, I want SIG, uh, I want to make sure that Secure Insurance Group puts all their agents at extremely high levels. Uh, and the reason being is because I do not want to have that commission conversation again in the future. I do not want an agent uh, to come to me and say, Brian, you put me at 100% with this final expense carrier and this person just offered me 110 or 120 or 130. I don't want to have those conversations. That's why we put, we put uh, because if I put you at, say, say that I put you at 100, and someone else offers you 120 and then you came back to me and I said, well, I can match that 120. What, where's the credibility there? Where's the, uh, because that agent's going to, I'm, if I were the person, I'd be thinking, well, why didn't we do that first? If, if you could do that, why didn't we do it first? Why do I have to, you know, threaten to leave you before, before that happens? And so I just don't like having the commission conversation. I want that full trust uh, with every agent. Uh, another reason is, is others are always trying to recruit your agents and, you know, obviously we're all recruiting. Uh, all the uh, the uh, FMOs across the U.S. are always recruiting, and and uh, so if you pay them high commissions and, and you do all the things that you know we've talked about, the support, uh, the marketing, prospecting support, etc., your, your chance of you losing an agent are very very slim. Uh, and uh, commissions are extremely important again, and the reason being is because it allows them to hire more staff. So if you have an agent that's very successful, the more money they make, the more money they got to spend on their uh, on, on them. Uh, you know, you may have an agent that, you know, once they got to 500 Medicare clients needs an assistant. Well, if they're making, you know, a tremendous amount of commissions, uh, then all of a sudden uh, they have the money there to do so. So it helps them hire support staff. It allows them to pay their quality staff even better, you know, because, uh, you know, if you don't want to pay minimum wage for it because you're probably not get you know, the, the quality you're looking for. So obviously the more money you have at your disposal, uh, the higher the uh, quality of individuals you're going to be able to bring to your team, and pay, but just pay extreme agents extremely well. And, and the biggest reason is this right here: it allows them to build a team. You know, because if an agent wants to build a team and they're they're just on street level comp, uh, it's hard for them to build a team while they're on street level comp. Uh, and so if they're above street level, if they're going to build a team, put them above street level, let them build a team, and then all of a sudden you're, you're multiplying instead of uh, adding. It allows them to hire the needed support staff like we talked about and allows them to spend more money on marketing. It allows them to, instead of writing you know, uh, $150,000 in production a year, it allows them to, to spend more money on marketing to where they can get up to a quarter million or, or half a million or whatever the number may be, depending on the product or services, you know, et cetera. But this allows them a, a lot, so a lot more. So let's talk about uh, the value proposition. There are a few things that, uh, uh, that, that Secure has done to help build our downline. Uh, and this is kind of the value proposition that when you bring an agent on, because uh, we can all pay high comp, you know, some of us pay higher than others. Uh, and uh, so, you know, some of it, we can all offer the products and the and the carrier. Some of us offers more products and carriers than others, and you know, vice versa. So it, you know, uh, but we, we all have a, a great opportunity. So we have to set ourselves apart. And the way, you know, one of the things is the value proposition. One of ours, obviously, is is the high commissions, uh, the product portfolio and carrier portfolio, uh, but also the the value proposition from the support standpoint. For example, like live Medicare seminars. Uh, we started doing that several years ago, and we've got agents all across the nation doing it now, and it is 
it, it's tremendous, tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Uh, we have virtual Medicare seminars, and again, tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Uh, and so, those are things that you could plug and play right, you know, right now where you're where, where you're at. Uh, retirement seminars, AP marketing support. You know, provide your agents. Uh, you know, if, if you have downline agents, uh, you know, provide them AEP marketing support for direct mail, Facebook advertising, uh, co-op the uh, website development. Uh, we had an agent down in Mississippi. We just helped him uh, build a, uh, a website and we co-op the cost of it. Assisting building local national sales teams. So if you have an agent that's uh, looking to build teams in a certain area, help them do recruiting, help them do, you know, the training, the uh, the onboarding, you know, et cetera, make it as easy as possible for them. So just a reminder, and I, as I wrap up here, uh, you only get one life, you know, here on this earth. It's You need to make the absolute best of it. Uh, I always tell, you know, my kids that, you know, when they, we, all, all of our children played sports, uh, a lot of sports, and, you know, I tell Cody when he left the basketball court, leave nothing, you know, leave nothing, uh, Leave it all on the court. Don't don't take anything. You know, uh, don't don't have any regrets when you walk off that court. Uh, and uh, same thing with you know building a business uh, in your life, your marriage, your children, whatever it is. Give it your all. Uh, but the biggest thing I can tell you, and this is, uh, don't let anyone or anything stand in your way of of, of living out your dream. Uh, and all I'm trying to do is is to is to encourage you to to do is to bet on yourself. That's you got to bet on yourself. Because uh, if you're not going to bet on yourself, there's not many other people going to bet on yourself. But bet on yourself, and always remember: if you don't quit, you cannot fail. Uh, and simply don't quit. And at the end of the day, you'll build something that you'll be proud of, and something you can leave as a legacy to your family, to your loved ones. And uh, uh, just in closing here, uh, I want to uh, thank everyone uh, for the for the opportunity here. Uh, hopefully, you got something out of it. If I can help you in any way. Uh, you can just reach out to Cody. He can give you all my contact information. I'd be glad to help you in the way I possibly can. Uh, but if you've, if you've ever dreamed of building an agency, you know, building a team, whatever it is that your dreams are, go after those dreams. Build, you know, do those dreams. You can do it. There's no question of mine uh, those, those on this call can do it. So if you, you decide what you want in life and go after it and bet on yourself, and if you don't quit, you cannot fail. Thank you very much. Hope you have a tremendous day. Welcome back. Hey, unbelievable job, Dad. He, he, th you can tell the dude has a passion for the insurance industry and he cares about people as much as anyone I've ever met. And, and the coolest quality of my father, who you just had the privilege of listening to, okay, as he's trained me up, for 30 years now, I guess, right? As I'm getting old, okay? Who else is like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm getting old too. The coolest quality is his personal integrity and ethics. And that's what he's instilled in me. And so I'm all, that's why like I'm committed to helping you succeed and I wanna see you win, right? When you come to Apris Nation 2021 in Dallas at the Statler with about a th thousand other agents this year, okay? You're going to win. You're going to improve. And everything is going to change because you chose to show up, right? The theme for the live event in Dallas this year in July, again, is the show must go on. In your life, the show must go on. We are the only, to my knowledge, insurance event that did a conference post-COVID in 2020. Why? because the show must go on. We can have reasons, as my trainer told me this morning, we can have reasons, or we can have results. I don't know about you, but I want some results. Okay, so make sure you go to apersation.com to grab your seat today. Now, there, there it is. Okay, there it is, we're back. We're back with the siren, okay? They're showing me what this one is, okay. Are we sure that we wanna give this away right now? You, you heard it. Okay, you know what that means. It means three minutes of tick a talking, man. What it means is literally an insane, crazy deal. Three minutes and then poof, it's gone. It's never to be come back. Here's what's about to happen. Here's what's about to happen. Okay, literally, we're going to allow three people to jump on two fire tickets, retail value 10K, two fire tickets, front row, 
meet Eric Thomas, all the private events, all the parties, tons of time with me, all the lunches, all the private speaker Q and A's, everything. And I've got something special planned for just fire only, by the way, total surprise. Two fire tickets for only $2,500. It's insane, it's ridiculous. It's, the, it's my favorite of all the flash sales. And it is totally ridiculous. So hit the link in chat right now to go to that flash sale. Again, three people, three minutes, Poof, it's gone. It's, it's ticking, docking, man. It's going. It's going to be quick. It's going to be gone. Make sure you take advantage of that. Totally freaking insane. You will not regret grabbing that, okay? Because I can promise you, after the three minutes is over, you can never get two fire tickets for $2,500 ever again. Totally nuts, okay? Totally nuts. Now, while that three minutes is going on, there's your chance. Now's your opportunity. I'm ready to bring up the next speaker. This individual is known by the industry as the queen of the bundle. I've been super honored to be able to spend time with this lady. What she is doing in the insurance industry is remarkable. Her personality is infectious. Her energy is contagious. And I'm honored to have a personal relationship with her. She is someone that I can pick up the phone and call and talk to and ask and text. And she just cares about helping people. Like we were on a recent pro, we were on a recent training and she literally gave out her cell phone to everybody. I'm like, Galen, what are you doing? She's like, if I can help somebody, it's worth it. She has one of the biggest hearts in the insurance industry. Please welcome Miss Galen Hendricks. Come on, Galen, come on now. I'm excited to hear this one. Let's go. I hope you are having a great day and are so ready for what you're about to get to see. You know, one of the things that was so fun for me last year was being involved in 8% Nation, but also being a keynote speaker. But where the blessings and the reward came from was the night before. I had had this whole speech prepared. I'd gone to my grandson's first freshman football game. I wasn't gonna miss it. I called Cody and said, hey, I know I'm supposed to be there, but I cannot miss this game, so I'm gonna go and then I'll come right after. Well, so I started visiting with all the folks there that were there the first night, and then the second day, I was supposed to speak. But they moved things around because they brought in a great speaker and I was certainly willing to move for Inky. Uh, he was phenomenal. And then I got put right behind uh, Anthony Forsett. And so what was great about last year was I'd gone to the women's event uh, as Lauren Askins had asked me to go to and got to meet all the ladies that came uh, to 8% Nation. And I started just grilling a bunch of them and asking them, you know, hey, what do you really want me to talk about? And what's going on and all that great stuff. And then it came down to, we wanna know about your road to here. And I was like, okay. And so we were having a big get together that night and I walked in there, said hello to a couple of people and I was like, I'm gonna redo my presentation. I'm gonna redo my speech for tomorrow. But I'd already had all these slides set up. So I had to figure out how that was gonna work. You know, I was like, oh, but isn't that the life of an insurance agent? You can practice all the objections in the world. You can role play all day. You can think you know your sales talk, but then you walk into a situation and it's totally different than what you expected. And so I think I have just been so well trained in just knowing to move and pivot and where to go. And so I went upstairs and I rewrote my speech. And what was great about all of that is I didn't expect my son to be in the audience. Uh, he was there the first day. I uh, wasn't gonna be able to make it the second day. He and his wife were buying a car and they had to go pick it up, but coincidentally they had to wait, so he got to come hear my speech. And 
The speech was rewritten based on all the people that have supported me in this journey. You know, one of the things that I think I bring uh, to this business, and it was given to me early on, was the gift of joy. You know, there's lots of times when we're just not happy. There's lots of times when we feel like we haven't done as well as we wanted to do. But I read something not too long ago that there is no success without failure. And I started thinking about that uh, a lot this year. You know, what I wanted to talk to you guys about and, you know, how to get you guys more excited about the business. I know some of you are so excited, like Bradley Hannon. Uh, if y'all were, were at 8% Nation last year, you saw Bradley. Uh, I've gotten to know Brad very well. He's become a really good friend. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, when I got started, were not even born yet. <laughs> so it was awesome having my son in the audience. It was awesome having my business partner in the audience. Um, you know, another great marketer that works with us. Um, you know, I just loved it last year. And so... When Cassidy asked me to get this virtual ready for you guys, I was like, okay, so what am I going to talk about in the virtual? And I went back and heard my keynote speech, and I talked about when I walked on stage, out of every lesson, there's a blessing, and out of every blessing, there's a lesson. And a lot of people think I'm from Georgia. I'm not. I am a homegrown Texas girl. I've been very blessed to call the land of the Cat Dallas Cowboys and the land of the Texas Rangers um, as my home. I lived in Lubbock, Texas for a while. But I will tell you this, Cody, you know, when we first started visiting, he gave me a statistic that I thought was not true, not to doubt you, Cody. I know you know your stuff now. But uh, he told me, he said, hey, did you know that 52% of the licensed agents are women. But you're still a rarity, Galen. I know you've told me you used to be the only female you ever saw and the only young person you ever saw at these meetings. But now you've got 52% of the licensed agents are a female like you. But would you like to know that there's very few that are in 8% nation? And I started thinking about that with his whole thing about, you know, you can't fail if you don't win, if you, ah, let's start over. You can't fail if you don't stop. And one of those things that I think is really important is trying. You know, trying is, you know, to me, one of the things that, is just in us. So if we try, we will buy. What that means to me, I do a lot of rhyming as y'all saw when I was on stage, but you know, if you try and you see you're making headway, you're gonna keep buying that this is a great opportunity. And so will your clients. You know, if you keep trying with a client, they're gonna buy from you. You know, you've heard me say, a lot of you that follow me on Queen of the Bundle, that you will not get better if you're bitter. And I believe that with all my heart. You know, one of the things that COVID or 2020 brought to the surface was that, you know, even the happiest of people can get sad. Even the brightest can see darkness. And so what I tried to do during COVID was read things that would make me feel better and would make me be better. Because at this point in my career, um, it's 36 years this year, you guys, and I can't even believe it. Some of you watching this aren't even 36 years old. Y'all heard me say last year, I'm a 35-year-old overnight success. And it was crazy on the virtual how many people kept calling and texting and emailing and Facebooking and saying, I love that because so many people I watch on Facebook seem like they're overnight successes. And guys, I will just tell you that's not true. 
There are people that did it quicker than me. And the reason they did it quicker than me is because there's so many different groups out there now. Everybody believes in the, uh, you know, sharing is caring mentality. We still have some cutthroat people out there and we still have some negative Nancy's and negative Ned's. But for every negative Nancy and negative Ned, there's probably 10 positive Patsies and positive Pauls. And so what I try to focus on is what I can do. Well, you know, last year I had this most amazing trip planned because in 2019, I finally got settled some stuff that was just awful um, in our business. And, you know, when you're going through that stuff, you just feel so plagued down until God shows up. And when God shows up, it doesn't matter what everybody else says. It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. It matters what he says and what he thinks. And uh, he decided that we were right and he gave us a major victory. And so after that victory, 2020, I was like, hey man, this is the year. This is the year I'm going to leave all that behind. I'm going to get to rocking and a rolling and this is going to be so great. I'm going to get Queen of the Bundle launched. I'm going to be on 8% Nation. And man, we were rocking. And at Christmas in 2019, I had surprised my family with this mega trip uh, to the uh, Mexican Mediterranean. Uh, we were going to do well watching and we were going to do deep sea fishing. And we were going on this brand new launch boat. Both had incredible sweets on the back, man. I was blowing it out. I was celebrating. Life was great. And then in February, my son and daughter-in-law just started, I would say, being negative Ned and negative Nancy to me. They were, we're not going to go on that cruise. We don't want to get stranded. We don't want to do this. It's going to be awful. And I was just feeling defeated and sad and then all of a sudden i was like okay well maybe just my husband and i'll go we'll go we had such a great time when we went to bermuda on the same boat and it was awesome and we loved it it was a sister ship but it was the same boat you know how the cruise ships are and um and so i kind of went down that road well then things started getting more and more dim you know, everybody was saying, hey, the cruise industry's going down. Princess had a ship out there that was at sea for a long time. And I just felt like the walls were closing in on me. And I didn't really want to tell my family how I was feeling because I wanted to still deliver a great trip. So most of y'all that know me, I know the Justin Brocks in the world know how I travel. I, I should have been a travel planner. I was a convention planner at one time, but... I love travel planning. And uh, when I say convention planner, I mean for my family and for small companies and that kind of thing. But, you know, I just really was sad. So I ended up getting us a condo uh, at a Ritz Carlton in Fort Lauderdale. And we just ended up having a really good time in Bell Harbor, for those of you that are familiar with Florida. It ended up being a blessing. I mean, we were going to these nice restaurants and we would be the only people in there. And we got to eat at some of the restaurants I never get to get into just because they're so swamped in South Florida. We had a great relaxing time. We came home and I was like, okay, well, we'll take that cruise in the summer because this is gonna be over in the summer. Just like all of you thought, you know, and it wasn't. Um, so it was a very sad time. Well, my daughter-in-law started this weight loss program and I was like, okay, if I'm not gonna be able to travel and I'm not gonna be able to be out with my guys and gals and teaching them how to sell cancer and dental vision and hearing, you know, I'm gonna end up gaining more weight than I've already gained and that's freaking me out. And so I literally, and all of you that know me know I'm really transparent. So what happened is, is that I had a lap band surgery in 2009 and lost 109 pounds. And then when I had all this stress, when we terminated an employee, 
partner, whatever you want to call this person, um, the stress was crazy. People were saying things that weren't true. People were writing things that weren't true. All of a sudden, I saw my reputation, my credibility just being ugh, awful. And so I gained all the weight back. And well, I didn't gain all of it back, but I gained 69 pounds of it back. And, you know, it was, it was hard. It was just hard. And what ended up happening is I went on this weight loss journey. A lot of y'all know it because I posted it. I'm making myself accountable. It's really more about accountability than braggability, although I am pretty proud of myself. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's been a hard journey. But, you know, as of today that I'm sitting in this chair, I've lost 65 pounds. And I feel so much better. If you've noticed this year's virtual versus last year's, this year I have it going portrait. And last year I had it going landscape. Uh, like we all do when we're doing our selfies and we've gained a little weight. But I'm telling you all that story because I am probably one of the positive people that you're going to meet. I always try to find the silver lining in dark clouds. I'm, I'm always going to be that positive role model. So 2020 was a difficult year for me. But what I figured out about 21 is I made a hashtag that 21 is going to be fun. And I'm super excited because, you know, here we are today is what, February the, well, I don't have my glasses on, but it's February 6th on Saturday as I'm filming this. And man, this year's been awesome. We've had a lot of stuff go on still. Um, you know, I think one of the, the things about this year is just everybody pulling together you know, when I saw COVID happening before my very eyes, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got all these belly to belly agents that I need to start showing how to call their clients and get them to cross sell and get them prepared in case they can't go out and write customers any insurance uh, door to door or belly to belly or face to face, whatever you called it. And so we saw these trainings take off like rocket fire. We saw agents starting to increase their income 30%. We saw people that had never, ever wrote anything but a Medicare supplement. Now, all of a sudden, writing cancer and writing dental vision and hearing and writing, um, you know, short-term medical plans, um, hospital indemnity plans, all the great stuff that I love to write. And then we started having agents come to us and say, hey, my friend told me that you and Manhattan Life filed this lawsuit against the government and you won. And that's why we're able to sell these HI plans. And I didn't even know that about you. And oh my gosh, 2020 just started being this bright and shining star. So it literally went from this brightness in January to this darkness for me in March to this brightness again, starting in April and May and June and having large distributions that weren't writing business, all of a sudden writing tons of business and then writing great things on Queen of the Bundle about me and calling carriers and saying, oh my gosh, Galen increased my income or, you know, senior security benefits increased my income or, you know, Scotty or Sean or Taylor did this training for us and it, it rocked. And, you know, we want or we want to be part of that. And so we got to the end of 2020 and all of a sudden I'm starting to see all these numbers come in in AEP and I am like, holy moly's Batman. <laughs> What in the world? This is nuts. We are like breaking last year's record by leaps and bounds. So God always has a bigger plan. And I know there's a lot of people out there that get turned off when people bring God into their presentation. They think, oh gosh, this is going to be a Bible beating session or a holy roller session. But I will tell you, um, I have spoke of God's name in our business since I started this business. And I really truly believe that's why we have all the blessings that we do. Um, I'm one of those people that I live life 
to the fullest. You know, my dad died at 52 years of age. My mom died at 72 years of age. And, you know, I hope to be here a long, long time. I just lost a really good friend, important person in my life. Uh, I found out about it just a couple of days ago. Um, but he was somebody that um, I dated, was a very important part of my life uh, before my husband. And he was 63 years old when he passed away and he passed away of COVID. And that was the first person that I knew close to me that had passed away from this awful illness. And so for the last couple of days, I've just been in this funk where I've been like, okay, I'm rocking and I'm getting all this stuff done, but then I would find myself just stopping again. And I think what we have to remember is if we don't have the valleys, we don't appreciate the peaks. And if we don't have failure, we don't appreciate success. And so again, the hashtag or our uh, tagline for this conference is, you can't fail if you don't quit. I, I think you have to think about failure because failure is what makes success taste so sweet. You know, success is the best, but I think it's the best because of all the things you tried, all the things you did, all the things that didn't work out like you wanted them to, but then you just get that one tiny victory. And it's like, oh man, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm so excited about this. This, this is how it's gonna work for me. And you see a lot of agents now on their Facebook pages uh, where I said last year, you know, not most people woke up going, hey, I'm going to be an insurance agent. That's what I want to do. Most of us came into the business kicking and screaming or we came into the business out of frustration or we came, out of the bit, came into the business like now. I mean, we're really living in an economy where it's pass or fail. It's rich or poor. And... You know, we are so blessed to be in an industry that we got to keep working. You know, we got to keep making a great living and we got to keep our spirits up and our families didn't worry about how they were going to get fed. And, you know, we still took vacations and we still, you know, life other than we had a little mini shutdown and life other than. You know, we didn't get to go to the restaurants that we necessarily wanted to go to. And if you're in California, I'm sorry. I know you guys had a worse shutdown than anybody. But, you know, I think what we have to look at is how we survived. You know, how we fought and we made it through. And I am super, super excited about 2021. It's going to be fun. I don't mean to take away from 8% uh, Nations uh, tagline, but that's going to be mine, and I hope it's yours. I am so looking forward to seeing you guys in Dallas in July. There will be a lot of pool time because, you know, it's hot here in Texas. We got great Mexican food. We've got great barbecue. We got big hair. Uh, we got big smiles. We got joyful uh, attitudes in this state, uh, but we also have a lot of heat, and it's going to be a really fired up conference. I am looking forward to seeing all of you again. This year, Senior Security Benefits is going to have a breakout session. We're going to sponsor along with the Cody Askins a uh, panel of some of the best we know in this business. And I'm going to hold those secrets because they're really good friends of mine. And they're going to get on the stage with us uh, and my business partner, Taylor Martin, and they're going to blow your mind. You're going to learn stuff from them that you didn't even know how to do. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that I absolutely love about this business. I love about this conference. I love about being an agent. You know, I told you guys from the stage last year, I love being a mom and a grandmother and a wife and a, 
a professional and a CEO and all those titles. But the fact that my dad brought me into the insurance business subconsciously, basically, because he knew I didn't want to be in the business. And now it is the like absolute joy of my life. It is so much fun to get to hang out with you guys and ladies. And um, I told y'all last time I use guys for everybody, so I don't mean to offend anybody, but I love you all. I am so excited about being with you uh, this year in July. And also, I hope you get something out of this virtual. You know, turn these negatives into just nothings. You know, they're nothings. They are just nothing. They are just really the step to success. And remember, success is best. And that's what we're all going to strive for this year. I hope to bring you a, a keynote speech that uh, you'll be just as supportive as you were last year of me. And I just really appreciate you all calling the 8% Nation folks and telling them that you really enjoyed um, my speech and enjoyed me. And I appreciate all the followers on Queen of the Bundle. And I am just so eternally grateful uh, for all of the friendship that all of you have given me. I know sometimes Facebook can just be the glow show, but I think what's good about it is that it is the glow show. I think when we're having a bad day, we can go there and get fired up, revved up, and ready to go. And then we have our friends out there that, you know, they don't know every single thing we're going through, so they support us. So you guys have a fantastic, fantastic year. Uh, we'll see you in July, and remember, they're going to keep buying as long as you keep trying. So have a great day. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Now you see why I love that woman so much. Awesome job, Galen. She is unbelievable. Okay, when it comes to cross-selling, right, selling cancer insurance, like she has a why that makes sure she shows up because the show must go on. Okay, awesome job, Galen. Thank you for being a part of this. Love spending time with you. You can also see her again live at 8% Nation 2021 in, live in Dallas. Okay, now I'm gonna release an 8% deal really quick. For those that didn't hear, again, CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. For those that did not hear about the new Rising Star ticket, we've still got a few spots left. Okay, we're only doing 92 seats for this. If you're watching, you're like, dude, I'm committed. I wanna win. I wanna show up. I don't have a lot of money yet, but I promise you, I am a rising star in the industry. I had a company give me the Rising Star Award years ago, and that meant the world to me. Other people sometimes have to see it in you before you can see it in yourself. True or true, right? Like I've had moments in my life where people have spoken to me and said, man, you're gonna be something special. Man, you're gonna do big things. Man, everyone in the industry is going to know who you are. Man, you're changing the world. Man, you're doing this, man. Other people saw me as a rising star before I saw me as a rising star. So the question for you is, who out there is like, dude, I really believe I'm a rising star. I really believe I'm going to make it. I really believe I'm going to make it big. I'm committed. I will show up. I will do whatever it takes. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to hit the link in chat, go to apersnation.com. We're doing 92, okay, 92 of these tickets for rising stars only to go live to Dallas for $92. And what that signifies is by purchasing the rising star ticket now, today, it tells me that you are committed to going to 8% because you'd rather be part of the 8% than the 92 and you are going to be a rising star. So go to CodyAskins.com forward slash deals to take advantage of that Apris Nation deal. Again, $92 ticket to be a rising star. Okay, also for those, okay, that's a cool ticket. I wanna help you. I, 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 again, I wanna give you a hand up instead of a hand down, okay? Now, I'm loving all, everybody that's sharing this on social, tagging me on Instagram, at Cody.Askins, right? Tagging me on Facebook, sharing this thing out. I'm seeing several of you sharing this thing to Facebook groups where insurance agents are at. They need to hear this message, right? They need to hear these words from these different speakers. 
right? And I'm excited to bring it. So make sure who shared it in social so far. Okay, good, good. Keep doing that. Awesome, thank you, good, great, okay? I'm excited to bring it to the next speaker. Okay, someone I met, he was on the original panel, just like Eric, we're good buddies. He came to the refer, one of our, uh, literally our first ever retreat in Arizona. They call him the Medicare Guru. I just spoke as Medicare Guru's mastermind. It's Mr. Justin Brock, okay? Is he ready? Okay, Justin, love you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Love spending time with you. Now let's drop it like it's hot. Let's drop it like, let's drop it like it's hot, okay? Let's do it. Turn everybody into a guru. That's what he's about to do. Please welcome to the virtual stage, my good buddy, Mr. Justin Brown. Hey guys, Justin Brock here, and I'm so excited that Cody asked me to be part of the 8% Nation virtual conference uh, with so many people out there watching and so many awesome speakers sharing this virtual stage. I am uh, humbled that you know I'm I'm actually you know able to speak at the same time to the same crowd. So I appreciate you guys listening to me. I hope I can some pro provide some value. Um, I plan on this being extremely contextual. I'm talking about our brick and mortar uh, or brick and mortar play on on insurance. We have a a uh, pretty large book of Medicare business in the Northeast Mississippi area, and we run a Facebook group called Medicare Gurus. Um, so that's kind of our claim to fame. If you haven't heard of me, please look it up on YouTube and you'll see that we uh, practice what we preach every day and that we're running a legitimate uh, agency. So the information that we have to share should be practical and actually work because it's working for us in real time. So what I'm gonna get to is talking about reverse engineering the Brock and Mortar uh, and that's that Brock and Mortar name came from a friend of ours, Zach Munger. He came into our office to tour it from the inside out uh, for about a year ago. And uh, when he did, he said, oh, instead of a brick and mortar, we're going to call it Brock and Mortar as a play on my name, Justin Brock. And so we've kind of ran with it. So we're going to reverse engineer the Brock and Mortar slide. All right, so to follow along, if you're having trouble, these slides will turn black here in a minute. It'll definitely be easier to see for you for sure if you can't see them now. But you can you, you can uh, scan this QR code or head over to medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar, and there'll be some visual references to what we're talking about here that should help you uh, be able to see that. So open that up in a new window, pull it up on your phone somewhere. You'll be able to see the slides that I'm going over as well as uh, being able to see a little video from uh, inside our office uh, and see how the Brock and Mortar uh, vision works. So, next slide. Remember that uh, is Medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar. Yes, dot academy is a thing. All right, so I'm going to go over these seven steps. And if you're looking at that visual reference, you should see a video of a lot of action in our office. It's uh, about few, a few hours worth of time lapse for people coming in and out in our busy season. We do get a lot of foot traffic, and it's awesome. And that's what I'm going to be trying to share with you how to replicate. Uh, if you check out here, so this is uh, our, our number one principle. We're going to go over seven uh, principles to help you uh, set up your brick and mortar or have a brick and mortar office. One is utilize national budgets to fuel your brand. What I mean by that is uh, by using these national budgets to fuel your brand, I'm talking about the big spenders in the world. Like we can't all outspend the largest private equity backed corporations or, or publicly traded corporations advertising budgets, but we can utilize what they do to drive awareness and we can kind of be that uh, warm, you know, presence locally or, you know, in an area to, to stand out in a crowd of, of maybe overproduced uh, advertisements. So always be branding is my little sub in here. So head over to the next slide there, said. So uh, as these slides, I'm going to talk about Joe Namath is not hurting you. So Joe Namath, it, you know, anybody that's watching TV at all, uh, will see a Joe Namath Medicare commercial. Anybody that's selling Medicare definitely um, has has seen has heard their clients ask about the Joe Namath commercial. What's Joe Namath talking about? Blah blah blah. And um, a lot of people get irritated with those advertisements. They're irritated about the compliance side of them, or you know having to compete with them. But what I like to bring up is how many people who aren't your current customers are hearing the Joe Namath uh, commercial, and they're also confused or or. Or they, they are aware of it. They're made hyper aware to plan availability or annoyance by that. And I want you to know that you can capture that, that product of that national marketing budget by being able to latch on to that problem and be that 
voice of reason in a crowded field of overproduced advertisements. Second thing I wrote is the e-healths of the world, the big, large, publicly traded groups, um, are creating a vacuum in the market that can only be filled with house-to-house -house brokers or brock and mortars, brick and mortar offices. Somebody local to cut through the mud. Now, why I'm not saying that they're not doing a ton of business at all. They're doing a ton of business, but there's some people that are not going to call a national marketing group like that and do business over the phone. There's just some people that won't, especially in the Medicare or senior market for a service like this where they have to provide so much valuable information. There's a lot of people that are very, very uh, turned off to that idea. And so you have an opportunity to help those people in a different way. Last thing I've written here is people print off content from my friends' nationally branded websites and bring it to me to help them decide on a plan. We have friends that have really large sites that get 200,000 uh, Medicare beneficiaries visiting monthly. And um, we have people that locally here and all over the nation really is doing this. They're, they're printing off things that they've read online on these sites, but bringing it to us locally, bringing it to our rock and mortar, or calling us and reading it locally because there's a little bit of trust in us being local. So you can still do business over the phone locally, but the idea that you're over there and they could get you if they want to. Some people say, I know where to find you if I have a problem in a kind of threatening way, but uh, this is all, all in good fun, it's a joke. But next slide. So I'm gonna go over practical steps. I'm gonna kind of move over here just to break the monotony, but practical step number one, I'm gonna try to do a practical step with each of these principles. Practical step is when you're recording content, creating graphics, mailers, et cetera, make mention of some of these iconic commercials like the Joe Namath, Dan Danny Glover, these different celebrities that are on these commercials, make mention of them and to give your audience a clear indication that you're standing out in the crowd, right? Um, that you are a local resource. If they want to know about those plans, but they're too afraid to call this 1-800 number, they can come to you locally or call you locally and you're there. It's the Brock and Mortar concept. Next slide. So practical step number two here is if you don't want to make mention, and some people feel awkward about doing that and I understand that, so just be educational and make your content down to earth, local, not overproduced. That local feel wins in a small to mid-sized market. It makes you feel like you're you know, the, the uh, mom and pop shop. Some people want that for sure. So next step. So number two, you're not Gary Vaynerchuk. Now this is not a dig at Gary Vaynerchuk, which you'll see in the next slide. I'm not digging at him. I'm saying that you're not Gary Vaynerchuk. So a lot of people that are watching these virtual conferences are very in love with the idea of digital marketing, and so are we. Digital marketing is great, but the internet is great, but it isn't all that exists in the world. It's not the only way to reach uh, people. It's not the only way. So everybody that's getting so into digital sometimes get away from some of the down-to-earth, you know, old-school ways that still work. Next step. First of all, your demographic demands a diverse array of advertising strategies. So your, your demographic is aging, so some of them are 65, some of them are 75, some of them are 85. Now I'm talking mostly to Medicare or senior market final expense agents, but uh, that demographic, the older demographic, is, is a very diverse group. There are tons of them that are on Google, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're doing these things that are uh, more you know, revolutionary, but there's a ton that aren't. And even some of the ones that are online are responding to local advertising while being online, like the people that are printing off the Google uh, stuff that they find and bringing it to us. Um, so these are the different ways, you know, I'm just laying out here, Facebook, Google, YouTube, TV, radio, newspaper, direct mail, billboards, wrapped RVs. I made mention of wrapped RVs. There's a guy in Utah that has one. I think it's a cool idea. He drives around town and he's a billboard for his own business all the time. This isn't a dig at Gary Vee. I love the guy. But the wacky, wailing, inflatable arm tube man, men work. They, they do work, especially in mid-sized branded markets. So what I mean, I'm making a, a kind of a goof at the whole like wacky, wailing, inflatable arm tube man. But there is some truth that that attention locally especially drives uh, business to that local office. It brands that local location. It makes them think when they're driving by, what is that office? Oh, it's a Medicare office. Okay, oh, it's a life insurance office, whatever. We aren't in retail. It's the service industry with a middle to late age market. So if you're marketing to middle to late age and you're in the service industry, I know a lot of times you're seeing stores like uh, Gap or places that are closing down their, their local branch, but those are retail clothing stores. Uh, and those are being affected differently than the service industry by the online revolution, right? So next slide. Practical step. 
For brick and mortar, you want to buy or rent an office with great sign space and or curb view, preferably both. If you can have somewhere where you have a lot of traffic coming by and maybe a signage space that is, you know, stands out and is, is good. We just bought a building off of Main Street for a second location with a huge sign space. And one of the things we thought is, shoot, I mean, a, a billboard right down the street is $1,000 a month and we're getting one included in the cost of our building right here. So we thought about that as part of our equation. Next step. Practical step number two on this uh, slide is outside that office do something to get attention. Word of mouth over time will work. We'll do the work. It will. So word of mouth over time is awesome. Word of mouth, uh, you know, the more people that get to your office is going to build word of mouth. You're going to get more and more traffic. But at first, the wacky wailing inflatable arm tube man, put it in an acronym here, W-W-I-A-T-M, isn't a bad idea. The wacky wailing inflatable arm tube man, I know that's a goofy thing that I'm talking about, but just like flags, signs, a signage space on your building, flyers and neighborhoods around to drive awareness that you're there so that when people need you, you're there. There's people that'll see that and they're like, oh, he's there and they don't need you now, but they need you a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Their parents need you, but they know you're there. They know you're there. Next slide. Educate. Oh, and then educate, 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 educate. So what am I talking about here? Educating. Next slide. Educational seminars, educational webinars, TV commercial segments that educate, radio shows. So this is a big one I've been telling people. A lot of stations will give you a weekly segment on radio for 500 bucks a month, even if there's only 1,000 listeners on there. You're getting 10-minute segments to talk about stuff. You also get to use that content that's being recorded on good sound equipment. You can go start a podcast with that, that, uh, in, that, that time. They'll give you that uh, download to do that. You can start a YouTube channel with it. You can start all of the above. You can use that content, but also you're inundating an audience with a long form message. So you're going to get a much higher turnout of a smaller audience with that. Definitely worth looking into for almost anybody. Um, even graphics can be educational. So when you're doing mailers, make sure that you're adding something that's educational. We have a, a friend uh, does business with us, at, you know, at one of our downline agencies, they send a, uh, a three-page long-form Turning 65 letter to T65s that, that just goes through and explains Medicare A to Z and then just asks them if they have any information or need help with the plans to call. But that long-form educational letter in the mail really helps. He's been sending it for years, so he's getting a great response. So we are in the thank you economy. So that pun back to Gary Vee, he comes up with the thank you economy. People like to do business, uh, they say thank you by doing business with you. So if they're saying thank you by doing business with you, that means you have to give them something to say thank you for. Provide education, provide content, be a resource for them before they've done business for it, with you. So next slide. Practical step number one, start with seminars. I talked about seminars. I feel a little bit hypocritical here because we have just added seminars, but if I was starting all over and I'm starting a brock and mortar, I would go out and start doing seminars day one to drive traffic back to our office because it works, it's pretty cost effective. And a lot of times, like if you're in Medicare Advantage too, these local carrier representatives that are trying to expand will help you with some of that local cost. Uh, we get some, definitely get some support from one of our uh, carrier partners at Aetna that help us with this. Now it probably depends on the market and what their plan availability is there, but you know you can always look at that and see if you can get support from a good carrier. Um, so then when they fill out their permission to contact forms, this is important. You need to call them to set up appointments at your office. Okay, Set up as many appointments in your office as possible because you're branding your location by getting more people into your office where they know where it's at. So then when they refer you, you'll actually get to the point where they're referring you, yeah, he's over on 144 South Thomas Street across from that Texaco, the Harbor Freight. People are walking into your office then. Oh, he's about a quarter mile from the Social Security office. So when you go to the Social Security office, you know, head over there. That's the kind of stuff we try to put in the, the minds of our clients. But by them being here, they're out there being advocates for you, right? Next slide. Fourth principle, everything you do, advertise the idea of walking in the office. So advertise the office location. Next slide. Practical step here is staff the location 40 hours a week. From the get-go, you need to be prepared to have at least a receptionist there 40 hours a week. If you're transitioning from being a field agent to this, 
you're going to need somebody there because you're still going to have to go out and run some direct mail leads or market, you know, through BNI groups or whatever. You're not going to be there all the time. You need somebody there all the time to make it feel like a staffed, professional location so that you will get more and more people to walk in and become for that. Even if she's just there to, he or she is there to set up appointments for you, etc. So staff location 40 hours a week, hire a receptionist and have them call your current clients to set up reviews in the office. So if you have 200 clients already, 300 clients, 1,000 clients, whatever, you want to get them in your office. Now they become advocates for your office. They want the office. Trust me, we've been through this. We saw it happen. We didn't start off with an office. We've seen the other side. They wanted a local office. They wanted somewhere to go. Now we have so many people coming in here, it's almost uncontrollable, as you can see by the video at medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar. So get as many people in your office as possible to create the word of mouth, right? Next slide. Number five, allow time to work. You need to allow time to work, uh, allow time for this method to work. So we, um, you know, it, it's, it's not like you, you open the office, you hire somebody, and boom, everybody's there, right? You have to allow a little bit of time for this to come to fruition, but continue to make, uh, pave the way. A brand is not built overnight. You know, and you have a branded location, you have a branded name, you have a branded business name. You can brand a lot of things, but that location being branded, uh, it's more of like a gradual effect. It's like a snowball effect, right? So allow it. It takes some time. If you build it correctly, they will come. Next slide. In the meantime, you need to keep putting food on the table. I've seen a lot of people that set up the office and then they just uh, kind of quit doing what they were doing before that was actually making ends meet. So you got to keep doing that. You have to uh, staff the office appropriately. So there's a little bit of an investment on the front end because you're having to buy or rent a building, staff the office, but it is, the, it is a great way. It's not the only way. It's a great way to really get to the next level, to build something to scale that you can actually eventually build yourself out of and have this massive, you know, money-making concept for you, staffed with tons of LOAs, et cetera. Um, so next slide. Practical steps. What was working before? Direct mail, seminars, cold calling are all low barrier to entry. They could be things you want to become unnecessary or supplementary in the future. Maybe it's things you're trying to get away from, but do not stop bringing in new business while your brock and mortar is building. So your brock and mortar continues to build you want to make sure you're bringing new business in the front door, but that front door can be metaphorical. If you're still doing it by going out and writing business through direct mail leads, that's fine. Just always be trying to get people in the office too, always trying to get people in the office and it builds that branded location. Next step. Number six, you need a reaper. So I'll tell a little story. When I was six, six years old, seven years old in the summer, I lived in a town called Marietta, Mississippi. Population was under a thousand, it was about 900 people. I lived next to a guy who was a pea farmer. And in the summer, he would take me and a bunch of other kids, most of them were older than me, out to these pea fields and we'd pick bushels of peas all day. Bushel is like a, you know, we, we'd fill up five gallon buckets. I don't know how, I can't even remember how many bushels that was, but we'd fill up these five gallon buckets, they'd take them back and they'd, you know, churn them out and sell purple whole peas. Really good food, by the way, if you're not from the South. But we would do this all the time. Well, one summer, his name was Billy Joe Barnes. Yes, I'm from Mississippi. Billy Joe Barnes gets a reaper. He gets this thing and he can just drive through the field. All of a sudden, I wasn't able to earn a cheeseburger and $3 every day in the summer anymore. Uh, I was out of a job at six years old. It's the first time I found myself on the unemployment line. But what, what I'm getting at is he got a reaper. He got a machine that was able to... Uh, you know, cultivate a lot more um, product, right? Faster than six-year-old boys that are earning cheeseburgers. So you need one. The bigger and the more fruitful your fields are, the more hands you need to help. Next slide. So this is going to be talking about building a team. So after that time has elapsed, and not, you know, it could be a year, two years, three years, whatever, it depends on how hard and fast you go at it, you know, and, and what resources you have to throw at it. But once, once you get there, Maybe even preemptively, if you you know, uh, you know, if you're really aggressive, you have to build a team. Your the initial investment in the Brock and Mortar was signage, a receptionist, rent, effort, and time. Effort and time probably being the biggest part of it, the one that most people miss. Now, if you've done what I told you, it's time to build your team. This is perhaps one of the most difficult and rewarding tasks. Okay, next slide. 
Practical steps. Hire them fast, fire them fast. No. I said wrong, right? Who's heard that? Who's heard hire them fast, fire them fast? I personally don't believe it, okay? I don't, I'm, it's not for me. I get that a large, large organizations sometimes do have to hire big crops of groups, and I understand the concept. But for most of us building a brock and mortar, you can be selective, you can find people. Don't try to hire yourself though. Try to find other people with talents that you can really cultivate. In my opinion, um, you need to find people who do not understand their full potential and help them realize it. Find people who are talented, but they don't understand what's possible and show them and, and show them and give them the way through your brock and mortar, through your business, right? That's for me what hiring people is all about. It's finding the people, it's not finding the MBA, you know, graduates or all that. It's finding people that, you know, took a different road but are very talented and then give them the lane to use that talent in your business. We've all talked about how our whys. I can tell you that one of my biggest unrealized whys was culture and cultivation. I didn't know it, you know, uh, you know I think a lot of times you understand your why as you grow your business or as you grow in, your, in life, you develop new whys. One of the biggest whys for me has been seeing you know, team members come to fruition or understand their capability and their talent and grow their talent, grow their skill set and be happy in your, your culture. You know, you're cultivating that talent and then you're helping them grow. Super rewarding, probably for me, has become more rewarding than you know, selling and helping Medicare beneficiaries, which was my first big reward. Next slide. Seven, seventh principle of seven. Everything else, okay? There's only so much I can cover in this amount of time. So it is a high level overview, okay? Now on that site that I, I sent you to, medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar, you can actually go through there and there are some options on how to get more plugged in, how to get more plugged into people that are doing it. Not just about the Brock and Mortar, but other concepts. We've grown, we've grown our phone sales, we've grown our distribution, there's all this kind of stuff. And there's a few different programs that we offer that help people plug into that concept. One of them, and probably the most popular, is our Medicare Monsters program. Uh, it's been a very, very uh, impactful thing on people, as you can see by going over there and looking at some of the reviews from people. But getting in a Medicare Monsters program where we have weekly accountability calls virtually, you can do it from anywhere, and it's an affordable concept. It's been super impactful for people, so I hope that you uh, go over there and check it out. And of course, please join our Medicare Gurus Facebook group where we have a ton of action uh, and a ton of questions answered absolutely for free over there. So check it out. Thank you so much for letting us uh, help you. And I hope to see you at MedicareCon 2020 by going over to MedicareCon.com. See you later. Welcome back. Here we go. It's just been an unbelievable day or it's just been an unbelievable day. Okay. Justin Brock, unbelievable job, buddy. I enjoyed speaking to your MedicareCon a couple weeks ago. Okay. And you are changing the game in the industry. Appreciate you, the friendship, everything you're doing. And thank you for sharing, man, how you've blown up and have a team and multiple offices and all the things you're doing, truly special and grateful. So thank you very much. Good up for Justin Brock in the comments. Okay, let's light it up for him, JB. Thank you, sir. I wanna mention before we bring on our next speaker that one of the things I love doing the most in the whole world outside of just jumping on and promoting and being a part of 8% virtual, right? Is spending time with you and your team, okay? If you have a company, if you have a team, if you're making six figures and you wanna to get to seven, or you have a team of agents that are not at six figures or they're at light six figures and you want them to get to six figures or even higher, okay? Go to CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. Again, CodyAskins.com forward slash deals because we've got a blank form for you to fill out to express interest and to show us that, hey, Cody, I want you to help me level up and train my team. I can promise you, here's what you can expect when you fill out that form. If you have a team and you fill out the form, here's what you can expect, okay? I'm gonna motivate them like you've never seen. I'm gonna give them ideas that they've never heard of. I'm gonna challenge them like never before. And they're gonna leave there more ready to change their life and to think on a whole nother level than you've ever seen, period. I just got a text this morning, literally, from one of our team training clients. And he said, dude, I'm giving you a hug and a kiss next time I see you. And I'm like, why? He's like, figurative speak, figuratively speaking, that is. He's like, except for the hug. He said, what I'm definitely going to be doing, okay, is 
adding more people because I've seen how much you've changed the mindset of my current team. They're ready to run through a wall. They're unbelievable. They're excited. They're ready. He said, I can tell you that $30,000 that I paid you, I've already got it back. He said, in the first two months. He said, because what you did for my team is changing the game. So go to CodyAskins.com forward slash deals to make sure that we speak to you about helping change the mindset, the motivation, and the actual moves, man, when it comes to your specific team. All right, our next speaker is ready. She's waiting. She's ready to come in. I'm excited about this, this lady, okay? It has been unbelievable getting to know her. She has done an unbelievable job in the industry at putting out content to help everyone. And what I can tell you is, Miss Christine Austin L is doing a phenomenal job at driving the industry. Okay, so I'm excited that she's a part of this. I'm about ready to bring her out. Please give it up, please welcome. Here we go, light it up in chat if you've seen her on YouTube or Facebook or everything she's doing. Thank you for being a part of this. Appreciate the friendship, and I'm excited to hear you speak as well. Here we go to Miss Christine Austin. Hello, and thank you for reaching out to me so that I can be a part of this amazing platform. I am honored and I am excited to just be a part of your vision, Cody. I've watched several of your videos from Facebook to Instagram and, of course, YouTube. And you are consistent in showing up and sharing your knowledge to help others in their business to be successful. So again, I thank you for having me. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Christine Austin Eel, and my sole mission is to encourage, inspire, motivate, and train the masses to live their best life now. And for me, life now stands for living in full expectation, never-ending opportunities with them because I believe that we all have everything we need to be successful inside. I have been able to serve thousands of people through my YouTube channel, as well as help agents earn six figures plus by training and other tools that are available to them. And the crazy part about what I do now is I did not even want to be an insurance agent. I worked 14 years in corporate America, and actually I loved my job. I felt like I had made it, honestly. I started when I was 19 years old. I had an office on the 23rd floor by the 14th year where I could look out of my big window and watch people basically live their lives. I was married at age 19 as well and divorced at age 25, I'm left with one daughter. So now I was a single mother making about 56,000 a year before taxes. And still, I, I kind of still thought I was on top of the world until the day that my sister didn't show up for work. Um, her manager called me to ask if um, she was sick and I had no idea. I called her phone numbers and I called my mother. I called even her boyfriend um, to see what was going on and nobody had heard from her. So my mother started calling around and found that she was laid up in a hospital. My mother was furious. She was furious because nobody had called and my mother couldn't go to the hospital because she was caring for three young foster children. So it was up to me to go and make sure that she was okay. I went to the senior manager to tell him what was going on and to let him know I needed him to cover me because I needed to go to the hospital when he told me I couldn't leave. Are you kidding me? The rage that I felt building up in my stomach, the thoughts of all the years I spent working early mornings and late nights while my young daughter was being raised by somebody else, the time I had to stay during 9-11 to make sure that everyone on the 23rd floor made it out safely before I could leave. Are you kidding me? My view of that perfect job started to shift at that very moment. I had to make a decision. So I grabbed my bags and all the personal belongings that I could and I headed to the hospital. Tears flowing down my face because I wasn't sure what I was going to find when I got to the hospital. I didn't know if I'd have a job the next day or what I was going to do if I didn't. I didn't know anything. I ran into the ER back to my sister's room as I noticed her laying there naked, hanging across the bed with the sheet laying um, draped across her back. 
it looked as though she was trying to reach for something as I went around the side of her bed. I can tell that the help button, the remote was dangling down from the side of the bed. So I'm assuming that she was trying to reach for help. Called my mom immediately because she was a nurse. And I told her what I had seen and she told me she was having a stroke. Crazy. Had I not left that job, my sister would have died that day. Fast forward, I did lose the job. And now I was thrown into figuring out my life now, right? I couldn't get another job because my resume was so my resume was so large and I was considered to be overqualified. And here I, I just wanted a job. My savings was running very low and I had no one else that could financially help me. My mother was taking care of my now sister and she was unable to talk, walk, or even feed herself. I fell into a great depression. I didn't know what to do but I thought I was living my best life, now I became barely living. What happened? I remember asking God, like, how could this happen to us? Why? And I'm sure that most of you can relate if you've lived long enough. And in these times, if we're not careful, we'll quit. We'll quit trying, quit living, quit smiling, quit laughing. We'll just quit on life. But if you hold on long enough, you will not fail in this life. You can and you will thrive if you just don't quit. So I picked up myself with God's strength and I found some fight left in me. I woke up one day and, and I don't mean waking up literally, but I woke up realizing that that job that I thought I loved, I really didn't need. Actually, I was missing out on life because I was always working in a building, building up someone else's dream while they were living their best life. I started reading the Bible and self-help books because I knew I was worth so much more than what I had found myself. I started going to networking events so I could meet different people and learn the different lifestyles and talk to people and figuring out like how to be your own boss and leveling up. This is where I learned how to be an entrepreneur. I met Chuck Sanders who owned a mortgage company here in the Pittsburgh area and he needed someone to help his people get qualified for a loan. And I don't know where it came from, but I said, hey, I can help you create a credit company. I don't know, but I was like, I fixed my credit when I had blacked out and ran, you know, head on to a PAT bus and actually passed away. Thank God they brought me back, you know, so I'm here for a reason and I know that, but I had to fix my credit because I had to file for bankruptcy. So here I am, I can help you. And here, finally linked up with a powerful man within the community who love to help others. My journey as an entrepreneur began. Again, everything was amazing. I worked for myself. I had the backing of a large mortgage company and I was able to be with my daughter every single day. Every day. I was living the dream life. And then the mortgage company crashed. The market went down and here we go again. <laughs> now, I still had my credit company, but I wasn't backed by a mortgage company. So business slowed down dramatically right? I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started figuring out, okay, I can do hair. Let me start a mobile stylist. So literally I created another company. So I was doing hair and I was doing credit, right? No, I did not go to school for hair. <laughs> I learned from YouTube, but I always believed that, you know, if you look good and you feel good, you're going to do good. And so here I'm doing hair and I'm doing credit. And then I meet my now husband, I was just running around free and loving life day by day, not really having a, a vision for my life. A few years of us in our relationship, my husband came to me talking about life insurance. And I'm like, I'm not doing life insurance. But his best friend kept coming to the house showing us these pay stubs. And I'm thinking, no, I'm not interested in selling. I definitely was not interested in working for anybody else. I didn't want a job. And we're going back and forth literally for three years off and on literally for three years. Um, I have the full story of it on my YouTube channel. Feel free to go and check it out. It's hilarious. But I, I didn't come into the business until I had a dream that I was helping this little old lady with her life insurance. And I felt amazing. So I woke up and started studying. And here I am, nine years later, and loving every minute of my business and helping other people become successful along the way. But don't get me wrong. This was not easy for me coming in. And I was still not interested in sales. So it took me two years 
doing very part time before I, I was able to see again. My second year, my 1099 came in and I was at 58,000. And I'm like, how did I make 58,000? And I don't even know what I'm doing. And mind you, at the nine to five job or 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. job, I was making 56,000 after 14 years. Here we go again. I'm like, okay, Chris, shut down these other businesses, do this insurance 100%. And I was finally feeling like I had a clear picture for the future of my business, of my life. I'm going full time. I am ready to go. I tell the managers here in the insurance industry, I need to be a manager. I believe that this can happen two nights before I'm going to the retreat for management. I get caught in an ice storm, really an ice storm. I'm thinking there's no way this is happening. I'm freaking out. I'm five hours away from home. I call my sister um, because she's a prayer warrior and I'm freaking out like, I need you to pray for me. I need to get off of this hill, this big old mountain. I have five hours to get home because I need to catch this flight in two days. And she prayed me off the mountain. I remember her telling me she loved me and asked me if I was going to be over at the house to see her the next day. And I'm like, of course, you know, I'm going to see you before I, I get on the flight to leave for Florida. The next morning, I get the call, 6 a.m. My sister passed away. I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me, right? 43 years old. I will never forget the date, January 15, 2014. Because it was not only the day that my sister passed on, but it was the day that I had to make another huge choice. Our choices create our tomorrows, no matter what anybody says or what anybody does. What you decide is going to determine your life. I chose to do both. I took care of my sister's arrangements. She died on a Wednesday. I set up the program for her to be laid to rest on a Sunday. My cousins were involved. It was amazing. The company that I represent was able to save my mother $3,600 because they were able to make the phone calls to help with the pricing. And that next day I was on the flight. It was hard to come back and get in the field talking to people about life insurance. But as time went on, I learned that I was not only talking about insurance, I was teaching people and helping them with something that is going to happen. And what a blessing to help somebody leave a blessing in the form of cash and their final expenses to help their family because it's going to happen. And to make sure that they have the arrangement so that their loved ones know what needs to be done and then getting paid handsomely for doing this. It is important to understand that in this life, there will always be up and downs. There will always be a few mountains dropped in our path. But as long as we hold true to our mission and continue to build the inner man or woman, there is no stopping us. We have to renew our minds daily and grow in knowledge of the business or field that we are thriving to be successful in. I choose to live and to learn so I could live the life that I always dreamed of. And so now, still living, learning, and growing, I have earned over $1 million in income over the past nine years working in this insurance industry, helping others to grow and earn six figures as well. And I will continue to do this by means of different trainings, eBooks, conferences, planners, et cetera. It doesn't matter how much I have made thus far. What matters is who else I can share my story with so they too can wake up and see that it is possible for you. It is possible. I'm excited to share with you my story in hopes that this encourages you to follow the uncomfortable road towards success, to understand that life happens to us all. But if you do as I do and other successful people on this platform, read the books, grow your mind, change your bad habits, even the ones you don't know about, but you will learn and connect with the mentors like the ones here with Cody and the 8% Nation, you too will find success. Remember, life still happens, but as long as you don't quit, you cannot fail. Thank you again for having me share my story. Again, my name is Christine Austin Eel, and you can be successful. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey, unbelievable job, Christine. Thank you so much for being a part of this. All right, I absolutely love what you're doing for the industry. You can tell she enjoys helping people. She's great, great on video. She will dance and sing in her car anytime on YouTube. I love it. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm looking forward to collaborating and continuing to do more things with you because you are giving back. And the kind of people I wanna spend time with are the people that are giving back and helping people, right? Because you're watching right now. You want to surround yourself with successful people, right? Miss Christine is exactly that. And I wanna surround myself with successful people because they say, like you are the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that for a second. Who are you spending the most time with? Who's pouring into you and who are you pouring into them? And, and, and for me, I'm really paying to go to all these events and coaches and speakers and masterminds and retreats and traveling so much because I wanna get around people that change the way I think and level up the game for me. How much has this today leveled up the game for you? Okay, I appreciate you being on this because I'm telling you what we are going to do. <laughs> you can tell what time it is. It's again, all right, it's back. The flash cell. I, you think I get used to like the noise just happening randomly, but you can't, okay? Three minutes live, here we go. All right, here's what it is. Okay, here's what it is. Two diamond tickets, normally well over two grand. Retail well over three grand. Two diamond tickets only for the next three minutes for the, for, for let's do three, let's do three people maybe that go take advantage of this really quick. Team, is that cool? Okay, the next three people that go to the link in chat right now to get two diamond tickets for only eight 97. So again, that flash sale is only live for next three minutes and then poof, it's gone. We've actually inserted, the team just let me know actually on break, that they have inserted a time stamp so that once the three minutes is over, it actually totally vanishes and is unable for purchase. So make sure that you go right now to get hold of that immediately, okay? So take advantage of the flash sell. Now, I'm excited for the next speaker who I've gotten to know really well over the last couple years. One of my good buddies in the industry. He is absolutely changing the game in his own life and for his team and for his company and for a lot of other people. The dude makes significant amounts of money. Maybe he will show some of it off on screen. You never know. Okay, This dude, he's a good pickleball player. He's probably a good basketball player. He's an athlete. He's a salesperson. He's an entrepreneur. He's a business owner. Okay. And he's always doing it right. The dude cares. He can help you succeed. And he's becoming one of the better known brands and speakers in the industry. Keep doing it strong, bro. Is he ready? Is he ready? Please welcome as we bring in. Are you ready? 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 I'm ready. Please welcome my good buddy, Mr. Bradley. Well, it is an absolute honor and a privilege to be able to share this virtual stage with so many incredible speakers. You know, I uh, when I when I think about Cody and I think about the first ever eight percent nation where the dude invested over a half million dollars renting out the freaking Nissan Stadium, uh, I think about a guy who who definitely didn't quit, right? Who who understood that if he didn't quit. He couldn't fail. And so I thank Cody for the opportunity to be here today. I thank Cody for uh, for being faithful to that and, and not quitting. So it's an honor and a privilege. And uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Bradley Hannon. I am the president and CEO of Hannon Healthcare Solutions. You know, we specialize in the under 65 space, but, but what I love doing and, and what you guys hopefully will get to see through this message is I love coaching people. I, the, the whole person. I love coaching people to be better than they even believe that they can be. Because I know in my life, when I look back, some of the most significant and profound leaps that I've made have come through a mentor or a coach or having somebody in my life that just spoke life into what I was doing. So 
you know, again, uh, just so thankful to be here. I hope we can have a, a fun time, you know, talking about this. I feel like I'm going to get a little real and I'm going to get a little raw with you. And, and I hope that you understand that this is just using my story to hopefully make an impact. That's my goal today. And I don't have a whole lot that I want you to take away from this. I really have one thing, one key takeaway that I want you to take from this message. And I've got a few different ways that you can apply it in your daily life, in your daily business, in your insurance agency. After all, this is an insurance conference. You know, I I train on product a lot. I do a lot of product trainings. I do a lot of uh, a lot of you know sales trainings. Man, that stuff's boring, right? What's what's really really significant and what is what is impactful is using your story uh, in, in, in my story specifically to hopefully make a difference out there. So that's my goal again today. You know, Cody actually uh, came to me, I don't know, a, a month or so ago, a couple months ago, and he said, hey man, I'd love for you to speak at the 8% uh, con- virtual conference. And I thought, well, it's a no brainer, right? Of course I'll do that. Uh, and he, he had mentioned that the, the theme, we were sticking with the theme from last year, which is, if you don't quit, you can't fail, right? And so naturally I thought that's a great topic. I won't have a problem with that. I can certainly craft a message around not quitting and and, and not failing because you didn't quit, right? So uh, I began to kind of dive into this and I, and I wanted to pull stories from my life, right? That, that where, where I didn't quit and where I saw it through to the finish and, and, and I didn't fail because I didn't quit when things got tough. But I have to be honest with you. As I thought back through my life and as I thought back through uh, the, the times where I have faced some opposition or where I've had some lows or where I've had an opportunity to go after but but you know didn't but came up a little bit short, I couldn't help but think, man, I've quit a lot of times. I've quit a few, you know, quite a few times. And and I hope that I'm not alone in this. And I believe that some of you guys might feel like, well, what if I did quit? Right? Am I a failure now? And so I'm here to tell you that through crafting this message, through, through, through really digging into this whole, uh, if you don't quit, you can't fail, I discovered something you know, about myself that I want to share with you guys. Again, the, the key takeaway, and I'm not talking, you know, I didn't, when I say that I quit on myself, or when I say that I quit, I, I'm not talking about uh, quitting good things or, 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 I'm sorry, bad things. I'm talking about quitting, you know, good things, great things, great opportunities. I think back to, you know, the fir- kind of the first feeling of, of being a quitter that I ever really experienced or, or that I can remember anyways. And, you know, my wife will tell you that I don't have the best of memories. So the, what I think about quitting, I think back to, you know, my baseball career or lack thereof, right? I, I was, I was a, a, what, what some would say a talented baseball player when I was young. You know, I played, uh, I played all the way up to the, the Babe Ruth years, which is obviously right before high school. And I went to a high school called Sarasota High School. When I, when I got to that school, I, I knew right away that it was going to be tough. It was going to be challenging to make that baseball team. It was one of the best baseball teams in the state of Florida. Uh, in fact, while I was there, they won a state championship. And I say they because I was not a part of that state championship team because I quit. You know, I think about uh, the, the, the time that I was, when I was 19 years old, right? I was offered a position, or actually I worked for a moving company. And the owner of that moving company was was leaving after a couple of years to, to do bigger and better things. He was going to law school, but he saw promise in me. He saw something in me that honestly, at the time, I didn't even see in myself. And he, and he saw that I could take this opportunity somewhere, right? So he gave me the opportunity to purchase the moving truck, the equipment, the, basically the business for a very, very low amount, right? On, on a note that I would have 12 months to pay him back and and you know we're not financing we're not this is just hey man I believe in you you've done a great job you've been dependable you've been, I've been able to count on you for the last 2 years I want to hand this moving company over to you and I want to see you do big things with it and so I did I did that for about a year and a half I, I ran that moving company you know we grew it we we did we did well I paid I paid him back I'm forever forever grateful for that opportunity to have 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 done that um, but what happened was I got to a point where 
I knew that I needed some extra help to grow. Like it wasn't, I wasn't gonna do it on my own. And, and thankfully, I met a guy who, uh, or actually I, I did a move for a guy. He was a, a high school coach of mine. He was a football coach. And after doing that move, he said, hey man, you, you guys do a great job. You know, you, I know you've, I've known you for a while. Um, you know, you've done a few moves for us. What would it take to grow this business to the next level, right? What, what, would, what, what could I do for you or with you to help you grow this business? Because I believe in you. And again, somebody seeing something in me that I didn't see in myself at the time. And I sat down with him and we carved out what we would do. We carved out that we would buy an additional large truck and an additional smaller truck for deliveries and things. We carved out that we would that that we would use his marketing team. We would use his recruiting team. We would grow uh, in the number of employees and so on and so forth. And the following week, I was supposed to go and sign the paperwork to make this deal happen. Um, I don't know whether it was I don't know whether it was 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 just the fact that, that there was a huge commitment that I was about to make, or it was fear, or what it was. But what I can tell you is that I quit on that opportunity as well. I walked away from that. I actually sold the moving truck. I sold all the equipment. I basically sold the business in you know a week or so. Uh, and, and I was going to move on to, to what I thought might be bigger or better things, but that fell through. So the opportunity that I went to take because I sold my moving company fell through and now I had neither, right? So so I quit again and felt like a failure. You know, I think and this is this is probably the most recent and the 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 deepest impactful event that I've ever gone through. I think back to when I was in ministry Right, I was a I was a youth leader for uh, who was my a, a gentleman who was my youth pastor who moved to Orlando to plant a church. One of the most incredible leaders that I've ever had the chance to follow, to learn from, to be mentored under. I sat with him uh, at 24 years old at breakfast one morning, where he asked me to apply to be the next campus pastor. They were launching a campus, their second campus. They were launching that campus, you know, later on that year in the fall. He wanted me to go through the application process because he believed that I could be that next campus pastor at 24 years old. I followed those steps. I applied for that position. I went through, uh, through interviews with the board. I went through interviews with his father, uh, with his spiritual father, with, with him, with his associate pastor, with my associate pastor. I went through interview after interview. I went through uh, counseling sessions, right, where they wanted to make sure that I was in a good place to lead a church. They, they I went through all kinds of stuff to get that position, only to find out that I didn't get the position, right, that somebody else was given that position and I had come up short. So naturally, I quit, right? I actually uh, decided to move back to Sarasota from Orlando. I left that church. You know, I left it in good standing. I, I, it wasn't a, a necessarily a, a real negative or bad thing, but I quit following that that dream of leading a church campus at that specific church. And and so, in crafting this message and in, in going back through some of that stuff, I thought, man, I can't sit here in front of all these people and tell them that I've never quit. You know, I can't tell them that I've never failed. And maybe you can feel that. Maybe you can connect with that or relate to that because you've quit things in the past, right? I've got some things that I want to share with you that I believe that'll change your business, but more importantly, your life. Right, and, and there is a direct correlation between the two. Don't get it confused. There is a absolute direct correlation between your personal and, and professional life as, along with your business. And these things, if you can just grasp this one concept, right, and we can apply these, these, these techniques to make sure that you never quit, I believe that it can change your business. So I'm here to tell you one thing. And that one thing is when I was crafting this message, I realized something that you can quit, right? You just can't quit on yourself, right? So I've added to the, you can't fail if you don't quit. And I've added, you can't fail if you don't quit on yourself. And I really, 
really believe that. And I know that sounds simple, but I can tell you how deep that runs in my life. I, I can't tell you how deep that runs in my life. When I quit these things, you know, I've quit, I've quit the ministry, right? I quit the, the, the baseball career. I quit all of this stuff, but I never quit on myself. And I realized that in, in, in going through this, that I, that I'd never, ever quit on myself. So this is so huge. And if we can grasp this one thing, I believe that we can, we can leave here better insurance agents, better husbands, better fathers, better sons, better brothers. I believe that we can leave here better people because we won't quit on yourself. And hey, listen, if you're here today watching this conference, if you're here listening to this message, you haven't quit on yourself. Right? You may have quit something else. You may have failed. You may have faced some opposition. You may have come up short from your goal, but you didn't quit on yourself because you're here today. You're investing in yourself. You're investing your time, your energy in being here. And so for that, I know you will be rewarded because you're not quitting on yourself. So are you guys ready? It, it's going to sound simple, but are you ready to, to, to learn about the three things that I applied in my life or that have, that have kind of allowed me to not quit, right? That, that have really put me in a position where I could not quit on myself. Like these, if I didn't have these three things in my life, I can guarantee, and I was missing even just one of them, I can guarantee you that I would have quit. I would have quit on myself a long time ago. But I have these three things in place and I've always had these three things in place and looking back through the times where I feel like I've failed or I've quit or whatever the case is, I look back and I can directly tie each one of these things to the fact that I didn't quit on myself. So I've got three things, three practical applications, three things for you to take home, take back to your agency, take back to your family. Um, to make sure that when times get tough, when you face opposition, when you when you have troubles, you don't quit, right? The first thing that you need in your life to make sure that you don't quit is people that count on you. And what, whether you're out there and you're a husband, a father, a son, a business leader, you've got people in your life. Maybe it's friends, maybe it's family. You've got people in your life that are counting on you. And I'm here to tell you that if I didn't have people in my life counting on me, I probably would have quit, right? I probably would have quit. See, because what I didn't tell you about the moving company, what I've probably never shared before, is that that moving company was my family's sole income. And when I say my family, I'm not talking my wife and kids. I was 19 years old supporting a household, supporting my mom and my brother with that moving business, right? With that moving company. And so naturally when, when the opportunity that I went to take failed, right? When the opportunity that I went to take fell through and I had already sold my moving company, I had no choice but to keep going. Right? I had a family that was counting on me. I had bills that relied on me paying them at 19 years old. So, uh, you know, when you, when you have people that are counting on you, it makes it impossible to quit. And if you remind yourself of that in times where you feel like you might want to quit or, or it's, it's getting tough, you remind yourself that there's people counting on you, whether it's your team or again, your family, you will not quit. So that's the first thing that you need to make sure that you have in your life, and I'm sure that you do. And the second thing is you've got to surround yourself with people that will call you out, right? I don't mean yes men, right? I don't mean people that will tell you what you wanna hear. I'm talking people who tell you what you need to hear when you need to hear it most. People that are in your corner, that are fighting for you, but won't let you skate on some, some, some BS, we'll say, right? I've always had people in my corner that when I didn't feel like it, when I didn't feel good, when I didn't, when I didn't want to go after it, or, or when I felt uh, like a failure, these people would tell me, man, you can do great things and you've done great things. Look at what you've built. Look at how far you've come. Or on the other hand, when I've become too prideful, when I've become too uh, headstrong, when, I, when, when I've had the opposite effect, they're there to bring me back down and tell me, hey, listen, man, we got a lot of work yet to do. We're not there, 
You know, people in my life, man, Cody would be one of them. And I'm so thankful to have guys like Cody and Justin Brock and Pete Fournier, guys that are in my corner that would tell me exactly how it is and they're not just yes men, right? I think about Nate and uh, in a phone call that I made to him just recently where I was I was struggling with something in my business and 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 without getting too detailed, he said, man, this is the first time you struggle with that? Dude, get used to it because it's going to happen again and again. And 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 listen, you just got to keep charging forward. He didn't he didn't meet me where I was at, right? He didn't come down to my level and say, you know, hey man, I totally understand that. Even though he did, he said, that's the first time this happened to you. Get used to it. You can make it through this. Keep powering through. Keep pushing. Right. That is what it's all about. Having people in your corner who will tell you what you need to hear. You know, you can't see. The things you, you have a blind spot, right? When you're driving uh, in your rear view mirror, your side mirrors, whatever, you have blind spots, right? Nowadays we have these little cool lights that tell us when somebody's in in you know in that blind spot. But you can see the light, but you can't see that car, can you? You can only see the light. At least in in my car, you can see the light when someone's in the blind spot. But I can't see the car. You need to have people in your life who are like that light, who are telling you when you're missing something, when it's in your blind spot. You've got to have that person or people that will call you out. And the last thing, and this is the most important thing, this is the the one thing that I think over the last uh, six, eight, 10 months, last year, or really if I look back across my entire lifetime, I've always had a coach or a mentor. And so find a coach or find a mentor, and I think that this may be the one piece that a lot of people are missing, right? A lot of us have people that are counting on us, right? It's just part of life. A lot of us have people that will call us out, even when we don't want to be called out. But a lot of us don't have, but not all of us have coaches or have mentors, right? So all my life, whether I knew it or not, whether I tried to or not, whether I, whether I actually said, hey, this person's my mentor or my coach, when I look back, through all the failures, right, or all the times that I've quit, I look back and I see that I always had a mentor or had a coach, somebody who saw the things in me that I didn't see in myself, that would remind me that this is a, a journey, this is a process, and I'm in process, right? And that when I felt like I failed, when I felt like I couldn't, uh, I couldn't continue, or uh, you know, I, I came up short. These people were there. My coach or my mentor was there to make sure that I didn't. You know, another thing that a coach will do for you is push you further than you thought you could go. You know, I got to be honest with you guys. I don't know that I would be on this virtual stage even with you here today if I didn't have a coach in my corner, somebody who was pushing me to do things that I sometimes didn't want to do or, or, or maybe feel a little uncomfortable. And so you've got to have a coach or a mentor in your life. Again, you've got to have people that are counting on you. And I know you do, right? You all have people that are counting on you in your life. You've got to surround yourself with people that will call you out. And lastly, you've got to have a coach or a mentor. And listen, I'm here to tell you if you don't have a coach right now, if you're looking for a mentor and you're in the insurance industry and you're looking for that specific, uh, you know, a coach to your business or, or even in your personal life, you know, let's connect. I'd love to talk with you. You have so many opportunities, whether it's through one of Cody's mentorship programs, Success Society, any of the things that I offer, you have so many opportunities to find a coach find a mentor in your life. Don't fall short on that one, right? Because I know most of you have the other two in place, but I promise you coaching, mentoring, that's the stuff that's going to take you to the next level. So I know that I'm not alone in feeling like when I look back, there was times where I quit, right? There was times where I quit. There was there was times where I fell short and and I and I and I quit. But I can tell you that I never quit on myself. And so if I can leave you in closing with that one thing, right? Never quit on yourself, right? You can't fail if you don't quit on yourself. And again, I believe the fact that you're here today is a, is a testament to the fact that you 
have not quit on yourself. You are still investing in yourself. You're still going after it. And I applaud you for that. Make sure that you have people that are counting on you. Make sure that you have people that will call you out and make sure you have a coach or a mentor. And I promise you, it'll take your business, your personal life, your relationships. It will take you to the next level. Thank you. Brad, awesome job, buddy. I love it, man. Thank you very much for being a part of this. I really appreciate you, what you're doing. You're, you're changing lives, and being a part of this means a lot to me. Okay, so thank you. Thank Brad in chat. Thank you, buddy. Okay, he's down in, he's down in sunny Sarasota, Florida. He's trying to get me to get a, 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 a second home down there, which, dude, it ain't hard to talk me into going to Florida, right? Like, who else? Like, dude, I'm in. I want to go to Florida. I, I want to I, I be doing so well. I'm getting a second home in Florida, right? Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. 8% deal time, CodyAskis.com forward slash deals. Okay, I want to remind you that you can get, maybe you want to bring a few people, man, four premier tickets for only $9.97. Normally, you can actually get them right now for $2,400 instead. Just during these two days, four premier tickets for $9.97 to go spend time with me, these amazing speakers, and the industry at Nation 2021 live in Dallas at the Statler. It's gonna be amazing. So again, four premier tickets, that means you get lunch and the party and a premier seat. Four premier tickets, only $9.97. Go to CodyAskins.com forward slash deals to take advantage of that deal today. Okay, because it ends today, right? Day two, it's almost over. All right, now. I, we may have to keep playing like I love it I get like you can tell it like I get like so excited when the flash sale comes and the siren goes off because it's time are you ready three minutes and then poof it's gone forever okay this one is also insane at the end of three minutes you cannot do it period it's probably it's potentially from a Per ticket price standpoint, it's the most insane deal we've ever done, for sure. Okay, three ticket, three minutes is ticking. Four VIPs for only four hundred dollars. Okay, a hundred bucks a piece for VIP. Again, it's only for three minutes, so that means you have to take action today, right now. Let me know in chat. Could you, hypothetically, if you wanted to bring three people, could you? Would you? Will you? Okay, let me know in chat. Okay, also, I thank you, thank you so much for blowing up social with all this stuff, man. That, that, means, that means the world to me. To spread this 8% theme, this message of, dude, we want to win, man. We want to be a part of the 8%. And spread it out to the world means the world to me. So thank you for doing that. Okay, that's amazing. All right, now, three minutes, is, it's, it's ticking. Okay, it's ticking. It's ticka talking, right? It's, it, it's, it's flying by. So you got to make sure that you take advantage of this flash sale right now. Because I can promise you, Poof, it's gone, and we're only allowing 10 people to get four VIP tickets for $400 right now. Ridiculous, crazy, insane, and you got to do it today. You got to do it really in the next three minutes. It's not a normal deal. It's a flash sell with the sirens and the noise and the lights and everything else, right? Like, hey, did it get your attention? Because it gets mine, okay? You have. You're almost out of time. Make sure that you go hit the link in chat to take advantage of that right now before it's over. Okay, before it's over. I'm being told we've had several take advantage right now, so thank you. Okay, appreciate that. Go get that flash sell before three minutes is up. Okay, and we're almost there. All right, now, the next speaker. The next speaker has been with me since the very beginning. She wrote a, she, she, she wrote a forward for me for, for my book, it's coming out soon and totally made me cry recently. Like she's had, I can't say the impact that Lauren, my wife, has had on everything that we do. She's been there since the very beginning. She is my biggest cheerleader. She's unbelievable at making sure our team is happy, cohesive, and pushing for the same targets. Like she, from a personality standpoint, from loving on people, caring about people, taking care of our team, taking care of me on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, that's hard enough, man. Come on, right? She is absolutely amazing. 
Babe, thank you for everything you do for me. Thank you for everything you do behind the scenes for our team. Thank you for everything you do behind the scenes for the industry. Okay? And thank you for being that person. Like everybody needs their person to push them, to make them a better version of them. She really is one of the biggest reasons why I think as big as I do. Because she is constantly reminding me, right? Like everybody needs someone in their corner that believes in them. She believes in me. And babe, I believe in you too. Okay, so we'll see if she can jump and do this without, 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 without crying already, okay? I'm hoping she's about to talk about company culture and we'll find out because she's phenomenal at making sure that our company culture is on point. It's super important. Your company needs it. Everyone needs it. Is she ready? Dylan, we're good. She's ready. Please welcome. My number one, I'm the biggest fan of this person in the world. My ride or die, I gave her the ride or die award recently at Ocean's Inn for our team. Love you, babe, proud of you. You're gonna do great. Please welcome my wife, Miss Lauren Askins in the chat. Please make her feel welcome. And let's all improve our company culture. Love you, babe, you're gonna do great. Hello, 8% Virtual. Thank you so much for being a part of this today. Cody and I truly appreciate you spending time with us. Um, we know your time is valuable, so I'm going to get right to it. Today, I'm going to be talking about five things to five tips to improving your company culture. Culture is something I'm very passionate about. I pretty much have like a hard line about it. You don't mess with my culture and you... Um, it's just super important. So I know that culture can really make or break a team. And I want to share that with you all. And so you all can learn things that it's taken Cody and I like, trial and error and mistakes after mistakes to figure out. We have had up to 60 employees um, between all of our companies. And it's chaotic, but I love it. It's a community that I'm very, very passionate about. So um, I'm not saying that you have to have 60 employees because get ready for it. You might one day, goals are big. But once you have a team, it's vital to your success. So even if you don't have a team yet, your team could include your family, getting everybody on board, on the same page, Knowing your mission, knowing your vision, knowing where this train is headed is so, so, so important. So I'm here to teach you today five tips for creating a culture that you're super proud of. Everyone's heard the story of the two Clydesdale. One Clydesdale can pull 8,000 pounds by himself. But if you have two Clydesdale lined up side by side, they can pull 32,000 pounds. That is the ultimate example of a team. I've learned that from Elena Cardone, and that's something that Cody and I have truly implemented in our success. We can't get anywhere by ourselves, so surrounding ourselves with a team who understands where we're going is so important, and they are all on board. Tip number one, realize that people are on your team, believe in your mission. They're on, they're on your team, but they also believe in your mission. That is so, so, so important to remember because it's, you wouldn't be anywhere without them. I'm not saying anywhere, but you wouldn't be going light years faster if these people weren't on your team. So the quicker you realize that and you truly value that, the better it's going to be. I truly believe that this part is super critical to your success. If your team is not bought in, it's, it, you're going to, it's going to be like going through mud, like, I mean, spinning your tires in mud in a front wheel drive vehicle, like you ain't getting anywhere fast, if at all. So that is step number one. Realize that the people are on your team, believe in you and your mission and where you're going. This is so important. So important. Step two, tip number two. If they earn it, give them a raise. Don't. <laughs> okay, let's back up. If they earn it, give them a raise. 
I worked, I have my master's degree in health promotion and wellness management. I worked for um, a gym, a hospital gym here in town in Springfield, Missouri. I worked the night shift being newly married 12 to 9 p.m. at night. It was brutal. I loved my job because I love my clients and I love my coworkers. But the annual review came in and I walked into my boss's office and I had never, this was my first job out of graduate schools. So I had never really had like a big girl job per se. And I walked into an interview and we, we went over things that I was doing great areas that I could use improvement in and like teaching aerobics, but it's, we all have improvement areas and that's okay. But when the time came to give me a raise and I wasn't expecting a raise, by the way, I think that's also a whole nother can of worms. But when it came time to give me a raise, they gave me eight cents for my efforts. I got an eight cent raise for my efforts of me busting my butt all of those years of schoolwork. And so like I promised myself that if I were to ever have teammates, I would never treat them like that. I just, if, if you earn it, Give them a raise to show them how much you appreciate them. That will go very, very, very far in loyalty and longevity with your teammates. Third thing, be able to give tough love. Okay. This is very, very, very important. The entire team, I give them praise on how good they're doing and how proud of them I am all the time almost to a fault, some people would say, but it's not because it's not real. I value them and I and want them to know that I'm proud of them and what they're doing. But they also know that Mama Bear Lauren is going to give them tough love when they need it. If they're taking an hour and a half lunch and I realize it and it's happening over and over without permission, that's not a standard we're going to live by. If they're late, Cody is not going to put up with that. So there are things that sometimes people need that tough love. If you're if you're not holding your team to the standard that I we hold ourselves to, then you're doing an injustice to them. So I want to teach the team, look, I love you to death and there's not much I wouldn't do for you because you believe in us and where this train is going. But at the same time, I have to hold you to the same standard. So I'm not going to let you just slip by. I'm going to give you that tough love when you need it because you need to hear it, not because it's a fun conversation to have, but because it's going to make you better, not only in your personal life, but where this is going. So if you can't stay leveled up with us, it's not going to work. So tough love is super, super, super important. It's not easy to have those conversations, but they're necessary. Um, and sometimes it, people fall short and that's okay. But within that tough love also comes forgiveness. And I think that's really, really, really important. Um, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. And you have to, as a business owner, be able to forgive someone but if they keep repeating the same mistake that you've forgiven them for, then it's time that it's not working out. So that's part of the tough love concept that I I forgave you once, but you're continuing to make this mistake. So this isn't working for either one of us. So we need to cut our ties and then move on. So you have that analogy of or hardship of letting people go. And sometimes that's hard. Like oh, we've let some teammates go because I have given those tough conversations. Cody's given those tough conversations. Andy's given those tough conversations and the behaviors didn't change. So rather than weighing the team down, it, it's not working out for them and it's not working out for us. So we need to cut our ties and move on. But at the same time, you got to give people praise and love and show them that they're doing a good job. Step number four, set the standard from the beginning. And maybe I should have started with this tip first. You can't, it's very, my basketball coach, I will never forget. Ninth grade basketball coach, we're walking in and he is insane. I mean, we're running full court tip drill, you know, back and forth, whatnot. I relate a lot of things to sports because that's what I know. Um, so hopefully you can relate to this or maybe I can give you a different example. 
but he's running, making us run. We didn't, we dropped the ball in this, we were passing the ball in the middle of the court while running the full court tip drill. So we dropped the ball. We have to start over. Time gets added to the clock. One of the seniors lays down on the floor because we've been at this for 10 minutes. She lays down because we're gassed. I mean, we're literally exhausted. And he says, get off my floor. And in that moment, we knew he was serious. And it wasn't because he was being Mr. Honcho. He was just setting the standard. Like, he knew we were capable of doing this. He knew we were a we were more than able to do all this. He was pushing us to be our best. And it was in that moment, I, I didn't realize at the time, I was like, are you joking me? But in the time, it was us being able to pick ourselves up and keep going. That's life. That is absolutely life. You are going to get knocked down and thrown curveballs all throughout the time, but you got to stand back up. You got to dust your shoulders off and you got to keep going. So you got to set the standard from the beginning. And, and that standard could be simple. It could be a one page document of these are our guidelines. These are our expectations, or it could be a handbook. We have a handbook because that's the place that we're in. We didn't used to have a handbook, and I realized how big of a mistake that was. We weren't setting the standard when we first hired our first employee. We didn't know what we were doing. But now we know that once we set the standard, they know where the expectation is and what we're going to hold them to. If you're not holding up to these, this X amount of things, then it's not going to work out. I'll forgive you. But if you keep doing this over and over again, it's just not going to work out. Um, and finally, tip number five, know what motivates your team. This is so, so, so important. So in this example, I'm going to talk about two, two of our current teammates. One, everyone, well, maybe not everyone, but most of you might know Andy. Andy is motivated by money, and that's great. Andy, Andy has big goals for him and Kristen, and I love that. But then we also have another teammate who isn't motivated by money. He's motivated by life experiences, trips, the opportunity to explore the world. So those are very, you need to know that that's very different. And some people are motivated by time with their family. So you just need to know how your team is motivated so that you can incentivize them or reward them in the way that they feel it best. None of us are the same. Cody Edward, you do not motivate, motivate him the same way you motivate me. It's polar opposite. It's actually one of our biggest tips. He tries to motivate me the way that he motivates himself and gosh, I wish it worked, but it doesn't work for me. It literally makes me shut down. So he's realized that, hey, I can't talk to Lauren the way I talk to myself. So I need to know what makes her tick. What makes her go to the extra mile or, you know, keep going in the mud when your front wheel car is stuck, you know, in the snow or, you know, what what's going to keep you going? So once you realize that, and it's very important to learn this from the beginning, because you can't have a salesperson who's not motivated by money. They're driving revenue for the business, which helps pay everybody else. I mean, it's a, it's a full circle. The team culture is so important because it's a Ferris wheel. It just keeps going and going and going. The Ferris wheel would stop if someone on the team wasn't all in. And once you find someone who is not all in, you got to let them go. That is so important to culture. Hanging on to someone who isn't bought in and doesn't see the vision anymore or has changed or maybe made a bad hire and they never are all in. You've got to cut the tie because they're going to bring the rest of the team down when we're trying to move fast. We make fast decisions. We make important decisions and we literally go. So once you have someone on your team that isn't able to keep up, you've got to cut ties. It's not going to work. You have to have people that have the same mindset as you to get things going. So 
the importance of motivating people in their own way is crucial. It's it's very, very, very vital to how the team functions together. Um, I I can't I can't say that enough. So understanding your employees' personal goals is very important. There was one Chris or one new year um, a few years ago. They probably thought I was nuts because at the time they didn't realize what our what I was trying to figure out is what is your goal? What is your goal for 2020? What was your goal for 2021? What What are you trying to do in your per, per, you can even ask them professionally. Some people want to advance. Some people want the opportunity. And then some people are already in the position that they want to be in for the rest of their life. And that's great. Um, we just have to figure that out as, as employers. What, where are they going? What are they trying to do? Because I want my teammates to achieve their goals as well, whether that be professionally, personally, and financially. We all have financial goals, at least you should. And those are important things. Now, if you don't have a massive team like we do, um, it's important to have these conversations with your family. Um, I can't say that enough because there was a time in Cody and I's marriage, it's probably gonna make me cry <laughs> because I was the one holding him back. And that's a hard pill to swallow. I've had to come to terms with it. I had to look myself in the mirror and be like, Lauren, he's going places i've either got to get on board or we got to figure this out because i was holding him back because he's trying to make these moves so even if you don't have a team of people like we do it's so important for your personal team to understand where you're going and why you're making the decisions you're making it's it's once you align them that way it's it's amazing what life will do so I challenge you during this weekend, um, 8% virtual to figure out a who's on your team. If you don't have a team of people already, or if you're looking to hire maybe your first employee, you set the standards, write out your standards, say this, is these are my non-negotiables. This is what I'm looking for someone and then hold them accountable, hold them to that. And if they don't present it in a way that is, the tough love, give them tough love. Make sure they understand your mission. If they, if you hire them, they come on board and they're busting their hind in, give them a raise, give them a bonus, or give them something in the way that they feel it. Because not everybody does feel um, appreciation through money, but you have to give them appreciation the way they feel it. Set that standing from, set that standard from the beginning, give them tough love, Give them um, a bonus or raise if they earn it and make sure finally that they understand where the train is going. If people don't understand your mission and where you're going or what you're trying to do, they're never going to be on board. So if you're trying, say you're an insurance agent and you're um, in the Medicare industry, how many seniors do you want to help? How, it's not necessarily about money. How many people are we helping? We're in the industry of helping people. We're making tough situations when death happens easier. Don't let that burden on people. So once your team realizes how many people are we going to help, you know, they're on board, it's going to be easier because you can see the chain reaction. We're helping people. We're helping people reach their goals. And that is what it's all about. We're in the business of helping people. It's something Cody and I take very, very seriously. And I just truly appreciate you taking your time, listening to this weekend virtual of all of these amazing speakers. I'm actually so proud of Cody, Les Brown. I mean, you name it, It's they're here. So I'm just really, really, really honored to finally have my first speaking gig on here. He finally thought I was good enough. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I finally found a topic that I were like, Lauren needs to talk about culture because she's so, it, I just, I literally love it. I love culture. I love creating an atmosphere where people feel like they can learn, grow, and feel like they can say something and it's valued and heard. So um, it's just super important. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and thank you for watching this awesome weekend. And 
We will have 8% in July at the Statler in Dallas. So I would love to be able to meet you in person. And I have ladies night. So come on down to Dallas, buy your 8% ticket and learn more about culture, how to network with other people within the industry and rock and roll. So thank you so much. Welcome back. Awesome job, babe. Okay, I love it. I love the tips. I love the advice. I love you focused on making our office and our teams better, more cohesive, more fun. And everyone needs that. Am I right? Am I right? Like everyone watching this in chat, let me know you need what you just heard. Now, what I've learned is everybody needs stuff. Okay, amazing, amazing job, babe. Thank you so much. Okay, love you. You're incredible. Thank you for constantly pushing me. Everyone needs what we just heard. Everyone needs a lot of what we're hearing. Only some people will actually apply it. So we will see, okay? I was worried about some of the stories she was gonna share about me too, because you never know, right? You never know! Okay, we'll see, okay? So thank you for not you know, embarrassing me too bad, okay? Appreciate that. Will you apply what you're learning today, right? There's been major takeaways the last two days, no question about it. The real question is, will you apply what you are learning? Winners, my dad always says, is winners find a way to win. Who's going to win in 2021? Who's going to make sure that 2021 is the best year you've ever had? And who wants to make sure that you look back in a decade and say, dude, 2031 is so good because the effort, the time, the energy, and the work that I put in in 2021 right? Who wants that? I, I do too. Okay. Thank you. I do too. I do too. Like I wake up saying, man, I need to be pushing harder. I need to be doing more. I know I can improve. I know I can get there. I know I can get there faster. I know I can make it bigger, right? Every single day. That's, that's the way I wake up. Like I'm like, come on now, let's freaking push, right? Let's go. That's how I think. Now I want to spend the next year with you, maybe the next 10 years, right? But I want to spend the next year with you. If I, hypothetically, if I moved in with you for the next 12 months, would you make more money? Yes or yes? Yes or no? Would you make more money if I moved in with you for the next year? No freaking question about it. Who's got a spare bedroom? You're like, dude, you can move in with me anytime, man. Okay? I promise you, you'd make more money, which is why I'm releasing our CA all access plan. You get access to my video sales system. You get access to a weekly accountability call with me every Monday. And you get access to one boot camp throughout the year. Over a $10,000 value for all of this. This is all access with me for a year. Normally over $10,000 for only $9.97. The question is, who needs the help? Who needs the focus? Who feels a little bit complacent? Who knows that they can get better? Who needs to be plugged into my cell system and training and learning and watching videos every single day? You do. So go to codyaskins.com forward slash deals to take advantage of the all access plan for only $9.97 today. Okay, today. Now, before I bring up the next speaker, okay, I'm being told we need about, and they need another 6, 60, 90 seconds, okay, is that I want to ask you what's been your favorite part of these last two days. What's been your favorite part? Who's been your favorite speaker? What's been the biggest takeaway? What are you literally thinking and seeing and looking at now saying, man, my eyes are wide open and I'm ready to run and win. If that's you, let me know in chat because I want to know what's been the biggest breakthrough for you. What's been the biggest takeaway? What's been the biggest idea and how do we make sure that you apply it this year? Okay, so we spend time together. I'm gonna give you ideas. I'm gonna challenge you. I'm gonna motivate you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna train you, but I'm also gonna make you think bigger than you've ever thought in your life. Who's watching thinking, dude, I need that. I need someone to challenge me. I need someone to wake me up. I need someone to make me think bigger. I need someone to get me to that next level in my life. That is what I do for insurance agents, and that's what I hope I will get the opportunity to do for you, okay? Now, we're ready for our next speaker. This gentleman, okay, this gentleman wrote 
$85,000 of premium in his first six weeks. He also recruited 69 people in his first 60 days. He is one of the best salespeople I know. Good friend of mine, does the SWAT event, okay, which I'm about to speak at here in a few weeks. He does an unbelievable job at training the insurance industry, at, re, at building teams, at selling product. And to do what he did in the first six weeks of the industry is insane and life-changing. Please welcome my good buddy, Mr. Nate Offert. Take it away, man. Crush it. You want to get wealthy? You want to get wealthy? You want to build financial freedom? You're going to get your ass kicked. You want to accomplish something great? You're getting knocked on your ass. You got to figure out how to get back up. You got other people that are out there stopping you. Some of them are your friends. Some of them are your family members. And their sole purpose is to stop you from getting across that goal line. These great players aren't born. <clears throat> they're made. And they're made by great coaches. And they find players that have a desire to achieve. They find players that have a desire to work hard. And they find players that have a desire to win. I want to learn about the brain and how it works. Yeah. I want to learn how to influence people in a positive way. You guys think there's some like intergalactic special phrase that I need to close the sale? Give it to me. It doesn't work. There's no one liner that's going to get you a sale price. Every sale you have should generate you between five to seven referrals every time. How many are guilty of not doing that? I can't put my fourth leg up or I'll fall. How many are guilty of not doing that? How many like to know how to do that? What makes decisions is not your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind makes decisions and your conscious mind backs it up with logic. Did y'all know this? So quit being so freaking logical because you're not gonna get a sale by being logical. You're gonna be able to get a sale by being emotional because people make decisions emotionally. It doesn't mean you get in there and start crying. Does that make sense? Oh, how are you doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people come here and you think you know what you need to know to have success. If you knew what you needed to know to have success, you'd already be successful. You gotta get your mind open enough to change because of things to change, you gotta change. For things to get better, you gotta get better. What makes people great <clears throat> is having the ability to overcome the obstacles and the satisfaction of victory, the greatest feeling of victory is when there's an obstacle that's in your way that looks so big that there's no way over, around, or under, and you push through and make it happen. Thank you so much, Cody Askins, and hello, 8% Nation. Um, I'm so honored to be on this virtual summit um, and, and to be able to, to talk to you guys today. And as you've been hearing from speaker after speaker after speaker, that if you don't give up, you can't fail. And it's so true and inspiring to hear all these stories. It's like, I, I thought of that title and I was thinking about what am I gonna talk about? What, what can I share with you guys today? And I'm like, what if I put a mirror up to that and I kind of flipped the script? And what if it was, there's certain things you have to give up or you're not gonna succeed, right? You know, there is plenty of times the things that I was growing up and, and I, I didn't grow up in a wealthy family. Um, I, you know, went to school like I was told to do, go to college, get good grades, the better grades you get, the better job you're gonna get. And one day you may wind up immensely successful and work for somebody and retire at the age of 60 years old and get a, you know, gold watch that turns your arm green and, and uh, a pension plan and living on social security. And if you're in this industry and you guys even do final expense or if you're talking to the elderly people, it's, it's so sad to see that the majority of our society is growing up uh, uh, retiring on family, friends, and the federal government. And that wasn't the plan I actually wanted to do. And, and I hear people all the time talk about, well, money's not everything. Well, when you don't have it, it becomes all encompassing. It becomes everything. And, and my parents did an incredible job raising us as children, but every decision in our life was based upon the amount of money we did or didn't have. We had to read the menu from the right side, where the prices are, right? Uh, to the left side to figure out where we're gonna eat. You know, our family vacation, we didn't go to Disney World, we didn't have family vacation, it was traveling, all six of us stuffed in a car, it was probably made for four, and go, driving from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 
to Pittsburgh, uh, Ohio to go you know, visit my grandma. And we just hoped it wasn't too hot because back then they had the metal slide. And if you ever went down the metal slide and <laughs> extreme heat, you kind of get stuck, right? Which is how I kind of felt trying to start a business and become an entrepreneur or got involved in a sales organization when I had no guidance. I had no um, mentors at the time. And I just was looking for somebody that would come into my life who could help teach me and show me what they've done. Because I'm a firm believer in, hey, you know what? If someone else, one man or woman can do it, so can I. If there's thousands of men or women doing it, what's my problem, right? And if you look at the industry at Ring Guys, <clears throat> there's tens, hundreds of thousands, millions of people doing it, and they're having success, but this 8%, right? 92% fail. What's the difference between that 8% or even the 1% versus the 92% who don't make it? And I firmly believe the number one key is they never gave up. They never gave up on themselves, right? Brad Hand talked about it. He did, don't give up on yourself. But I also firmly believe that they were willing to quit certain things in order for them to have success. One of the things I had to quit doing was I had to quit procrastinating. I was a, I, you know, what they said, the biggest nation in the world is procrastination, right? <laughs> I was always procrastinating, always putting things off. And I'll never forget when I was in my mid twenties and you guys, a lot of you guys heard my story where a mentor came into my life and he was making a million dollars a week, net, net. That was after his planes and his cars and his, you know, $20 million yacht, you know? And that was cool back then to make that kind of money because, you know, it was kind of, I guess the nineties more, you, you showed it off, the show off era, right? It was cool to have a watch that cost more than most people's homes. Um, I know now it's different. You're supposed to, you know, make a million dollars and give it all away and drive a Prius. I get it, it's different now, but, that was an environment that I was like, whoa, man, look at this, what this guy, this guy is accomplishing in his life and look at the amount of income, look at the freedom. And I was enamored by him, right? And I had a chance to start working with him and I'll never forget. He asked for a report that was due on Friday. I said, yeah, I'll have it to you. This is Monday, right? So I call him up Friday morning and I go, hey, sir, you know, actually he called me up and I go, he goes, where's my report? I said, well, sir, you're never gonna believe what happened. And he let me talk and I gave all, I, I had my printer and then I ran out of ink and then, and then I tried to print it and I couldn't get it in time and then the stores closed because of this. He goes, okay, that, 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 awesome. Where's my report? I said, well, sir, yeah, you know, I, 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 I tried to get it done. I had it all ready to go. I went to go print it. He goes, okay, Nate, I don't think you're hearing me. Where is my report? And it hit me and he goes, before you give me another answer or excuse or a justification, let me ask you a question. I told you Monday that you needed this report to me by Friday. Is it my fault you waited till the last minute to try to print it to get the report over to me? Yes or no? I said, no, sir. That's my fault. And he goes, when you quit procrastinating in your life, when you stop having that bad habit of an average person, you'll start to see your life turn around. And I learned that lesson and it was a painful lesson, but every time something's due, I, I want to get it on it right away. I want to get it done. We talked to my son about, get, you know, start your homework early, study for your test. Early. We got to quit procrastinating. A lot of us are great procrastinators, guys. Another thing I had to do is I had to quit hanging around people that didn't match up with my long-term goals. I had a lot of people in my life, some are friends, some are family, some are, you know, from grade school, whatever the case may be. And they, 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 they're either going to build you up or they're going to tear you down. You hear from people all the time about you are who you, the five most people you hang around and different things of that nature, guys. But I had to quit hanging around negative people. I had to quit associating with people who didn't have the same vision, the same goals that, that I had. Another thing that I had to do, <clears throat> I had to be quit being influenced by social media, <laughs> TV, and the news. So much th crap that goes on, guys. And back then when I was mentor by mentor, um, he said, you know, take your TV. And I did this, right? I'm not saying you have to do this, but he said, take your TV and throw it away. Put it in the garage, put it in storage. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what? why would I do that? He's like, well, if you're working with me, you're not gonna have much time to watch it anyway. And if you're trying to get wealthy, the last thing you need to do is be turning on the news or watching the boob tube or the garbage that's on there and allowing that to affect the way you are and put you into, to paralyze you and put you into fear. I had to give up being manipulated by social media. I would say today, I don't, you know, I would say <laughs> today, cause I, I don't know a lot about the social media. I'm not really on there. I know that Cody and a lot of these guys want me to keep getting on there and I'm kind of learning about it guys. But back when I was getting mentored by my mentor, it was the television, right? He's like, what, what, even the news, right? It's like, what positive thing do we have that comes out of the news? 
Was it, if it's raining tomorrow, you're not going to wake up? You're not going to get out of bed? Oh, there's, there's uh, sunny tomorrow? Oh, so I'm going to get out of bed? Like, all this stuff that we always are putting into our brain. And if you ever come to one of my SWAT trainings, we do some pretty awesome stuff about the subconscious mind and how it gets in there and how it stays in there and how your conscious mind doesn't make the decision. Your subconscious mind makes the decision and you back it up with logic, which is your conscious mind. I had to give up putting junk in my ear. And he had a really good analogy uh, to, to share with you on that, but I'll, I'll leave that for a live SWAT training because you had to be alive for that analogy. So another thing I had to do, guys, I had to give up on making excuses. Every one of us make great excuses that we sell to ourselves. And reasons why not, reasons why we can't have success. I was always looking, right? Another thing I had to give up, guys, I had to give up thinking I needed more information or the magic pill or finding that one thing that I need to do to have success. I had to give that up. I've always thought there was something, somebody, some training, some book, some sales clothes thing, some technique that I was missing why all these other people were having success in the business I was in and I wasn't. And I'll never forget, again, I was in a room with my mentor and was talking about, I'm like, I don't understand. I've been doing this thing for three or four years. The biggest check I ever made was $3,000 in a month. There's people making millions of dollars. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm missing. And that's what I always said. I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know what I'm missing. And he goes, do me a favor. I said, yes, sir. He goes, go try and turn that light on. I said, what? He goes, go try and turn the light on. I said, okay. So I walked over and I mean, you can imagine how dumb I looked, right? I'm, uh, he's like, come on, said, try to turn it on. And his voice got louder. I was like, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying. He's like, no, you're just standing there. I said, fine, I turned it on. He goes, I didn't ask you to turn it on. I said, try and turn it on. And I'm like freaking out, right? I'm like, oh my God. Like, oh, well, I, I can't, can't do it because Nate, that's the problem. You're trying to have success. You always think you're missing something. You have everything you need that you've learned to go out there and have the same success, if not greater, than these other people are having. If you quit trying and you Nike it, just go do it. He said, I have a question for you. If I told you in order to make 10,000 a month, you had to go out and make 10,000 mistakes first, how quickly would you make them? And boom. It was like a switch. Coach Burt talks about this. It was like a switch. I flipped the switch and I quit looking for that, that missing piece of the puzzle. I quit looking for what, what, I, what I thought that I needed to have success. And I just took the information that I learned and I went to work in less than 90 days from that moment on that stupid little light switch thing, I was making over $20,000 a month. I'm not saying I have to brag guys, understand. Still no car, same couch I was sleeping on at a friend's house. Same product, same compensation plan, same office I went to. Nothing changed except that I gave up. I quit thinking that I was missing a piece of the puzzle. One of the other things I had to quit or give up to have success was thinking that I had to be so much better than someone else because if I got so much better then I would be able to have their lifestyle, their money, um, their beautiful home, their nice cars, right? And I was once again <laughs> sitting here with my mentor and I remember he pulled out a piece of paper. I don't have one here to show you and stuff. And he took out a piece of paper and he took a pen out and he drew a little circle. And he said, this is average, right in the middle of the paper, right? So this is average. He goes, Nate, this is poor. He went down the very bottom of the picture. And he handed me a pen and he goes, show me where rich is or wealth. And so this is like, I was like, man, you know, he always asked these questions that like seemed really obvious and I always got the wrong answer and I always felt really stupid about it, but I learned a lot. And I thought, man, I got this one. This one I nailed. I know exactly, this is so easy, right? I know where wealth is. Wealth is right here. And I took that pen and paper and I grabbed it, put a big circle on the top and go right here, sir. And I put it down and he went, kid. How in the world are you going to get wealthy when you don't even know where it is? Here's the problem with most people. Why they don't have the success they, they want to have is because they think just like you. They think wealth is here and average is here. And he took the pen. He goes, let me show you where wealth is. And he put it right here, a little circle and a dot. He goes, 
That's where wealth is. You just have to be a little bit better. Go a little bit farther. Invest in yourself a little bit more. Read a little bit more. Seek out just a little bit better and you can go from average to wealthy. That literally, again, changed my life. Because I, for once, realized that I don't have to become a superstar. I don't have to be this incredible, superhuman individual to have wealth. I just gotta do what average people aren't willing to do so I can live a life that most average people never will. And I just wanna thank you for getting on here, guys. Um, and, and today, I, we, I'm so excited for the rest of the speakers. Um, and, this is just an incredible opportunity to be working together with Cody um, and, and, and being able to speak into your guys' lives and for what the insurance industry has done for my wife and my family is nothing short of amazing. So thanks to Go and Cody, back to you. Take care guys, can't wait to see you guys at 8%. Nate, doing it man. He's His stories, the way he talks, you can just tell the dude has some he has some confidence, man. He's got some swag. He, he, he knows what he's doing. He's been around the game, right? Just Not just because he's old, man. He's been around the game for a while, okay? Thank you, Nate. Awesome job, buddy. I was going through Dallas a few weeks ago, and he actually let me literally crash at his uh, pad because there was no hotels available. It was, during the, it was during the snow and the ice and everything else, right? So thank you for that, okay? Um, your wife, Laura. Um, Alex, love you guys, man. You guys are amazing. So, so phenomenal job. Thank you. Okay. You did it. You hear the siren. You know what that means? Three minutes from now, this deal that I'm about to give away, poof, it's gone. Three minutes for those that are on and that take action today in the next three minutes, okay? And then it's gone. It's gone forever, okay? You see the clock. You see the countdown timer. Uh, so one diamond ticket for only, one diamond ticket for only, one diamond ticket for, I mean, I've been told this is only for two people, by the way. Okay, because we don't have that many diamond tickets available. Okay, but I want to help somebody. One diamond ticket for only $500. Hit the link in chat, three minutes, and then it's gone. Okay, it's a crazy deal. Make sure you take advantage of that right now. Okay, I love the flash sales, love the sirens, love the urgency. In life, you have to take action today. There's going to be moments where you want to think about something. You want to put it off. Time kills all deals and details delay. Commit first and figure the rest out later, which means do it now. Trust me. I don't think about stuff, man. I, I, I don't think about stuff. I, I, I upgraded my, my Audi Q8 to an SQ8 that's got 500 horsepower, literally, just a week and a half ago. Why? I didn't even need to think about it. I'm like, that's fine, I'm in. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, you make decisions so fast. I'm like, because I want other people to make decisions fast too, right? You sell how you buy. How do you buy? Okay, so take action today. Three minutes almost up anyway. Next speakers. Okay, next speakers are doing this together. They're from the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I've known Mr. Roger Short for several years. Chris Ball is going to be joining him. Okay, I just actually spent some time. They're, they're, they're ready? Okay, perfect. I just spent some time with... Uh, Roger and Austin and Zach and Roger's daughter Ashlyn in uh, uh, when, when we were at Coach Burt's event a couple weeks back. Okay, together, Coach and I were doing an event together called the Sales Mastery Boot Camp in Nashville, and just getting to go to dinner with him and his team and spend time with them, man. Th this, th this, th these individuals that are about to speak um, are special people to me. And, and they mean the world to me. Um, I love the relationships we're building, right? The friendships that we're, that we're, that we're gaining. And uh, I just got to spend a lot of time with them and I love it. I was actually just on their podcast, the Life Insurance Academy podcast. You have to make sure you check that out. Okay, so it's time for them to drop some nuggets. When they speak, they train. They give stuff away. So get your pad out, get your pen out. You ready to take some notes? Please welcome to the virtual stage, Mr. Roger Short. Mr. Chris Ball and the Life Insurance Academy podcast. Here we go.
Thank you, Cody Askins and 8% Nation. We're excited to be with you and be part of this power-packed 8% Nation virtual conference today and also the 8% Nation live event in Dallas, Yeehaw! Texas. What was that? It's Dallas, Texas. Coming up in July. My name's Roger Short, and this is one of my business partners right here and Life Insurance Academy instructor and also the infamous Life Insurance Academy podcast host, and for those of you who've been checking us out on your favorite podcast app or now on YouTube, you finally get to meet one of my best friends, uh, Mr. Chris Ball. Thank you guys so much for having us. We are super excited to be here. And Roger, there are thousands of people watching right now. Does that make you feel funny? Oh, uh, is it butterflies? That uh, might have been something I ate, but no, we are, I'm ready, man. I'm excited. We've got some great stuff for you. Today. We're ready to bring it to you. This amazing career and profession that we're all in is the profession of selling or the profession of persuasion. Some people feel slightly uncomfortable when they think of selling or persuading. For some who have an aversion to this, they may even see it as manipulation. I think, Chris, when I actually showed you the business plan for the first time, yeah. You said, I kind of like this, but... I don't want to take advantage of old people. <laughs> he said, I don't want to take advantage of old people. And I paused for a minute and I thought, wait, does he think I take advantage of old people? Like, this was a thought. And so some people have this thought. They, my idea of sales and what it was. So, yeah, and yeah. some people mm -hmm. have this view. However, when we really break things down, we are all in sales, aren't we? We all persuade on a daily basis. If someone has a good idea or a good suggestion that would benefit others, or they would like to do something or go to a certain place, we state our case. And we hope to move people in the direction of our desired outcome. This is persuasion, and we all do it at work in our social settings, in our relationships, and at home. This is a profession that I've given my entire career to, and I don't see selling in this light at all. In fact, I see the art of persuasion as a beautiful thing. So, I have a question for everyone. Have you ever seen a movie director in a behind the scenes do this? Do this. You can guys go ahead and try that. Your fingers will feel funny for a minute. Have you ever seen anybody do this? Chris, you're a movie guy. What I are am. they doing when they do that? I'm a, I'm a big movie buff, and uh, they're doing exactly what you're saying. They're persuading us. So when directors are doing this, they're being very intentional, and they're removing the visual noise to determine what they will show us in the shot. Yeah. And by the time it's finished, once the scene is complete, they are showing you exactly what they want you to see. Everything in there is in there for a reason. Even here, you see exactly what we want you to see. This shot... And this frame, everything that you see here, right here, was set up with you in mind. You don't see what's outside of the frame and all the things going on around us that would distract you. We probably should show them, though, yeah. just to give them context. Should we show them? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's show them. So as you can see, this looks very different, doesn't it? From this frame, you see our set design, our cables. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can see Austin, possibly. Uh, you can see our coffee. You can see our equipment. But as we were framing this shot, we knew uh, that this, this type of thing could distract your focus and limit our effectiveness if we kept the frame here. Mm -hmm. So we had to frame our shot and focus your attention to be effective in our communication and ultimately our call to action. So here's a question for you. To start, we're looking for your participation here. We know that uh, you're on the chat and there's a chat feature running on the side of this while we're doing this. And so we'd like you guys to jump in. When I did this, did you guys try to do that? I did this with Rose yeah. at the house the other night and she couldn't get her fingers right. It oh, was yeah. funny to watch. So if you didn't try it, go ahead and try it now. Go ahead, take a minute, frame it up, frame up something in this shot right here or something where you are. Go ahead and frame it up, and then I have a question for you. Now, when you did that, which hand went on top? Okay. Which, which hand went on top? So mine's left, but... Mine is right. Okay, well, right. And, and I'm left-handed. I don't know if that influences it or not. And I'm right-handed. Okay. So if your right hand was on top, we want you to go ahead and put right in the chat feature. This if your old... left hand was on top, this is a scientific study we're doing yes, right now. That's right. If your left hand was on top, I want you to go ahead and put left in the chat feature. And we're gonna add them all up. We're gonna see which one of this group, of all these, of you incredible 8% Nation followers and the people here today to learn some great stuff, we're gonna see which one is more dominant, left or right. Right, and I think Cody's giving away $10,000 in Bitcoin. He does these, I think there's money getting ready to fall from the ceiling. Cody, are you getting ready? To, 
Who knows? I'm ready Who to knows? catch. All right. So today we're talking about the power of framing in the art of persuasion. Before the explosion of information on the internet, the salesperson had an advantage. They had the benefit of knowledge, and that knowledge gave them power over the buyer. The transfer of information to the buyer from the salesperson communicated and established an authority and put them in a position of strength and high value. Today, however, people have an access to an endless amount of information. If you want to learn anything about anything, you can simply Google it, or better, you can actually YouTube it. Yeah. And you can certainly find enough people on Facebook that are telling you what's true and right about <laughs> everything. Absolutely. Even our seniors, they, they're living on these devices, right? Yeah. As a society and culture, we are stimulus rich now, but often context poor. There's just so much information to digest and process that people can be overwhelmed and they don't know where, don't know how to make a value decision and they don't know where to put their focus. There's just too much going on. There's too much noise. And it's the same for your clients that you serve on a daily basis. I want you to remember this statement in business and in sales. If you confuse, you lose. Help reduce the noise, narrow your client's focus, and simplify your solutions. One of the best ways that you can do that is to put things in a frame, and it's called the framing effect. The framing effect is a type of cognitive bias. We like to use uh, sciencey sounding words on occasion <laughs> just to show you how smart we are. This cognitive bias, uh, this causes people to react to something in different ways depending on how information is presented to them. It impacts how they perceive value in the actions they take. So today, we'll address some of these framing approaches and how they can dramatically improve your sales across all our insurance-related markets. And at the end of this Life Insurance Academy session, you will discover four of the most powerful and effective frames and how to use them to help you eliminate the noise in your persuasion efforts and close more sales and add an additional thirty to $40,000 to your bank account. What? Yeah. We're they're going to make it. that much money from this one if they ta- if they pay attention. We're going to we're going to give you that. So, Do it. a cognitive bias, this psychological term, uh, is uh, can help us frame our message. When we know that people are subject to certain cognitive biases, we can enlist them in our persuasion efforts. The first frame that we'd like to talk to you about uh, that addresses one of these biases is the loss aversion frame. And some, some of you may know it as the fear of loss. Uh, what does your prospective client have to lose? Help them identify that. Asking good questions in this direction can help them discover what they have to lose, more so than focusing on what they have to gain. This is particularly effective in insurance sales. Yes, benefits are extremely important, but what people have to lose often proves to be a stronger motivator than what they have to gain. There's been all kinds of studies on this to show that. Too many for us to go into. But in our training, we call this letting them know the stakes. And not, not, like, not like Omaha stakes, yeah, but the ones. stakes. S-T-A-K-E-S. These are, these are stakes too. Uh, one of my favorite sales quotes comes from the great Zig Ziglar. Uh, people often say no because they don't have enough information. Yeah. Uh, getting started, I think I, I misunderstood what he meant by this and what it is that people actually had to know early on in my sales career. So I thought I needed to give them more information about the company, the products, and the features. So I did that for a while, but it wasn't really moving the needle, and I think I was actually boring people. Uh, and I, I learned that they didn't need more product knowledge. What they needed, they just needed to know what was at stake. Yeah. So then I started to think, if my clients could jump in a time machine to one year in the future and see the financial impact of not choosing this product today on the people that they care about, they would beg me to purchase this yeah. policy. Mm-hmm. What is the information deficit that they have? It's not about products. It's not about uh, the different carriers that we have. Ultimately, it's what is at stake. Our job in insurance sales is to help the prospect understand what happens to the people they care about most when something like an unexpected medical challenge arises Mm -hmm. or even worse, when they pass. How is this going to affect their family's finances without the right health coverage? 
what strain does, strain does this put on the family if they don't have a life insurance benefit in place to depend on for loss of income or final expenses? I mean, after all, the person that they need the most is going to be gone. So our job is to create that frame, remove the noise, and help them see the stakes clearly and what losses their family will suffer if they do not have the right benefits in place. When you do that, they are more likely to take action when they see what is at stake and what they can lose. Again, this is based on the cognitive bias to avoid loss. Yeah. Um, and plus, a time machine would be fun. Oh, yeah, man. We need to do that. Yeah. Let's do it. We need, a, we need to get a DeLorean. Hey, Austin, can you get us a flux capacitor? Cool. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Just write it down. We'll figure it What's out. What's that name? Is it Lloyd? Yeah. Christopher Lloyd? Christopher Lloyd. Christopher yeah, Lloyd. Yeah. yeah. He's great. So the next frame that we're going to talk about is the experience frame. You guys have heard about this before. It's called FOMO, fear of missing out. And guys, it is real. I have some of that fear of missing out stuff. Mm. If you relate to me and you have FOMO too sometimes, I want you to go ahead and type FOMO, F-O-M-O, into the chat. F-O-M-O, type that into the chat. The experience frame is all about missing out on an experience. Um, think about something that you spent money on recently or in the past six, eight months. Uh, that was memorable and meaningful to you. It's probably not a shirt, probably not a new phone, or some office supplies that you ordered from Amazon. My guess is that it's probably something like a vacation you took with some special people that's now etched in your memory. Or perhaps it was a pet that you guys purchased that you brought home that's now bringing so much joy and happiness to your home, and it's actually enriched your family. Or maybe it was a special gift that you spent time thinking about, and you took the time in purchasing it, and wrapping it for somebody so that you can enjoy the experience of giving it to them and watching them open it, knowing how much they would enjoy it. Social scientists have looked at and studied what people remember and what they value. They tell us that people tend to value experiences more than a product uh, or more than goods and services. That's why we should never talk about the cost of a premium for a policy. We need to talk about what the benefit is for and who the experience is and, and what Absolutely. that person is going to feel. It's an experiential thing. So it's, uh, satisfaction is not derived so much from that new 72-inch TV that you got on Black Friday last year, uh, but it's more about the experiences, although a 72-inch TV nicely mounted yes. in a new space <laughs> does look pretty cool. It does look pretty cool, especially when Tom Brady's winning a Super Bowl. Yes, yes. the GOAT. But... It's the experiences around that. It's the nights of sitting there with your family or your friends, having movie night now once a month, eating popcorn, laughing together, or crying together. I'm a dad of three daughters and my wife, and sometimes we watch movies that make people cry. Even That's me. Right, bro. Even me. So it's conclusive that the experience is more valuable and enriching than the product itself. You know, uh, Roger, I have to confess, I'm a, I'm a FOMO guy, fear of missing out guy. I collect sports cards and I, I look for great deals. And part of that experience is knowing you got a great deal. Like yes. that is an experience. Yeah, you stole something like, <laughs> I got one, I got one, you know? And uh, so when there's this buzz about a card, I have anxiety almost that I'm going to miss out on something special. Why is that? I, did you recently just miss out on something, Yes, Chris? I did, I did. He did. There was a very special- He was pouty uh, for a little while. Muhammad Ali card I've been watching for months. I took my eyes off it. And it jumped from four hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars. Could have had it for $400. that was an expensive eye off of it <laughs> yeah. moment. Got distracted, right? And now with every card, you're like, oh yeah, that could be the one. That could be the one. <laughs> right? So that FOMO's for real, guys. So uh, this this affects all of us in some way or another, and this is true for your clients. So it's a it's a little different in life sales because the experience that this frame is dialing in on is the experience of how they will be remembered and the satisfaction of being aligned with people who just simply do the right thing. Yeah. There are two ways to use this experience frame. First, if I can help my prospects to discuss how they wanna be remembered by the people they love, it will be easier for them to take action. I mean, who doesn't wanna be remembered as making an impact on the financial future of the people they love? Mm -hmm. They will, want to, they will not want to miss out if I can paint a detailed picture of how this will impact and bless their family. Next, 
It's important for us to remember that buying a life policy is a principal decision. It's a decision about who they are as a human being. When they consider buying a policy, they are doing what they would expect every other good person yeah. to do. Yeah. If you are working leads, it is important to understand this. This is at the core of why they requested information in the first place. It helps in our presentations to find a point of agreement with our prospects that it is just absolutely true. It is our responsibility as husbands, as wives, as parents to improve our family's futures. We want to leave this place better for them than it was for us. And if we can agree on that, then this becomes a common sense principled decision. They know right and wrong. They know taking care of their family is the right thing to do. And when we use this experience frame, we are reducing the noise and helping our prospects realize that they do not want to miss out on the experience of changing lives and the satisfaction of being in line, aligned with people who do the right thing. Yeah, it's not about the premium for the policy. It's about doing something for their family so their family can continue to have those experiences that they want them to have now. Absolutely. Um, Many of you uh, may not know that my former career in business prior to insurance was in advertising sales and publishing. Specifically, it was in the yellow pages. What That's is that, one of these Roger? Great big thick books, yellow paper, like an encyclopedia. Names and phone numbers, newsprint with like pictures and plumbing and roofing and phone numbers. Okay. And I then this little it. company came along called Google, and they started to change some things. Okay, you may want to watch Google. They're gonna do they're gonna some be stuff. something. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so the this idea today is we're going to be talking about the contrast frame, and so there's a there's a story in the advertising world from my from my past about this guy named Rosser Reeves that I love. And he was a famous ad man from the 1950s, and he believed the purpose of advertising was to sell. He's the one who actually coined the famous term unique selling proposition. He actually believed that differentiation was one of the most important strategic and tactical activities in which companies must constantly engage. And even you and for us as individuals, how do we differentiate ourselves from our competition? Yeah. Now there's a famous story about him when he had uh, when he and a friend were going out to lunch. They were actually walking down the street in Manhattan. It was a beautiful spring day and they passed a blind man in an alley and he was panhandling for money. And he was sitting there with his hat to collect coins and he had a sign in front of him and on that sign it says, I am blind. Now sadly, there weren't too many coins in the hat. Um, the story goes on to say that Rosser went over to the man and asked if he could help. And he wrote just four more words on his sign above those words that I am blind. And these are the four words he wrote. It is springtime and. Hmm. It is springtime and I am blind. This is the contrast principle at work. You see, everyone was reading that he was blind. But now when they read it, they see his blindness in contrast to their own ability to see and enjoy a beautiful spring day. We understand this person can't see compared to what? Compared to me, compared to me who can see the beauty of this spring day. Oh my gosh, he can't see what I'm seeing. These words immediately, because they were contrasted in what he was not able to take part in, they were, they were contrasted, it immediately elicited empathy from the passerbys and the coins started to pile up. You see, technically we understand and process things in relative terms, not absolute terms. So, is this expensive? Well. If you have no value on it, everything's expensive. Yeah. Is it is it expensive compared to what? Am I a caring person? Yeah. But compared to who? Well, Mother Teresa? Well, uh, no. You know, like right. there's these contrast things. So we have to do the contrast. The single most important question in sales and persuasion is not to answer the question, what's in it for me, as most of us are taught. That's the second most important question. The most important question to answer for the client is compared to what? The way you make something extremely impactful and valuable is to contrast it with something else and not to let it sit out there on its own. So Chris, what are some examples of how this contrast frame can be utilized with clients in our insurance sales efforts? It's too much, I can't afford it, compared to what? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. If we can help the clients answer this question that we know is likely happening in their mind before we ever get the objection, 
we are positioning we are positioning the value in a contrast frame. Mm -hmm. So here's an example of this. In this conversation, I'm talking to Mr. Smith, and I can say to Mr. Smith, it's interesting, Mr. Smith. Some people look at this as merely a transactional decision, and they weigh the cost of $89 a month or $159 a month in their current budget or lifestyle, and they may think that they don't want to afford this type of payment or it's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. However, every time we ask if they could go forward to the day after the accident that requires hospitalization or the day, you know, God forbid, that you've been diagnosed with terminal cancer, when we ask our other clients this, would you feel the same way? The answer is always a resounding no. You see, Mr. Smith, when $89 or $159 a month is compared to the cost that is associated with these new and very real, very real and ch challenging financial concerns, our other clients, to them, this is an incredibly affordable and valuable investment for their family. Now, wouldn't you agree? So another place this frame is effective is when the prospective client has existing coverage and they say, I'm sure you've heard this, I already have a policy. Yeah, Why? a lot of people turn around and walk out when right. they hear that. Absolutely. Especially new people. Don't do that. Right. Another way you hear this is I have enough coverage. Yeah. And what we need to answer or be prepared to answer is compared to what? We need to advise them properly and show a breakdown of loss of income and the household expenses that will no longer be covered as a result of the passing of the primary income earner. And we can show them what happens when Social Security disappears for one of the spouses and how that impacts the family that is dependent in some way on the current income. So this contrast is very important. Contrast their initial thoughts of, I have enough to the clear gaps that will exist for the family if they have just a basic burial plan. The contrast to the liability that the client and their family will have raises the value mm -hmm. of the benefits and coverage significantly. Now left alone, however, there's no contrast. If there's no contrast presented, they will have little empathy toward taking further action. The contrast frame in both of these examples can be utilized before, a, before you even get an objection. Mm -hmm. So that you address these commonly known objections and then eliminate them before the client can raise them. Yeah, we talk about like, if you get good at knowing what the objections are going to be, and you can raise those objections, you as the presenter, you as the persuader, you actually take the power away, you diffuse them, and you take them off the table of conversations, oh, yeah. and they don't come up later. Absolutely. And one of the most effective ways to do that is when they're apathetic or they, they seem disinterested in moving forward, is to position it in this contrast frame. Next, we're going to talk about uh, the final one, and it's one that I know will uh, impact your sales next week, and it is one that we will refer to as the less is more frame. Less is more. You see, we've been convinced uh, to think in this information and choice-rich society that we'll be more persuasive to offer people lots and lots of choices. You can have it any way you want it. Are you going to sing? No, no I'm not going to sing. I feel it. I feel it. We, any way you want it. No. <laughs> That's not gonna the way you need it. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> you can have it any style you want it, whatever color you want it, uh, you know, and you can have it whenever you want it. The truth is that offering people lots of choices, while it can be persuasive, it's only persuasive to a point. You see, choice is valuable, but it has a ceiling on it. So there's a study uh, by two researchers out of Stanford that set up shop in a grocery store, and they were doing a comparison on how choices and the number of choices impacted people's buying decisions and sales. And I love reading about these studies. They're so fascinating. And in this research test, they were selling jam. At one end of the store, they set up and offered 24 varieties of jam. That's a lot of jam. Yeah. And at the other end of the store, they displayed and offered only six varieties of jam. Now, being able to taste 24 varieties of jam before purchasing is a great value, and it certainly led to a lot of people tasting the jam. However, uh, the study was designed to assess buying decisions and purchasing patterns. It wasn't designed to see which one gave out more, uh, more samples. It was designed to see which one sold more. So after all, the reason why most of you registered and are watching today in this great nation of eight percenters chiming in to figure out how to advance your career and accelerate your sales, you wanted to learn how to close more sales, how to convert more of your sits. 
not just to book more appointments or yeah. give away more brochures. Yes, this is a numbers game, and you do need to know how to book appointments and get more sits, but when you're actually in front of a prospective client, either face-to-face -face or over the phone, you want to discover how to frame your message to sell more policies. So which sold more? When they offered more choices, they had a lot more activity, but only 3% Holy cow. purchased jam. Three. When they offered fewer choices and more selective choices, 30% purchased jam, 30%. That's a 27% increase in the number of people who actually took action. You see, less is more. Offering fewer options is more persuasive. And this speaks to something that's really important to understand in our sales, and that is choice is valuable, but it has a ceiling on it. So Chris, how can we make sure that we're maximizing our opportunities uh, with our clients understanding and utilizing the power of this less is more frame. Well, I don't I don't know about you guys, but I need things to be simple. And uh, this is probably why I like restaurants like Chipotle. You know, it's either a taco or a burrito. It's just you hold it differently. I think that's the trick. It's the same stuff. It's the just same mixed stuff. up differently. Yeah. So you got to pick your beans, you pick your meat, you pick your rice, bam, it's over. No, uh, it's not over. Yeah. There's always this dilemma with the guac. <laughs> yeah, it's a... How it's many a, of you have a dilemma with the guac? Purchasing decision. <laughs> yes. Right? Because you have to buy the guac at Chipotle. Yeah. And I think it's like half the price of a taco. <laughs> it's insane. I don't know how much it is, but it always gets me right in the middle. I know. Anybody else have issues with the guac? If you do, type guac <laughs> in the chat, guac. will you? Guac. If you know Send how to spell it, guac. we like G U A C. <laughs> go ahead. So, uh, yeah, I love the simple choices. I can't go to restaurants with 35 pages on their menu. I mean, it's just overwhelming. So, it's important for us to understand that while insurance seems simple to us, yeah. in most cases, I know you might be on the front end of this and you're trying to figure it out, but after you got the wheels running, it seems simple to us. To our clients, it's very complicated. And if you're an independent agent, you're probably working with multiple companies and multiple products. Mm -hmm. And it'd be very easy for you to give your prospective client 30 different options with 30 different premiums to choose from. And feel excited about it sometimes. Oh, yeah. I got all of these options. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I've got all of them. I've got all the options. But this burns our prospective client's energy and calories, and ultimately, it leads to confusion. And you heard this at the beginning, if you confuse, you lose. And Donald Miller said it best in his, in his book, Story Brand. Mm -hmm. It's great stuff. You need to check it out. If you confuse, you lose. So, if you confuse, you lose. Can you engage with us one more time? And I want you to remember this statement. This is a takeaway from our talk today in our session. This will help you next week. Go ahead and type in the chat, if you confuse, you lose. Can you go ahead and do that? Just the fact that you're typing it and writing it down will help you remember that. Go That's ahead. Right. For those of you who want to win, you're going to type that in the chat. Go ahead and type that in there now. So as insurance professionals, it's our job to identify the needs of our prospects and their family and present them with the best products that will serve their needs. Mm -hmm. and, and here's a quick tip, okay? Good underwriting questions will help you narrow down your, your options and your choices. So after we have decided which product, offer them three simple affordable option, options to choose from and ask them to make a decision. That's it, it's that simple. Anything else and we run the risk of confusing them and losing the sale. Give people an easy path to a decision, or we'll say it this way, a simple off-ramp to a close. Mm -hmm. We don't want them running into confusing construction sites where the ramp is supposed to be there, but they have to follow a complicated detour and ways is confused, and they have to find the next off-ramp. Because if that happens, we will lose sales when things get complicated. The prospect will shut down, and they'll tell you what everybody hears on occasion. They need to think about it. Does that sound familiar to you? Oh, I'm sure some people have heard that. Yep. And so, then they come back and say, yeah, he wanted to think about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they, and, they believe them. And they're going to come back seven, eight more times and yeah. possibly sell it. And the new agent believes the client. Yeah. It's, it's a sad thing. Yeah. We just need to limit the choices and give them three simple options to choose from. So frame the focus on a few and simple choices and get more sales. In this session, we discussed the loss aversion frame the experience frame, the contrast frame, and the less is more frame. These are four of the most powerful framing approaches to reduce the noise that distracts your sales efforts 
simplify your message, and close more sales. We trust that as you get back out there making a difference and changing lives, that one or more of these frames will actually help you move the needle with at least one more prospective client each week. It will. And we are confident well. And a result of that average additional six to $800 a week, you will earn in commissions. This one session effectively just made you an extra thirty to $40,000 this year. Boom. Boom. We did we it. We did it. We did it. Can you imagine how much they're going to get from all the rest of the oh. sessions? It's incredible. So if you found any value in this training today on the power of framing and the art of sales, we'd like to let you know that there are actually eight key frames for simplifying your message and maximizing your sales. And we're going to be offering an in-depth training session on those later this month. And we'll provide that to you with free access for today only by going to lifeinsuranceacademy.org slash eight, the number eight percent, P-E-R-C-E-N-T. Go to that link. I think you'll see it in the chat right now. And you can actually download the Power of Framing and Sales course material from this talk right now for your use so that you can have all the content, so you can go back and reference it, so that you can study it and you can put it into practice next week. Now, you're also going to receive today only an invite to the next training session. However, you have to take action uh, before this session ends. Now, secondly, if you feel like this was valuable at all to you and can help you improve your conversions, we'd like to offer you one more 8% Nation virtual conference giant offer. <laughs> giant. Chris, we're crazy. The goods. Yeah. If the you are, goods. <laughs> this is where it comes. This is where it comes. So hang on. We're going to give you some stuff. If you are currently in final expense sales, or if you're in Medicare sales, mortgage protection sales, or annuity sales, and you'd like to add final expense to your lineup, or you'd like to take your final expense to the next level and maximize your profits and expand your impact, then this is for you. Two weeks, two weeks from today on March 19th at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, the Life Insurance Academy is going to be offering a free, F-R-E-E, -E, exclusive webinar on mastering the art of the no-close final expense presentation. Can, can I say it? You can say whatever. I don't know what okay. you're going to say. We're going to teach them how to make the sausage. Yes, we're going to how teach to them how to make the sausage. <laughs> That's a podcast reference. Yes. You have to go listen to check it out. Check you got to go get it on our podcast for that. This webinar will provide you the inside secrets and the five fundamental features of the no close presentation that has helped agents check this out, write over 30,000 policies and earn over 21 million in commissions. Yes, you heard that right. It's a lot of stinking policies and a lot, a lot of, of money. 30,000 policies and 21 million in commissions. If you'd like this secret and the inside scoop on that, go to lifeinsuranceacademy.org forward slash 8%. It's in the chat. That's in the chat feature right now. And go register for this free virtual uh, exclusive, this, this free virtual conference exclusive. And when you do, we're actually going to give you three more additional downloadable more. resources. Here's more. Wow. Hold on, Chris. There's more. <laughs> Three more additional resources that are going to help you accelerate your business and increase your sales right away. You'll get access to these three. And the first one is the Telesales Master's Guide to Call Control. If you want to be super effective on the phone with your phone sales, you need that guide. The second one is the six-figure agent activity tracker. If it was your goal to be in the six-figure realm this year in 2021, you absolutely need that one. It's going to revolutionize your business. And the last one is free statements and smoke screens worksheet. Now, this one is going to help you get unstuck and unfrozen when clients are blowing you smoke. So once you register, I want you to go ahead and register. And once you do so, I want you to please type I'm in. I'm in in the chat. Can you do that? Can you type I'm in in the chat? We want to know that at least the links are working and we want to know that you got in. Uh, go ahead. It's in the chat right now. You can click the link. And once you register, I want you to go and type I'm in in the chat. That will help us know. Now, if you have any problems uh, with getting that registered, once you, once you click the link, please let us know. And we're here to help you. Go to the link. Uh, lifeinsuranceacademy.org forward slash 8%. Register for this free 
uh, virtual conference exclusive with 8% Nation. All you 8%ers out there, you're going to get those th three free additional resources that are available right now to help you accelerate your business and increase your sales. Chris and I want to say thank you so much for investing in yourself. Using the power of frames to keep things simple will help you close more sales. Because remember, if you confuse, you lose. Thank you, 8% Nation. Thank you, guys. you guys are incredible. Thank you for investing in yourself. We can't wait to hear the next sessions. Remember, put it in the chat. I'm in. We'll see you there. See ya. Roger and Chris, I love it, man. I love like the steps. They always have like specific steps to success and like different pieces. And they're always like talking about certain areas to help people, man. So, so apply those things. I promise you, you will make more money this year. Okay, I wanna remind you, all the deals available, we are almost done. Just a few speakers left, okay? We're, at, we're almost out of the deals. CodyAskins.com forward slash deals for premier tickets to Apres Nation live in Dallas, July 23rd, 24th. Who is going to be there? Four premier tickets, only $9.97. CodyAskins.com forward slash deals to take advantage of that deal right now. Take action today. We don't have a lot of time left, and then the event's over and the deal's gone. Okay, so make sure you take advantage of that. I'm ready to spend time with you. Who's loving this? Keep me posted in chat, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm like, well, I'm watching chat, by the way. When these speakers are talking, I'm actually over here watching chat. I'm interacting. I'm seeing everything you're saying, and I appreciate all the kind words, the compliments. I appreciate you sharing on social, and I appreciate you being here, okay? We, we, I know it's been a marathon, but it's been a blast. I love it. Let's make it 12 days next time. I told our team, maybe we can make it a month eventually. They're like, dude, you're nuts. That's crazy. But I love this so much, man. Like promoting and helping people, that's my gift. And that's what I love doing, right? As long as you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. Now, I'm about to interview a sales legend. I want to know what questions do you want to hear from Brian Tracy, okay? This is, this is, this is going to be an amazing interview. I'm honored to be able to do it with you today. What questions do you want to hear? Go and start filling it up, man. Like my favorite sales book. The first sales book I ever picked up was The Art of Closing the Sale by Brian Tracy. The dude is a living legend and I am honored to be able to play his interview with me right now. Okay, I'm excited to jump in and do that with you. So thank you. Okay, I appreciate that. This is going to be very surreal for me an absolutely incredible moment because of the impact that he's had on my life and millions of others. The dude knows sells. I want to make sure that we always have the best speakers a part of everything that we do. And right now, I'm about to interview one of the goats, one of the greatest of all time, right before you, right now. And I'm excited to jump into it. Here we go. I want to know what you want to ask. I want to know what you want to see. And I'm excited for what's about to take place. Are you right now? I want you to go live on Facebook, man. I want you to go, I want you to video this thing. I want you to share this thing out. I want you to take pictures of it. I want every, I want the world to know that Brian Tracy was on 8% virtual today. And I want them to know that forever. Okay, so make sure you get some nuggets out of this. I can promise you the dude's got so much freaking wisdom to drop and he's about to drop it now let's jump to me and you spending time with one of my idols and mentors mr brian tracy eight percent virtual i have an unbelievable surprise guest speaker for you today mr brian tracy lifelong fan of your work. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend a few minutes with me today. Well, thank you. You know, you, you and I, um, uh, have, have, what do they say in the, in the movie? We've, uh, uh, shed the same blood in the same mud. If you remember that movie, you and I have, uh, made our living and come, uh, from, uh, nowhere uh, to where we are by learning how to sell. And, uh, I know that you're a fan of my information on closing, and I remember when I started off in selling, uh, I asked myself the question, and this is really important, is what is the uh, one factor that determines your income more than any other factor? This is called the constraint. 
It's called the limiting step or the constraint. What is the one factor? And I realized it was my ability to close the sale. Actually, I wasn't afraid to, to make calls. I wasn't afraid to knock on doors. And I did, I, in my first year, I knocked on more than 20,000 doors and got almost 20,000 rejections. And, uh, but I wasn't afraid. I'd just get up in the morning, six o'clock, I'd be out there and make my first call at eight o'clock. My rule was if, uh, they, if they are available, um, I'd be there. And I'd be knocking on doors, at, I would knock on doors until uh, 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. If the light was on, I'd be there. And um, I realized that it was my ability to ask for the order. My ability to close was the, the critical factor. So I de gave myself a, a, a goal to become really, really good at closing sales. And I eventually I did. It takes time and it takes a tremendous amount of rejection, but uh, eventually I became better and better and better at it. And my income went up. And there's a wonderful relationship between your income and your confidence, your level of happiness. You start to make a lot of money and you start to be happy. And when you're happy, you have a lot of energy. When you have energy, you're more eager to get out there uh, and make calls. And so I, have, I uh, worked on becoming really good on closing the sale. And the wonderful thing is that I've told more than 5 million people live that you can learn any skill you need to learn to achieve any goal that you need to achieve. And uh, so you could become really, really good at asking for the order. And, uh, and I did. And uh, over time, I uh, made a lot of money as well. But as we were talking about, it's not the money that you make, it's the, uh, the effect that you have on the lives of other people. Absolutely. Yes. I love that. It's, 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 it's amazing too, how you can, it's, it's, it's a choice how good you get at, at closing the deal. And it's amazing. You just talked about how, if you want to be really good, you chose to be really good. You made that decision. Yes. Not everyone's wired that way. Where does that come from to where you commit to doing something and you really follow through and execute? Well, one of the things that we have is that, um, it's the biggest single problem in adult life is the feeling that I'm not good enough. Mm. I'm not good enough. And I've studied this in psychology. Uh, it's what holds people back more than anything else. And so you simply turn it around and say, I am good enough. I can, I can do this. I can learn anything I need to learn. And uh, I have taught this for, for now almost five decades. And one of the things that I found is that uh, our greatest problems in life come from our uh, childhood and, being, and and how we were raised. And so as a parent, are you married, Cody? I am. Yes, sir. You have children? No children yet. No, sir. Well, the, the most important thing as a parent is to continually tell your children how good they are. Tell them how much you love them and tell them how good they are. Yeah. And um, no matter what happens... You tell them the most wonderful words in the world are, you can do it. You can do it. And uh, when you keep telling your kids you can do it, eventually, at a, at a very early age, it's sort of like programming, is you uh, program them to believe, I can do this. I can do anything I put my mind to. Okay. And uh, at the beginning of their lives, they will have so much self-doubt. You say the biggest single problem is self-doubt, is they don't believe in themselves. But you, as their parent, um, are the most important person in their lives. And so, therefore, just, just tell them all the time how good they are and how great they are. And if they make a mistake or they don't do too well, you say, all right, well, uh, pick up and try it again. And you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And that's a wonderful thing for children to hear. And eventually, it reaches the point where they, it, it, it sort of locks in and they start to believe it. And then after that, nothing can stop them. That's awesome. That's such, such good advice too, because I, I really believe I, I had a, I'm about to get into my story and how much you've affected me and, and, and your material, but I really believe what you just said resonated and made a ton of sense with me because I get the question a lot, you know, um, how were you able to have confidence in yourself at an early age? And I really believe it was my parents instilling the confidence and those positive encouraging words just like you talked about my mother and my father yes uh, and that gave me a tremendous advantage hugely grateful and was amazing blessing and, and so my parents were 
uh, that positive influence for me. And they made me believe, just like you just said, for whatever reason. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if they listened to you and then, and then implemented that in me. I don't know. But I do know that uh, they made me believe I could accomplish anything in life. Period. Yeah. Yes. And and they, you, you don't understand. Parents don't understand that uh, that you are the greatest single influence in the life of your children. And I say uh, I've taught this to so many people, but I say whenever you see an adult who is has problems, uh, you see a bad childhood is that the parents, my, my parents gave me no support at all. Uh, the only thing that they did was criticize me. Uh, I, uh, I say this, and if you've, if you've reviewed my material, I'll say that destructive criticism is the, is the cancer in uh, all of human life, is when parents criticize their children, it just is like a punch in the emotional gut, and um, it holds them back and, and, and causes them to doubt themselves uh, more and more. <clears throat> and the opposite is constant encouragement, constantly telling them that they're good, and and, and complimenting them on uh, everything that they do. Even if they just do something little, always tell them how good they are, how great they are, how wonderful it was. Just make a big thing of it. And my, my, my kids are, are so used to hearing me uh, talk to them. They say, oh, dad, you're always saying that. And then they look at the, their, 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 their friends and they find that their friends don't get that. And then they realize it takes them many years. They realize, wow. Wow, what what they're getting from me and from Barbara uh, is is very rare, and so they now three of my children are married, and um, they uh, I'm sorry, yeah, three of them are married, and they do the same things with their children. They're constantly telling their children how good they are, and their children are just so happy. The children laugh and they run around and they're happy. And there's, you know, like that Western song, never is heard a discouraging word, is that there's just no negative conversation in their lives. And, uh, and that means they get better grades and they're more popular and they uh, uh, like other people, they like themselves. And that's what we need to do. And I think it sounds like your parents were really great. And so you uh, will be a great parent uh, when your children come along most wonderful thing in the world. I'm now 77. I just turned 77 a month ago. Wow. And um, uh, as I look back, I realize that this is the most important thing in my life is, is what happened to my children. And we look at the kids and we talk to them and, and they, our kids just sort of bask, right? like, like sitting in the sun. They just bask in the warmth of continuous approval, continuous um, positive feedback. And, um, so you just keep on doing that, keep on doing that. And it's wonderful because you continually build your children up and it makes you feel happy and it makes them feel happy. And then they will marry someone who uh, has the same philosophy of life is they feel positive and they feel happy. It's just a, it's a, just a wonderful continuing circle. And that's, uh, that's what we need to do as, um, uh, as salespeople. The most powerful statement I ever learned was the words, I like myself. And you've heard me talk about that. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And the more you say it, the more you depress or push down uh, thoughts uh, of uh, self-doubt. Uh, and the more you feel positive and encouraged about yourself. So I have so many of my friends in sales that'll get themselves cranked up uh, just before they go into a call or pick up the telephone, as they'll say to themselves, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself. And then they pick up the phone or they knock on the door or they walk in, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself. And what that does is it just lowers all their fears and all of their doubts. And they just feel happy about themselves. And as a result, their relationships with their clients are excellent as well. Anyway, so... So uh, that's what we do. I love that. I love that. Well, I, I need to formally thank you for the positive influence that you had on my life. Um, our, our viewers, we had over 10,000 register for, for, for this. And, oh, wow. and they've heard me recommend you time and time again. They've heard me that, that your book, The Art of Closing the Cell, uh, was the first sales book I ever picked up. 
Um, I love the story of how you were going house to house. People who tell people were telling you they want to think about it. They want you to call them back. And I started to implement that and was able to close a lot more deals immediately without, without having to follow up with people. Also, um, I've recommended that other salespeople in the insurance industry do that as well. And they've seen a lot of um, positive encouragement and feedback from using that. And it's worked for them, too. So thank you for um, being a big help to me making six figures my first year and the hundreds of thousands of other people that you've been able, possibly millions probably, that you've been able to help as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, that's that, that's amazing. And, and I, I've i been uh, following you for 10, 11 years since I first got in the, in, in, in this, into sales. And I, and I thought, you know what? Um, I've been looking forward to today and our time together uh, just because of how much I've looked up to you. And, and so, again, thank you for everything you've done. I, I want to uh, transition to 8% comes from the fact that 92% of insurance agents fail in their first three years. Wow. What, what does nine, what, what, what does eight percent mean to you knowing that statistic? Well, it's, it's sort of like any kind of a skill. Uh, the skill of selling is like the skill of typing. It's like the, the skill of riding a bicycle. It's a, it's a learnable skill. And it's something that you can learn through continuous practice. And a lot of people don't understand that. And when, uh, I started off in selling and knocking on doors and knocking on doors. And uh, after six months, I was just still struggling. And there was one guy at our office that I tell this story. His name was Pete. And I still see his face after all these years. And um, Pete was selling 10 times as much as anybody else uh, in, in, in the company. We had about 15 people. And uh, I would start working at 7 or 8 in the morning knocking on doors. And Pete would start at 9 or 10 o'clock, and he would take time off for lunch, and he would quit at 4.30 or 5, and um, he just had a great life, and he earned more money than anybody else. And one day I asked him, I said, Pete, why, why is it that you earn so much more uh, than I do? And he said, well, show me your sales presentation, and I'll critique it for you. And I said, geez, I don't have a sales presentation. I'd heard about a sales presentation. I sometimes joke and I say it was like something on the other side of the room, of the moon is I knew that was there was a, a sales presentation out there, but I'd never seen one. And I said, well, I don't have a presentation. He said, well, what do you do when you get face to face with a prospective customer? And I said, oh, I just I tell them how good uh, our product is and, and, and how helpful it is and how much it's better than anybody else and everything. And he said, no, no, I remember. I remember this, we, we, we had an office in this office building, third floor, and we went downstairs and across the street and we're sitting on a park bench, uh, this big city park, a city park bench. And he said, he said, that's not how you, you sell. What you do is you don't talk, you ask questions. And I said, ask questions, because I was told you have the gift of the gap. You know, you, you, you can talk really well. And he said, no, 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 ask questions and listen closely to the answers. And over the years, I found is that that your ability to ask questions and listen to the answers in a positive way is really the key to successful selling. And a good friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends now, top sales guy, uh, he said, uh, remember, listening builds trust. Listening builds trust. Well, how do you get a chance to listen? Well, you ask questions. You ask good questions and you lean forward, you lean into the question. And uh, and when you listen closely, people warm up to you and listening builds trust. And the more you listen, the more they trust you and the more they like you and the more they're open to being influenced by you. And I still remember those were some of the most important things is that, wow, listening builds trust. So I asked questions. I just kept asking more questions. And what about this? And. What about that? And what are you doing now? And how is that working for you? And uh, what are your goals? What are your plans for the future? And it was constantly asking questions. Changed my whole life. Instead of trying to persuade or influence people, instead, listen to them and try to help them. Uh, when I do seminars, when I hit the peak, I was doing seminars. My average seminar was 1,600 people for more than 20 years. Um, and sometimes it was 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, with gusts up to um, uh, 5,000. My biggest seminars 
were uh, 20,000, uh, 25,000. And um, it was wonderful. And it was so helpful to people. They leaned forward. And in my seminars, one of the things I learned is to ask questions rather than talking and trying to impress people, ask them questions about themselves and what they're doing, what their goals are, and, and, and so on. And it was just so wonderful. And it's the same thing with you. You, you are going to be uh, a great speaker um, in the years ahead. Uh, and you'll find that when, when I start off with the audience, I start off by asking them questions and asking them and follow-up questions and more follow-up questions. And people love it when you ask them questions and listen because, because questions um, encourage them to really think deeply about what it is they're doing. And, uh, and so uh, I, would ask, I would ask people uh, questions and then I would give them answers and ask more questions and give them more answers and so on. And that's how I got to where I am today. I would uh, ask questions and give answers and tell them how, how to use the information. So many people, I'm happy, have become millionaires. Uh, uh, my friends at Nightingale Conant uh, did a research uh, study uh, on people who used my materials. They found that, mo that more people, more salespeople became millionaires as a result of using my materials than any other single influence. And of course, everybody wants to be a millionaire. And yes, you can become a millionaire. And what you do is you do what millionaires do. And good millionaires. It's interesting. One of the richest people in the world is Mark, is, is, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and um, the president of um, uh, Facebook. And they say he's got a five to one ratio in terms of uh, listening um, and speaking. Is that uh, he uh, asks questions five times for every one time that he uh, talks or comments or gives guidance. And it's just an interesting thing. It's just that he just continually asks more questions and takes notes and, and so on. And so that's a very good thing to remember. And, and I see you taking notes. That's a very smart thing. The, 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 most, yes, the most successful people take notes all the time. And um, it's just a, it, what it does is it helps you to think uh, at, a, at a deeper level and also to review the material. I'm always astonished. I, I, I would say, say, okay, please write this down. And people in my audiences, go, you got a, got an extra pencil or you got an extra pen. Is they, they come to a, a full day seminar and they don't have a pencil. They don't have a pen. They don't have anything to write with. I just shake my head. SMH, SMH, shaking my head, shaking my head. Yes, I can't believe that. I can't believe that people would go to a seminar without preparation to write things down. And so that's another thing is um, make sure that when people come to your uh, seminars is that they uh, are supplied with uh, writing materials and, and so on. And so I always uh, carry a, a red pen and a blue pen. And my, my kids would ask me, Dad, do you have a pen? I say, what do you want, red or blue? Red or blue. <laughs> because I've always got two. And one is to underline uh, in red and, and, and blue is to, is to make a note and um, and so my kids now carry pens around. If they hear something good, they immediately write it down. Uh, Napoleon Hill had this wonderful one-liner. He said, um, and when you think it, ink it. Mm. I thought that was really cute. When you think it, ink it. If you have an idea, uh, when an idea goes through your mind like a comet, immediately write it down because if you don't, you will forget it. You'll lose it. And sometimes you'll have one good idea that can change your life. And if you don't write it down, you'll think, geez, what was that idea? And uh, then you find, meet somebody else who had that same idea as well. And uh, sometimes it's just one simple idea that changes your life. One of the things for our friends who are watching is uh, how important it is uh, to take notes and to read, is to just dedicate yourself to continuous learning. This is, I say that there's three things in, in, in my life and uh, I talk about these three. I call them the golden triangle of success, like a triangle. And when I look back over my life, I realize that there are three great things. Number one is to accept responsibility for your life. Don't complain. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't blame other people for your problems. Always accept responsibility. 
Uh, number two is to have goals, clear written goals and plans. And number three is dedicate yourself to continuous learning. It always be learning. You look behind me. I was just reading a, an article uh, on me that was in uh, on uh, yeah in, in in YouTube. It wasn't in YouTube. It was on uh, it was on Google. And somebody had done a complete research. It was called it was called Twenty Things That You Don't Know About Brian Tracy. Well, I'd never seen this before, so I read it. And one of them is that it said Brian Tracy has read more than seven thousand books. And I thought, oh. and yes, that's true. I must have said it somewhere. You see these books, these are all double stacked. So there's there's two books in every shelf from the top to the bottom. All you can see is the middle, but the bottom, the top. And uh, this is just in my office and it goes all the way around, but it's also outside. It's uh, in other rooms. It's up downstairs. It's, you know, my whole house is just full of books. And I may not have read them all, but I continue to buy and read books. And then sometimes you just come across one idea and you say, geez, that's a good idea. Geez, it's a good idea. And then, and then, and then you have uh, an opportunity. Here's something really interesting. I found that, and I, I studied metaphysics in my 20s. I came across this, a Russian school of metaphysics. And, and what they taught was that you never learn a subject without having very soon an opportunity to learn or to use that new material. Yes. As you, you learn the material and very soon you get a chance to use it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And for the rest of my life, I realized you, you read an article on something, you find it in a book or a magazine, and uh, very soon afterwards, you have an opportunity to use that material to improve your life or the life of someone else. And, um, and so therefore, you, you must dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. For the rest, you're just always learning. Uh, back in the day, my uh, first activity on the weekends was to go to bookstores. And I would take my kids to bookstores. And I told my children, I said, there's no, there's no budget for books. You can have all the books that you want. And so we would go to bookstores every single weekend, uh, and sometimes more than one. Uh, our, our favorite bookstore was a Barnes and Noble and we would go there and we would go from shelf to shelf and place to place. And, and they, they, they say, can, dad, can, dad, can I have this book? Can I get this book? I said, no budget for books, no limits. You can have all the books that you want. And so we would go there and the whole, the whole four kids, they'd come up with their shopping bags full of books. Then they have their own bookshelves with, uh, with books. Then they have their bookshelves at home. It was just, it was just wonderful. And they just read all the time. Is they, of course, they watch television, but um, very often you, they'd be there when other kids are, are watching television or playing video games. My kids would be reading. They just read and read and read. And, and uh, they're successful and they're happy. And the wonderful thing about reading is, is it gives you a feeling of personal power. You, you learn these things. And, and uh, quick subject change, uh, my uh, son, Michael, came to me when he was about 21, 22 years old, he finished school. And um, he was not a great student, um, but uh, he finally got through college. And then he came to me and he said, Dad, he said, I, I want to be successful. What, what do I need to do to be successful like you? Because, you know, we live in a nice house and <clears throat> we have a good life. And I said, well, you could do the same thing I did. And what was that? I said, well, I uh, learned how to sell. I went out and I knocked on doors and I learned how to sell. And he said, well, how could I, how could I get a job knocking on doors? And I said, well, I just gave a seminar for a big company. In fact, the uh, gentleman that uh, brought me in to speak uh, just, just died a couple of weeks ago. And um, he said, I, he said, I can, I can get you a job with him because they have branches all over the country knocking on doors. And so uh, I called him up and he called the, uh, his uh, manager in, 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 in San Diego and we got Michael a job knocking on doors. And he went out and he just knocked on doors and he knocked on doors 12 hours a day. He just knocked on doors and uh, he worked six days a week 
uh, and he work about 10, 12 hours a day. And he was very hard. He, he, I said, you, if you get this job, you're going to get more rejection than you ever dreamed was possible. Mm. You've had a good life. You've, you've not been rejected, but now you're going to be rejected. And uh, he said it was true. So, so he said it was the hardest thing in the world. He went out every day and uh, he would start knocking on doors at about uh, 10 or 11 o'clock and he would work until 9 or 10 o'clock and he would do it uh, six days a week. And uh, it was really hard, but eventually he learned how and he just kept hanging in there and learned how and eventually he became a sales supervisor and a sales manager and he began recruiting people and, and training people and after a year, he came to me and he said, I've got it. He said, Dad, he said, I'll never have to worry about money for the rest of my life because I can sell. That's no, awesome. no matter what happens, I could sell. And uh, and so today, by the time he was 25, he had a Mercedes in his own house and uh, he was smoking. And he's uh, married, three children, he's doing well. And he's, uh, he's everything that you would want. Um, just and, and the idea of quitting never occurs to him. Never occurs. To him. This this time today in the marketplace is very tough because of the coronavirus and the fact that you can't call on people. But uh, he just keeps slogging away, and he's now become a sales trainer, a speaker, and he's doing it very well. He he uh, comes to uh, my, my seminars uh, and came to my seminars and learned how to speak. And he speaks really well. So it's, uh, it's wonderful. And you can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. I say that over and over again. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I, I love that you say that because that's something that holds a lot of people back in our industry is not having goals, fear of rejection. I, I used to door knock every day for, for years as well. And while listening to your audiobooks when I would be in the car between between places, and and what would you say to those that are, because the only reason an agent would ever become part of the eight percent, uh, the ninety two percent and fail, is if they choose to quit. And I really believe the theme of this virtual conference is if you don't quit, you can't fail. That's very good. That's very good. If you don't quit, you can't fail. That's the most wonderful thing. I mean, I always I've always told my children is just never give up, never give up, never give up. And uh, you'll have all kinds of setbacks and rejections and difficulties. But uh, I used to do this, and I'll pass this on to you because uh, many years ago, I was, uh, I had this girlfriend, her name was Heather, I still remember. She was a very smart girl, sort of like insightful and so on. And, and one day we were, I still remember, we were walking all, along the street and she asked me, what is your best quality? And this is after I'd spent years traveling all over the world and everything else. What do you think is your best quality? Mm. I've never heard that question before. And so I thought about it as we walked along. And I said, well, my best quality is that I am unstoppable. I'm mm. unstoppable. I never give up. And I look back over my life and I realized that is my best quality. And I never thought about it to that minute. So I was, I've told this to my audiences, 1,000, 2,000 people. I said, what is the most important quality for you to have to be successful in selling? And the answer is to be unstoppable. Mm. Now, one of the things that I teach is that you, know, you become what you think about most of the time. Yes. Uh, but also you become what you say to yourself most of the time. When you talk to yourself in a, in a positive way, that is accepted by your subconscious mind as an instruction. So how do you become unstoppable? And everybody in the audience, and all, I would ask them, what is the most important quality? And they would say, and they say the quality is to become unstoppable. So how do you become unstoppable? And the answer is this. Whenever you have a setback or a difficulty, just say to yourself the three magic words, I am unstoppable mm. i am unstoppable now say it I said oh yeah say it so people yeah. say well i'm i'm unstoppable i said no 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 don't suck your thumb say it like you mean it all right say i am unstoppable so the second time they would say i am 
unstoppable. I said, no, 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 geez, say it like you believe it. And, and, and they would say, I am unstoppable, no more. I am unstoppable. And the whole audience would shout, I'm unstoppable. And that's great. I said, now for the rest of your life, whenever you have a thought or a feeling uh, of hesitating or holding back, you say to yourself, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. And the fact is that when you say it, you program it into your subconscious mind and you eventually begin to believe I'm unstoppable and your subconscious mind accepts it as a command. And over a period of time, not very long, sometimes the first day, you will say to yourself, I am unstoppable. I am, you know what, unstoppable. I never quit. I never quit. And uh, I taught my kids that. I, uh, when my kids were young, I would say to them, I say, you know, I know one thing about you. You never give up. Mm. I know one thing about you. You never give up. And they say, oh, dad, sure, 10 years old, 12 years. Oh, sure, I do. I mean, I, you know, I don't get good grades in school. I said, I said, no, you may have short time, short term setbacks, but way down deep inside, you never give up. You never give up. And then my uh, son, David, when he was about 10 years old, he was playing with a friend of his. And he said really loudly, I still remember this because it was such a wonderful he said really loudly, he said, well, I know one thing about myself. I never give up. Mm. He said it really like, like basically like this is just a, a fundamental truth. I never give up. And uh, all my kids are the same way. They never give up. It doesn't occur to them. They have setbacks and difficulties and they change things and they fail uh, temporarily, but they never give up. Mm. And uh, one of the things that you can do to have a positive influence on other people is to tell them that you never give up. If you keep, you keep reminding yourself of that, you'll have times where you will think about giving up. You'll, you'll think about quitting. Uh, you're going to have all kinds of difficulties in life. That's normal and natural, but just keep reminding yourself. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Mm. And what happens eventually it's programmed in permanently. And no matter what happens to you out there, is you just never give up. And that is the most important quality for success of all. Once you have that, your, your life is made. And if you can teach people this, and if we can teach our friends who are watching today, just keep saying those magic words. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Whenever you think of, of, of quitting, say, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't quit. I'm unstoppable. I am unstoppable. And it, and, and it, it sounds like a like hype, but it's not. Everything that you are is a result of information that you've taken in. So now what you do as an adult is you control the information flow. You control the information flow. You hear it and you see it and people say things to you and so on. You say, okay. And sometimes we've had parenting situations where our parents didn't understand this. And so our parents uh, may not have been that supportive. You say, okay, well, it's sort of like at a, you, at a certain age, you take over control of the wheel. You get behind the wheel of your own life. You decide uh, what you're going to be, and you're going to be unstoppable. If you're unstoppable, then your, your success in life is guaranteed. So anyway, that, that's just something to pass on because everything else will work. Yeah. You, yeah. That, that's amazing, buddy. I could, I, could, I could listen to you all day. I am unstoppable. I'm yes. Unstoppable. Uh, I want to ask you one last question. I know we're getting close on time. Um, again, this has been truly unbelievable. What what's I feel like the biggest thing that insurance agents struggle with specifically is closing the deal. You yeah. are one of the best closers on the planet. How can you help others become the exact same thing right now? Well, uh, um, you remember the famous story of the the uh, man on the streets of um, New York. And he asked the hippie, he said, uh, he says, uh, how do I uh, get to Carnegie Hall? Remember that? Yes. And, and the answer is practice, man, practice. Yes. And the answer is practice, man, practice. The reason you are where you are today is practice. You learn it, learn and do, learn and do, learn and do. Just practice over and over. And you can learn anything. Now, you may not become uh, a genius, uh, but you can learn any subject. You, you, you are a learning machine. 
you just you automatically learn you absorb new material and uh, so therefore I say well I want to be good at it first thing I do is I get a book I have uh, I was reading about uh, having uh, books on uh, Amazon and that you could actually write your own book and you could put it on Amazon so I told people you know you can write your own book and and uh, then I realized I had lots of books on Amazon but they were all put on there by publishers and so I said okay I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna write my own book I'm gonna follow the process of writing a book and putting it on Amazon and so I looked on to Amazon and there are several free books there are 30 40 50 60 pages on how to write a book on Amazon and and you you, you could just after the end of our conversation here just go to Amazon and just put in um, how to write a book and they'll give you several different choices now and if you if they sell you the book the book is going to be five dollars, four dollars. They're not not very expensive at all. So I just got three or four books, and I read them through, and I learned how to write a book, and I wrote a book, and I said, "What book would I write?" And I said, "I'll write a book on closing sales." And so I, I so I wrote a book. I, I think it's I think it's called "Close That Sale," and it's five dollars and ninety nine cents. Ooh. Yeah, and. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm think, I, I think I sold it as a Kindle book, but I don't recall. And I have my, uh, my creative person. I said, I want to get this book onto uh, Amazon. And she said, okay. And she familiarized herself with the instructions. It's like a recipe, just a little recipe, follow the recipe. And um, so we put it up there and it's called Close That Sale. And it's the 24 sales closing techniques that I started off with many years ago. Uh, it was interesting. Um, I started speaking in 1981, which was it was which was at the depths of a major recession, and uh, I had to get people in the room. And I figured, how can I get people in the room? And I said, well, I could do a seminar uh, on on closing sales. That's what everybody wants to know. The one thing that salespeople want to know. So I put an ad in the paper, and it's called the uh, 24 uh, Techniques for Closing the Sale. And I charged $95 for the seminar, three hours in the evening, seven to 10. And um, I had, I was really nervous uh, because I had uh, never done a seminar like this before. And 100 people came to my first seminar. I put an ad in the paper, 100 people came. And I, I guaranteed it. I said, if you're not happy for any reason, have your money back. And that was my starting, starting on my, my kickoff in uh, speaking, professional speaking. And uh, I had, I think about 95, yeah, 9,500 people in my first seminar. And what I did is I put together a really nice booklet on closing the sale. But, but it was all the things that you have to do before you close the sale. It had 24 techniques, but the first, the first thing you had to do is you had to make sure you were speaking to the right person, um, qualifying. You had to be sure that they understood the value of the offering. You had to be sure that you understood what they needed and so on. And then you had to get them to the point where they were ready to uh, buy. And then here's diff here's 24 different ways that you can ask for the sale. And, and, and you'll notice that there's no pressure. There's no tricks. There's no uh, ways to uh, force people to buy. Everything is really low pressure, no pressure friendly. And, um, that was my starting point. That's my, my kickoff in professional selling. And uh, I had never written a book. I certainly learned a lot about it, and I had lots of information. So uh, if anybody wants to learn how to close a sale, you just go to Amazon, and there it is. I think it's $5.99. Uh, but here's the wonderful thing that I discovered, is one of the major reasons why people are afraid of prospecting is because so often they get rejected at the end of the presentation yeah. so if they know that they're going to get rejected at the end of the presentation they don't even make go and make calls in the first place yeah. they say, why, why should i wait if i told you i am um, i just came up with this when i was speaking to a huge audience uh this one liner and i said if uh your company uh, hired a marketing specialist company and they could go and interview and they could identify 100 people 
who would buy today if you contacted them. Mm -hmm. okay. And here's the list. It's a specialized list. It's for you. And every one of these people will buy if you contact them today. But the, the, the list is only good from nine to five. Mm. After that, the list expires. All right. So, so here's my question to you. If you got this list the night before, what would you do the next day? What would you do the next day? Yeah, you dial as close as you can. Well, I'd, I'd get up early and I'd hit it as soon as nine o'clock, almost like a horse in a race jing, is I'd hit it and I started moving. I said, would you take time to drink coffee and, and talk with your friends and read the newspaper and then go for lunch and BS and all of this stuff? What would you do? You'd be moving as fast as you could because every person you spoke to is going to buy Every person you spoke to is going to buy. And so you just keep moving as fast as you can. I said, well, and that at the end of the day, if you, you're not going to get to 100 people, but you're, you're certainly get, get to a lot of people. So from now on, imagine that. Imagine everybody you speak to is going to buy. So therefore, spend every single minute getting face to face with people. And with that confidence, that feeling that, wow, if I get face to face with these, and you, you'll find that, one out of 10 people will buy in any market. One out of 10 people will buy. So therefore, what you do is you may decide uh, you're going to get in front of as many people as possible, and one in 10 will buy. Just keep moving as fast as you can. If they don't buy, you say, thank you very much. Have a good day. Wonderful thing. Here's my card. Give me a call if I can uh, be of any assistance to you and get to the next one. Get to the next one. Because one of ten is going to buy. So keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep talking to people. And... and uh, and you're going to make sales one out of ten, virtually guaranteed. In the worst markets of all, with the worst product, with the worst skills, you're going to make sales one out of ten times. And so, when you have that attitude, is just the, just the law. It's called the law of probabilities. The law of probability says that the one out of ten people you speak to, if you have a little bit of intelligence, um, will buy. So, therefore, just get up and start moving first thing in the morning. And don't stop. Keep moving. And here's the most wonderful thing. I say, if um, if you call more and more uh, on more and more people, what happens to your skill level? What happens to your skill? Yes, exactly. Your skill level goes up. You get better and better uh, at calling on people. And when you get better and better, you make more sales. When you make more sales, you have more confidence. When you make more confidence, you, you want to make more sales. And pretty soon, you can hardly wait. And the wonderful thing is the more you call on people, the better you get. The better you get, the happier you are. The better you get, the happier you are, the more sales you make, the more money you make, and so on. It's this is this is just simply the way that you program your mind. And all the best salespeople do this, is they just smile. First one says, No, I don't want it, don't need it. You say, Well, thank you very much for your time. You have a wonderful day. And if I can be of any service to you, please give me a call. And uh, keep moving, keep moving. And um that's the attitude that you have to have to be successful. So good. So good. Mr. Tracy, I've taken up a t uh, probably too much of your time, but I'm gracious for everything that you've done with us. Thank you so much for sharing today with 8% Nation. Well, I appreciate you calling me and giving me the opportunity to speak to your friends. And I, uh, I'm really happy to meet you and see you and we will work together again. I hope so, buddy. Thank you so much. Also, those that are watching, make sure you go to Amazon and grab. I'm going right now after to grab Close That Sell by Mr. Tracy. Thank you so much. You've been an unbelievable influence in my life and so many. And thank you so much for being on today. Thank you very much, Cody. See you. Talk to you again. Yes, sir. You too. Thank you guys for watching. Closing That Sell and you are unstoppable. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bye-bye, my friend. How good was that? I mean, oh my gosh, I'm sitting there asking this dude questions. And there was a moment where I'm finally like, dude, I need to shut up and listen to this dude. Like, let him talk. Just let him help people, man. Like, he is so, the, the, the golden nuggets, like I've got a whole paper full of notes of just golden nuggets that he continues to bring. Like his golden triangle of success. Oh, like I'm like, dude, 
why haven't I had this dude on sooner? Unbelievable, one of the coolest moments of my career. Like imagine you interviewing Brian Tracy in front of 10,000 people. What would you say? How would you respond? What would you ask? Okay, the little side conversations, okay, right before and right after the interview, that's where it's all about, okay? So hopefully, I mean, not hopefully, man, if you didn't get something from that interview, something is wrong with you, okay? There's no question you apply the knowledge he's given, everything changes for you forever, okay? I'm honored and grateful to finally have Mr. Brian Tracy a part of what we're doing. Thank you very much, man. I've enjoyed getting to know you, talk to you on a more personal level. You are a game changer, a life changer, and somebody that's doing something massive. And you make me, you make, you give me ideas, you challenge me, and you make me think bigger. That's the kind of people that you want to spend time with. Okay, so, so but, but before I start tearing up on how cool of a moment that was, thank you very much. Uh, for agreeing to be a part of this. That was amazing. Okay, what was your favorite part? Let me know in chat. What was your favorite part of that interview with the sales goat, Mr. Brian Tracy? Legendary, okay? Le how cool was that? Like, that's, that's what 8% is all about, right? It's those moments. I'm gonna bring you moments and successful people pouring into you that have done hundreds of millions of dollars before that can help you be a better you. Okay, can be a better you, right? If you love this, imagine the live one in Dallas. CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. Okay, we're almost done. CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. I'm about to bring out our last speaker. CodyAskins.com forward slash deals. $47 live stream. Maybe you can't make it to Dallas for whatever reason. Maybe you live in the Philippines. I don't know. Come anyway. But if you don't, go get the live stream of 8% for 47 bucks. Even if you're going to attend, get it anyway, right? Because you can share it with somebody else. You can, get the, you can keep the recording forever of the whole event, whether you watch the live stream or just watch the recording, it's $47. It's ridiculous, okay? 8% live in Dallas is July 23rd, 24th. Go to 8percentnation.com or the link in chat to make sure you take advantage of that right now. Okay, now. <laughs> It's that time, man. It's time to release another flash sale, which means I believe this is possibly our last one. I don't know, but I know it's going to last for three minutes and then poof, it's gone forever. Okay. Three minute flash sale right now. One premiere ticket for only $200. Crazy. It's a $600 ticket for 200 bucks. It's insane. It's just right now. For the next three minutes, for the next five people that do it. One ticket, 200 bucks, premiere, you get lunch, you get party, you get premiere seat. Again, three minutes. You just heard Brian Tracy talking about accepting responsibility. Now it's time for you to accept responsibility and show up. Anyone can show up. What I've learned is, truthfully, anyone can show up whenever they want, wherever they want, whenever they want to. Will you show up? That's the question. The show must go on and you got to show up in your life. The clock's ticking and it's about to be done. Take action today. Make sure you do that right now. Here's what I want to leave you with, okay, before we go. I want to leave you with my eight rules to 8%. I want to guarantee that you are a part of the 8% forever, right? Like if I look back over the last decade, here's the eight rules I wish I would have known that I wish I would have known with when I was you right now, okay? So make sure you're writing these down. Rule number one, okay? I'm going to give you eight rules to make sure that you're a part of the 8% forever. Number one, focus on revenue, okay? Focus on revenue. Far too many people wake up, they go to the office, they're not excited, they're, 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 they're getting coffee, they're getting water, they're going to the bathroom, they're checking social, they're checking emails, they're going taking two-hour lunches, it's 4.30, now they're like, I'll make calls tomorrow. They're procrastinating. I tell our sales team, you show up and you don't make a sale and you go home, why did you even show up to begin with? It's your job. It's not your job to service your clients. It's your job to make sales. Service, good. That's fine. But it's your job to make sales and to produce revenue and to help more people or your business can't grow, right? Like only 4% of companies in the U.S. do seven figures a year. You can do seven figures. Trust me. Okay, rule number one, focus on revenue. Rule number two, I want you to focus on your true potential. 
Most people focus on where they currently sit. I get dissatisfied. I get frustrated. I get a little sad and depressed because I'm thinking about where I'm currently at versus where I know I can be. And that's because I'm, I'm in the moment. I'm focused on where I am right now. You're going to throw in the towel and quit if you focus on where you're at right now and you're not happy with it. Be focused on your true potential, finding your true potential, getting to your true potential one day. Like I've got this new saying I've been saying a lot lately, which is, I haven't arrived and I hope I never do. You haven't arrived and I hope you never do, which means you're chasing your true potential and you know that you can always be better. That's what that really means. Okay, so rule number two, focus on your true potential. Rule number three, short-term targets. Okay, I believe in putting short-term targets. Like we released and had over 10,000 register in 28 days. Why? Because we came up with a massive short-term target that scared us to death. When we do something as a team, we put insane targets and goals and we shorten them. A lot of people, lot of people don't hit their goals, okay? And a year goes by and it's like, dude, I didn't, I, I was like, who had a goal? Let me ask you, who had a goal last year in 2020 and you did not hit it? Show of hands, okay, in chat. Help me out, me, me. Here's what I know. You didn't hit it because the goal was too small. Most people, when they're not on track, they do what? They lower the goal. You need to raise the target. You need to raise the goal because whatever the goal was, it didn't interest you, right? It didn't keep your attention. You got unmotivated. And keeping my focus for an entire 12 months, like, let's keep it real. Like, you're, we're all gonna see 42 squirrels along the way. And before you know it, like, we're not focused on hitting the target. You need a short-term target. Like today, this weekend, next 72 hours, next seven days, next 14 days, to keep you focused on producing a lot in a short amount of time. That's the message. That's the secret to accomplishing a lot over a year. Try to accomplish a lot weekly. Try to accomplish a lot this weekend. Try to accomplish a lot in the next 10 days, right? Change it up, okay? Challenge yourself with short-term targets, okay? Rule number four, never quit. Most people quit. Here's what I know. The insurance industry is an amazing industry and life's gonna get really good as long as you choose not to quit. Please choose not to quit. Please choose not to quit. Rule number four, never quit. Quitting is a choice, quitting is an option, quitting is a mindset. Never choose to quit. If you don't quit, you can't fail, right? That's the theme. Okay, rule well, number five, you need to get to where you are removing these mental barriers and limiting beliefs that are in your life. We all have specific things in our brain that are holding us back from taking that next level. For example, you may care what everybody else thinks. Okay, you may also care. Uh, you, 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 you may care what everybody else thinks. You may also care what your family thinks, your friends think. You may also have this limiting belief of you thinking you know everything before you do anything, right? Is that you? Okay. You may also be in a spot where you're afraid of spending money and investing money because you're afraid of getting it back, right? Like we all have these mental barriers that are holding us back from taking that next level in our life. You need to identify what is limiting you from leveling up and do your best to remove it. Okay. Do your best to remove it. Rule number six is effort. There's only three reasons why you wouldn't be able to hit your target and your goal this year. Okay. Stay with me. Okay, there's only three reasons why you wouldn't be able to hit your target or your goal for this year. Maybe you want to make 100 grand this year. Maybe you want to make a million bucks this year. Maybe you're like, like me and you want to do $12 million this year. Okay, whatever it is. There's only three things that could hold you back. Effort. Effort's a choice. Skill. Right? You may say, Cody, I'm not as good as you at sales, man. But if you wanted to and you want to spend time with me and I want to download my sales brain into yours, over time you would get better and be almost as good as me. Or maybe better, right? True? which means you just need to put in the effort to increase your skill. Third, knowledge. You may not have the knowledge to hit the target or the goal that you are setting out to do. But if you wanted to know everything that my father, Brian, knows about the insurance industry, everything Landon knows about marketing, could you, over time, absorb everything they know and learn as much as them? Yes, knowledge is available to everyone, which means you just have to put in the effort to increase the knowledge, which means for you to do something big, whatever you want to accomplish, it all goes back to ding, 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 effort. 
How much effort are you putting in? Effort is a choice, effort is an option. What kind of effort are you putting in on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that you are successful, changing lives, doing something big, and freaking pushing, man, like constantly pushing and finding your way to being your best self and being super successful? Effort's a choice. Rule number six, effort. Rule number seven, train daily. In my office, we train at 8.30 and 1.30, right? Like I spend time with teams every single month for a whole year, take downloading my brain into their whole team and freaking motivating the heck out of them. And we train twice a day in our office. We listen to sales training videos. We recap what we learned and we role play and we do energy twice a day, every single day. Why? Because we want to win. We want to get better. And we're not playing casual. This whole little life thing we're doing, man, we're doing it the right way. We want to win. Winners find, find a way to win. I don't want to just halfway do stuff. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Which means, if it's meant to be, it's up to you. You have complete control of your life. Accept responsibility for your successes. Accept responsibility for your failures. Accept responsibility for the negative things that are happening. You control the controllables. You can control how much you train every single day. Rule number seven, train daily. Rule number eight, okay, rule number eight, invest in yourself. Winners believe in investing, right? They invest time, energy, and money into them because they know that they are their most valuable asset. You are your most valuable asset. Do you know that? Do you realize that? And are you getting better over time? I'm really, I can tell the last three years, I've came a long flipping way. Have, look back three years ago, have you came a long way? Look back 90 days ago, have you came a long way? My question for you is, are you investing time, energy, and money into making you better? Because that's what it's all about. Rule number eight, invest in yourself. These are my eight rules to 8% to make sure that you become part of the 8% and you change your life forever. Who is going to, who loves these? Who's going to apply these? And who knows that you have some improving to do in 2021, in March of 2021. Now my question is, of the eight, right, focus on revenue, focus on finding your true potential, short-term targets, never quit, remove limiting beliefs, effort, train daily, and invest in yourself. Of those eight, which one is your favorite of the eight? that I just laid out in front of you now. I'm telling you, there's no need to be casual. We need to get serious about our success. We need to win and we need to be focused on taking that next level in our life, okay? And the next level for you is getting to 8% Nation 2021 live in Dallas at the Statler Hotel, me and you and 998 other people changing their life forever. Trust me, you want to go. Trust me, you want to be there. Trust me, this is the event to be at. If there's one event to be at in our industry, period, all year long, it's this one. Do not miss it. Put it on your calendar right now, July 23rd, 24th. Myself, Eric Thomas, Landon, my dad, Galen, several other speakers I haven't even mentioned yet. We're having a couple surprise speakers. I'm gonna have a couple of crazy surprises again. Last year we dropped tens of thousands of dollars live from the ceiling into people's laps. Were you there? How much money did you pick up? Some people picked up more money from the giveaways that I did than they even paid for their ticket. That's what it's all about. And don't forget, last year, the hotel, there's only like a couple hundred rooms, okay? So that's, that's we're, we're gonna possibly expand outside of this hotel after this year, we'll see. Don't forget to reserve your hotel for the event, okay? Apresnation.com, make sure that you reserve your hotel. You can, you can probably even get there from CodyAskins.com forward slash deals as well, okay? But make sure you reserve your hotel at the Statler. It's a nice four-star Hilton property because it will sell out early. I guarantee you the hotel will most likely sell out this month, which is insane. So make sure you do that now. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you next.
Welcome to 8% Virtual. As people are coming in, we've had over 10,000 agents register for this two-day live free virtual conference. Number one, okay, I wanna thank you. As people are coming in, okay, I wanna thank you.